Yo, fight fam, what's good? What's good? What's good? See, Joe was already in the building. DJ, what up with you? What's going on with everybody? At what time does this, uh, let me check my app. Check this Boxing Showtime's app. Because I'm looking at some weird shit. It says Romero versus Barroso at 8 p.m. on Showtime. Yet, I don't see that shit on Showtime. For some reason, it says Romero versus Barroso at 12.30 a.m. How'd that work out? Can y'all hear me? Somebody let me know if the audio I. Andy Cruz was good. Nah, I don't watch it like that. Radiant was good. Fistiana fights. What up, my? Gertz, what up? Salute. PBC Central, salute. Yeah, I, I'm good, bro. If I, I be having stuff to do before these long ass streams. So, Muletta, what up, man? Big Smoke, what up? I appreciate that, Radiant. Mortal Kombat was good. Not sure how Janibek does against an inactive Charlo, bro. We, I mean, how do we know Charlo still fights the same? <laughs> Buddy been out the ring for forever. H, what up? I see it on my app. Uh, well, maybe let me check out the app. Let me check it out. This on Showtime or ESPN. Janibex on ESPN. That starts uh, now, actually. Let me turn it up. The, the prelim start now. <laughs> Appreciate that enunciation. Ever love metaphysics. Metaphysics, I should say. Roly Arab begins the night. <laughs> Tex Rock, what up, man? Charlo still fight. Now, Charlo is retired. Unofficially. Prelims on ESPN Plus year. I'm about to turn to it now. Hold on, let me see. Uh, I'm sure they just bullshitting over there anyway. Let me see some. All right, this ain't gonna show me shit. The sign was good with you, bro. Appreciate that, Immortal. Brian Norman Jr. should be fighting on these prelims. Roly versus Matias next. Okay. Yeah. Bernard, what up, bro? Charlie was dropping vids of himself beating up on sparring partners. Okay. Amazing. That means he's not getting good work either. That's fucked up.
kind of nigga was good, bro. Killer K in the building. What's happening? Right, so he's inactive and he's not getting good sparring work. That's all that's all that really tells me. Roy Jones got another fight scheduled. Don't he fight this weekend? Or did he already fight? Again, I don't I ain't been paying attention. Haney can control Loma early, but Loma will be more active to make it close in the later rounds. We'll see, man. That's a uh, people acting like that's an easy fight to decide. Uh, but of course, people don't know shit about boxing. It is what it is. Man, bro, it's been annoying as hell reading the comments on that uh, Canelo versus uh, Benavidez film study. God damn, bro. Two fan bases that just just lack. Lafayette was good. CMP, what up? Can't wait to see the master of the sweet science tonight on Showtime. <laughs> so if I got to watch it, I'll, I'll break it down for y'all. I'll break down everything Roly does crazy. But I ain't never making no video. Yeah, text rock. I bet, bro. I, I mean, do, do fans still fall for people bragging about sparring, bro? Let me drop this invite. Oh, wrong button. That damn it. All right, let's get it. Oh, they already got. Oh, okay. Brian Norman Jr. fighting right now. Hmm. Devontae, what up, bro? Alucard was good. I don't. Uh, you can go ahead and correct my pronunciation. I, I have no clue. <clears throat> Let's check out Brian Norma Jr. Let's go. Fight starting now for me. Brian coming out with a, with a jab. A, a stiff, solid jab. No probe. Uh, it's not based on timing right now. Okay, he probed a couple times right there. He's just he's just on a stick. Pause. Nice little jab to uh check hook though. Nice setup after after the after that uh so many stiff jabs. L stepping in range. Doesn't attack to his right. Let's see if that's the theme. L stepping. At a range, still not doing shit to his right until he fully resets. Yep, same. L step in range to the to the right. Didn't do shit till he fully reset. Jab and left, step and left, jab, jab the hook. Jab four, check hook. Uh, move right. 
Stiff jab moving left, level change. Left, left. Good job keeping that uh, single high shield up. Trying to rotate back right, right there. It looks like he's really trying to put his eggs in his jab to uh, check hook. Basket. Yep. Did it again. Step it to his left again, kind of disengaging. High guard trap, left hook. Smother control, clinch. Change head slots right there. Rhythm step to a left shuffle. Stiff jab again, moving left. Tried to jab four, but he's uh, used to it already. Nice little control on the arm to move right. Uh, bro, who who is this dude he's fighting, man? Jesus Perez. Brian Norman Jr. Okay, Duty's fight just came off of UD to, well, came off of UD in 2022 to Rocha. 20, 24 and 4 with 18 knockouts. Uh, but he came from, looks like, 140. Hmm. Yeah, came from 140. <clears throat> Just got rocked, uh, not moving his head off the eighth slot after he threw a 4-3 or a 3-4, I don't remember. He got rocked with a lead hand hook. Got touched to the body, still on that jab to a uh, counter hook. Trap. Nice stiff jab based off time in that time. Caught Perez coming in. Another stiff jab. Nice little smother. Uh, I would like him for to get out at an angle next time instead of backing straight up, though. Okay, a little probing controls, occupying a guard. Nice little slip, uh, inside slip hook off the, off the uh, Perez's jab. Okay, switch it up to an overhand. C-slot again. A little pendulum bounce. Nice little head move to get out of the way of that lead hand hook. Nice little high guard trap. Very nice, actually. Landed a clean, clean lead hand hook off that. Changing head slots again. Okay. Decent little head move. Back out in a straight line, though. A little dangerous. Front foot first to go backwards right there, but didn't set up nothing. So I was, let's see if he does it again and tries to set up something. Okay, little inside pivot, shuffle out. Nice little change of angles. Mm. 
Moving left without the jab. Okay, there goes the jab now. Change your head slots. Got himself caught in a corner, but landed a nice little counter hook. Got touched up a couple times, though. Nice jab from Perez right there. Perez changed the head slots on him. Perez still attacking in straight lines, even though he's uh, trying to disguise it with a level change. Knockdown 305 was good. Bobby T, what up? What are they playing? It's on ESPN Plus, bro. It's the preliminaries. Brian Norman Jr. versus uh, Perez. SP was good. Tom Shields, what up? MBO, what up? Jero was good. Miss anybody? Jeremiah Smith was good. Tone was good. Joshua, what up? I think that's about it. Mitch, what up? <clears throat> trying to figure out what Brian Norman is trying to set up. Uh, it looks like um, it looks like he could change the jab uh, lead hand hook trap to that jab overhand. He tried it once, and uh, he had a little success with it. But I think that's the I think that's the knockout, or or perhaps maybe an inside slip to the C slot or over his lead leg and lead hand hook to the body, but we'll see. Yeah, keeps trying to jab to the hook trap. Jab, step back, hook, lead hand hook. Got clip right there. Took it pretty well, though. Just defaulted to the high guard, but he changed the, uh, the ring positioning. Damn, got clipped again, but put in some good work himself. Mm, there, I just, God damn it, I know this shit. Jab overhand, caught him clean. Perez trying a little lead, awkward lead cross that landed. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be the, it's going to be a more solid landing, uh, Jab overhand that gets him. Yeah, Brian Norman trying to back out using only head movement and a slight little angle. He should probably smother and control instead. Check hook. It was a little inside slip uh, lead hook to the body right there like I was talking about. Damon, what up? Nah, we be on here, bro. We be on here. I gotta. Well, shit, at this point, shit, I probably done easily a hundred lives. Hmm. Yeah, or about or around that. Yeah, man, catch me on fight night on most of them at least. Brian Norman need to we need to quit with this head movement shit, bro. Use your arms, control them, clinch.
Putting the invite back in the chat. Anybody come up and rap with me. I'm on this motherfucker for hours, so this shit definitely get boring if it's just me. I uh, appreciate that, fam. Appreciate that, Bernard. I try when we're not bullshitting, you know, we could break down a fight pretty well. <laughs> but we're not talking about Florida man and movies and all that other shit when they're giving us all. I'm sure we're going to do that again tonight because they're going to give us a, you know, a million minutes of fluff in between the fights. But especially since I'm on here so early, nice little combination from uh, Norma Jr. right there. Mm. Caught in between shots right there. Tried to jab overhand or jab four again, but what was working for him is he was doing, a, uh, I hate that rhythm set, but what was working for him was he was uh, doing that C-slot slip way more often. He better, uh, he's getting touched a little bit more now. That little pre-slip, that uh, pre-slip over his lead leg, it was disguising that jab over him and that uh, lead hand hook. Mm, caught him clean in between shots right there. Four. This is a step left, kind of like a, a right hand check hook. He stepped around back right, right after. It wasn't exactly the footwork to do it, but it worked. Back on the stick. Keeps backing out with his hands down. He is changing angles, but still backing out with his hands down, getting clipped a little bit. Lead four to the body. Mm. There goes the C slot slip, but he changed it up to a lead hand uppercut. Smart move. We was just talking about Salvador Sanchez on uh, Patreon. I was thinking about making a video calling him the C slot king, bro. He lived in that motherfucker over the lead leg, bro. He had so many moves off that slip. It was ridiculous. All of them shits worked. I mean, they mainly work because he switched it up like that so often. Norman switched stances for a brief second. Switch back, of course, though. It start, again, he's he not learning from backing out with his hands down, though. Got away with it there, though. Got clipped with a hook right there, but decent little head control. Shit, is, is, there, is there any other card on? It's ESPN plus Brian Norman Jr. versus uh, Perez. What other card is on? Yeah, facts, Tom. Front leg, C slot. When was that discussed? What? Are you talking about in that Salvador Sanchez joint? I said it. Shit. Matter of fact, I think I started off saying that in the beginning. I said I was going to make a video and call it the C-Slot King. Mm. 
Okay, Brian Norman letting him close the distance now, actually coming in on the inside himself. Okay, now he pushes him off. You know what? So uh, for a prospect, you know, what worries me about this is it doesn't seem like Norman is sticking to a game plan at all. Like uh, he's really just using his skill to beat Perez and he's getting touched up at, you know, sometimes. But I don't see no exact strategy, you know what I mean? I mean, now I see, okay, so this, he switched stances, but disengage left, um, attack him before he resets. I see that strategy. He had that from the beginning, but, you know, sometimes he will wander away from it. And got touched with two right hands right there, but he landed a jab. Got touched with a left. He didn't keep his, uh, <clears throat> he didn't hold the phone with his right hand. Nice jab. Of course, the jab is a lazy jab. So, you know, he, he, he keeps bringing it back to his hip. Now he's mm, he's stance switching down there crosswalking now. Man. <laughs> Hey, bro, somebody with longer reach is going to clear this motherfucking nasal passage. He keep backing out with his hands down like that, just trying to use head movement. Yeah, I'm not I'm not overly impressed. The round ended, Bobby. The round ended about 10 seconds ago. <laughs> Normal Norman, huh? I'll be right back. Look, so we see uh, Perez keeps trying to counter that jab. That's why Norman's getting in the jab, lead hand hook trap. Then earlier, he was on a C-slot slip game. So I, I'm telling you, I think the move is like probing jab, overhand. Probing jab, you know, Perez going to counter that jab, overhand which is a, you know, obviously a C-slot slip with the overhand, with the backhand. I think that's the end game. All right, man. Mm.
Yeah, Perez footwork whack, bro. Uh, he's breaking his base to land a jab. He tried three uppercuts in a row right there. Nice counter to the liver, though, from Brian Norman. Perez breaking his base, leaping in with that jab. Brian Norman backing out with his hands down. Got touched on the way out. And the Norman get clipped right there. It changed angles, kind of fucked me up. Yeah, bro. They ain't come in with much of a plan. How old is Brian Norman? He is 22. Tim Bradley put me on his channel. You too. Man, tell Tim, stop stealing my shit, man. <laughs> you always stealing my shit. Nah, man, I, that's the homie, for real. Nice little control to set up that little backhand to the body. Clicked his feet. Uh oh. My guy Triggs, what up, bro? Hey. You you muted yourself. I was trying to clear out the stuff in the background. What's up? How you doing? Chilling, man. What's good, bro? What's up, man? Oh, New Jersey Golden Gloves champ. Word. <laughs> What's good, bro? Uh, a dream come true. Right? Good, man. Yeah, I'd be like that. Yep. Make it short lived, bro. Get back in the gym. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, hey. so I, I ain't going to, like, I, I be understanding why fighters, they be like, like, taking so much time off. Like, I, I killed my body training for this. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going through it. Like, I still got pain from the stuff I was doing, the weight I was losing, the miles I was running. Like, mm. It get hard. Like, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, bet, bro. Because I got, I got a lot I want to accomplish this year alone. So, I'm definitely, I'm be back in the gym. Good, good. I mean, you could at least be doing, um, you know, like light shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I ran. You know, I would stay on my running and stuff, shadow boxing. I just was, yeah. yeah. but I'll be back. Like, probably just doing like what I, my regular routine. I got a routine, so I'll be back to it this like well tomorrow because my routine starts on Sunday. On Sunday, I would do like a five mile run, and that's all I'll do on a Sunday and watch like boxing and stuff. That's and then what's I do. 
on my training during the week. Okay, cool, cool. They said change the battery on your smoke detector. <laughs> you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> what you mean? Change the battery. You know that smoke. beep? That beep? I ain't even hit. I probably don't notice it. It is coming up. <laughs> I probably don't notice it. You watching the fight? I got that background noise. Yeah, I, I, this is Brian Norman, right? I, I'm not impressed with him. I seen him fight the last time he was on ESPN. Yeah, yeah, I ain't overly impressed myself. They was talking about him. Like, there was somebody was hyping him up, saying he got the best of Crawford and he does sound with Tank and sparring. Like, bro, I be hyping dudes up, man. This what they mean, like. You know, I. Sharing sparring stories, man. I, uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, don't mean nothing. Is, is, and that's exactly why. Like, yeah. could you could you imagine him doing anything with Crawford in the ring? Even Tank? Nah, bro. Not not with this. Well, Tank. He's so much bigger than Tank. Pause. That uh, you know, in a in a boxing ring, okay, under the lights, but. Because he fight at Welter Tank, we just saw Tank at 136. So, yeah, you know, but with Crawford, man, hell no, bro. Yeah, exactly. Man. Hell no. So, I don't care what I don't care what he did to Crawford and Spawn. I don't care. Bro, how you, can't, he look. you can't dominate a dude named Perez. Nah, <laughs> it ain't gonna work for you. He look like he got too much muscle, too. Man. He look. Like he does just, look like it's, yeah. it's like bodybuilder type muscle and shit, not yeah. boxing slow, shit, but slow him down. But nah, he hasn't looked great in this fight. I mean, he's won, you know, every, probably every round, but it wasn't overly impressive. Backing out with his hands down, keep getting caught like that, never changing. Uh, can't really figure out what he wants to do offensively aside from. You know, uh, the trap to the from the jab to the to the check hook on the back foot. Just got caught doing trying to do that shit again with an overhand because he got a lazy jab. Keeps bringing it back to his waist. I mean, I'm not impressed, man. Yeah, not. Nah. Who else? Who else is on this card tonight? I, I like the what's the name card. It looked a little bit better to me. The um. The Showtime card. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm switch back and forth. Tune into that. They have some good prospects up there. I want to see uh, Ken, Kenny Sims. I don't really care about the main event. That's why I cut it off. Yeah, I was hoping it'll line up so I could watch uh, the Sims fight and then turn to the Janabek fight. Because that's the headliner on this one. Yeah. Uh, shit, I don't. What happened to? Oh, okay. So Vargas fight next. One of the Vargas brothers. Oh yeah, he do fight. I thought mm-hmm. he fought on the Haney card for some reason. Well, I, one of them, one, one of the other ones might fight on the Haney card. But this is a a, a motto. Oh, motto fan. Mm-hmm. Oh, so then. The young, the young one that's been on ESPN is fighting on the any card. Then. What's what's dude name again? Is it's um Emiliano is the youngest one. Oh, Otto okay. is the middle one, and then Junior the oldest. Gotcha. I ain't gonna remember that shit for a long time, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> model <Amato> went Emiliano. <laughs> Man, he can't mute the chirping, bro. Yeah, you think he got a ladder just right by him? <laughs> it's it's going. I really, I really don't notice it. Uh, I, what he I, dropping I, with? Damn it! Oh wait, he said no knockdown. Yeah, what was that? 
Tyrone, what up, bro? Lightning was good. That was push you buster. <laughs> All right, man. Did he get called for a knockdown? I don't think so. Uh. Brother Mike was good. Lomat plus 200. Yeah, wait till you see my bet for that shit. You got what you got? Decision, decision. Yeah, I, uh, I, you know, I hedged the fuck out of it. So, but I, I set it up so I can only pretty much win money unless, unless there's a knockout or a draw. Well, actually, no, I'm betting a draw too. <laughs> so, <laughs> as long as it ends in decision, I win money or I go even. Okay, that's that's how I bet it. Chris Trucker was good with you, bro. Yeah, but yeah, I think it was like uh I think I got it at like I think how I did it was like a hundred on Haney by decision, fifty on Loma by decision, and fifteen on the draw. And it works out to where if Haney wins, I come out neutral. If Loma wins, I win fifty dollars. And if it's the draw, I win thirty dollars or some shit like that. Good enough. Good enough. You found a you found an imitator of my channel. Who that? And what do you mean by that? Now, you know, as long as you break down boxing and you know what you're talking about, we're definitely going to say some of the same shit. So that's what you mean, and that's just going to happen. But it ain't too many people on here that know what they're talking about. Definitely a small circle. Oh, no. So Hidden Gems was around before me. Hidden Gem was around before me. Yeah, I started my channel in uh, 2021. Man, I, feel, I feel like it was longer ago than that. But I remember. You started in January? Uh, 2021, yeah. Yeah. January 29th. Yeah. No. Oh, shit. He's calling me a copy. I wouldn't let that go. You mean this guy, Tyrone, who's a member of my channel, is calling me a copy?
Nope. nope. 2021, January. All right, here we go with the fluff shit. It's because we got so much great content within the years from 2020, 2021 to now. Appreciate that. Greatest. T word, what up, bro? My guy, we put this put this invite back out. All right, so it wasn't too much fluff, just a little commercial break. Is is what's the name up next? Um, yeah, Vargas. Vargas. Six and O, two KOs fighting a guy that's two and four with no KOs. Okay. So we know what time it is. Where he's at? He's got 30 or 35. Yeah, yeah knocked down. So I wanted to start this channel in 2016. This is when I first was like, yo, I'm going to do that. I procrastinated for five years. <laughs> What you say, uh, Triggs? So, what way he fight at? What way did it say he fight at that? Uh, 130. 130. So, what made you start? Like, what made it? What was it? In? Oh, was bro. A, a new year thing? Nah, it's a pandemic. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, all them restrictions just sitting at the crib. I'm like, bro. And then, you know, I was having um, some issues with the gig. Like, I, I took real issue with, you know, motherfuckers giving me orders and shit from, from the crib while I, you know, while I'm supposedly in this dangerous-ass pandemic downtown and shit. You know what I mean? So that shit frustrated me enough for me to finally just be like, look, man, let me let me create another revenue stream and, uh, you know, and let it be about what I'm passionate about, you know? I prayed. That was the same year, the pandemic year. That was the same year I got serious about boxing. Yeah. Like before, I wasn't, like, I was still having trouble in school and stuff, and I still wanted to be in the streets and stuff. Mm. So I was like, I'm just going to start boxing. Like, I'm going to work on that after I get out of school. But I was in, like, what, my junior year? And it was that pandemic year, and it was mad stuff going on. And mm -hmm. that was when I really started focusing on boxing. I ain't been back since. <clears throat> All right. The motto came out reaching with the jab like a motherfucker. Reaching with a stab jab. I mean, he's... He's super ducking his head, but still, still a reach. Man, he looks looks kind of sloppy with his form, bro. I don't think I ever seen this one fight. It don't look familiar. Damn, dude. All right, do something else then. Stab, jab, overhand. Is that what he's trying to do? Backing out straight lines. Keeping his head in the A slot after the 4-3. Hard step feint. Winging that 4. Straight line, straight line. Yeah, this this got to be the worst one. <laughs> nice combination. 
took his head off the line in the combination to attack the body with the liver shot. But man, that was the first. All right, yeah, he just winging shit. Now it's just walk cross walking. Man, bro, I'm I'm almost. I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think. I think he started late or something. Like it looked like it, man. He's sloppy as hell with his punches. Footwork ain't really together. Like I don't know the history between all of them. I know like the young one was the one since he was the youngest. He had he had like when he started he was young, so he was good. Uh huh. But the other one started late, and then kind of like rushed it. They didn't really have too much amateur background, like. So, since they just they they just using the name, they just you know yeah. they get good training, and they get opportunities like this. So, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, technical form just a little off. The worst I've seen him get. Yeah, that was a better stab jab. That oh my god, he winging the shit out that four and it's slow as hell. Oh my god, you bro, (laughs) that that last cross he just threw is horrible, man. It's just horrible form. It took so long for it to release. Well, how did you feel about their father? Shit, he was good. He was good. Yeah. I actually never watched any. I haven't watched, like, I I, I can't name a Fernando Vargas fight that I watched that he won. Like, every oh, fight that not, that he, not that he won. Yeah, I only seen fights. You ain't see the uh, Winky Rice, right? No, I never seen the Winky Ray fight. Only seen what? De La Hoya. Trend that I had. Um, I started watching his fight with Ike Corte, but I don't think I ever finished it. So I never seen a fight that he won. So I really don't know how skilled he was. But he was like a young champion. I remember that. Like he mm-hmm. won. He won about really young. I mean, I don't have his skills. I didn't put his skill set to memory. That's why I ain't really commenting on it. Young Vargas just got clipped with a left hook. But uh, but I remember him being, you know, thinking that he was pretty good. Plus, he was a champion, so. Cause he didn't have what's the name. He didn't have coach. I'm pretty sure. So like, he the one who's teaching mm-hmm. him. Yeah. So Vargas, he pretty much dwindled down to being in fifty fifties. Fuck it, I got more power than you type deal. Like, yeah, bro, you do. Because dude don't got no knockouts and he's two and four. But you're supposed to be working on your craft, though. Oh, man, this dude. He got the, He got a lot to work on. Swinging for the fences. They're gonna have to move him real slow. Yeah, he. I thought he looked better. I was, it must have been like the sparring I was watching. I think I seen him sparring Shakur or something, and then I seen like a few, just a few of his clips on on the green. Even in his other pro fight yeah. that I seen, he ain't like. Cause he fought on trailer right there. Instagram would definitely send you off. <laughs> he winging them shots. That kills me on Instagram, bro. Motherfuckers be showing the worst 
the worst footwork, the worst everything in the world, and people be in the comments like, damn, you look smooth, champ. <laughs> you looking great. Can't nobody beat you. Like, bro, <laughs> if only you knew boxing. That's the thing. Like, when you sparring, people don't know that. You, when you sparring, you comfortable. Like, when you when you're in the gym, that stuff that you're doing, like, it's, it's just such a whole different atmosphere atmosphere when you're in the ring. I learned that just these these recent fights. I'm getting hit with shots. I'm like, yo, if I was sparring, I would have been pulling these. Like I'd be my hands down pulling these shots. Like mm. you got different gloves on. Yeah, it's a mentality. It's all it's yeah. All, you gotta it's all that's all mental about it. Comfortable you in your gym. You're not in your gym. You in front of mad people. Three hundred and eight amateur record. Damn. Damn Tim saying he looks impressive. I just uh, heard him saying he need to work on something. Oh, uh, buddy, sending me off. Okay. He just minimized the shit out of Jenner back. I heard that, but I ain't hear him talking about uh all right, let me pause it real quick. All right, I hear. I think that's Christina Poncho talking. Yeah, I think so. Did you see Andy Cruz training with Boost? Yeah, I saw the picture. Do you think that'd be a good, a good trainer for him? Uh, to me, it's curious. It's curious that he would go that route. Yeah, it's curious to me too. Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, like, why would you go that route? Cause what you going? What are you gonna like? I mean, I I like boots form in some ways, but I think that's a lot. A lot of that is natural. What he got? Like you're yeah. not gonna be looking like he already know how to do all the flashy stuff that boots do. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be his problem. His problem is gonna be sitting down on the punches, like everybody's saying, like he won't get empowering his shots. No, I mean, obviously, um, Boots knows how to do that, and yeah. Boots taught Boots to do that. But man, I don't know, man. I don't know. And plus, if you really break it down, I mean, why choose somebody that hasn't trained a champion yet? Yeah, he should have went to the other Cuban coach. What was the dude name? I just wanted the coach of the year. Salas. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I, I didn't understand it really, but. We'll see what comes of it, though. I mean, you know, it is what it is. You want to try to beat people with more head moving and flashing? Like, oh. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to right. add on to what he do, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's something. Yeah, it's something he had tons of already. Yeah. It should, even more so than boots, honestly. Yeah, he really. I sound like you in a different room. Oh, with my mate? Yeah. And now I got an echo. Hold up.
do it sound better now? There you go. Yeah. Um, he was like, I seen where he was training at, and then I seen the clip of him training with Boots. I was just like, wow. Yeah. That's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, we'll see. Who's the company, man? Definitely glad this is a four-round fight. Well, I mean, obviously, with the skill level displayed, it, it you know, you could pretty much tell it's a four-round fight, but Wow. Vargas broke his base completely right there. Walked himself into a right hand. Yeah, his base is huh? One thing I do know about their father is that he wasn't known for defense. Like I know <laughs> one thing that he wasn't known for defense and it's showing right now. Yeah, but it's, I mean... Amato's brothers seem to be way more advanced on that. Dang. But he popping his chin in the air like he Ryan Garcia and shit. He don't got a lick of wishing he wants to step back. And that's all I've really seen so far. This whole wishing a high guard and a step back. I ain't seen a, another layer in nothing. Pull, step back. And wide ass punches. Down. Crossway. Straight back. lines. Yep. Yeah, pull back in straight lines too. Pull back. Put the high guard up, eat the jab. Hands at his chest. Pull straight back, hands down. I clip. Straight back, left his arms up. Pull back, arm down. I, I definitely see the Ryan Garcia comparison, but with none of the athleticism, none of the speed, the power. Nah, yeah, half like yeah, Ryan Garcia on fifty percent speed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, they need to tuck him back in, bro. Get him a few more fights, then put him back on TV. Buddy happy he lasted the four rounds. Yeah, I get to come back next week. <laughs> the facts, right. <laughs> uh, oh, he's oh, okay. He's too happy now. I, you think you won? Again, so why just stand there in a the high guard? We got all that room behind you. Why are you just going to eat them shots? Lightning, I'm not familiar with his opponent, Maloney's opponent, but yeah, that's the uh, co man. <clears throat> but if it works out right, then I'll probably be watching the Kenneth Sims fight. If it works out like that.
his opponent fights like Benavidez. What high guard walking forward? That's what you mean. All right, I'm not familiar with nobody else on this undercard. On the top rank card? Yeah. I don't, bro, I, I think um, the Roly should come on at eight. Nah, it says something about they, them having prelims, I thought, that start at um, six. Like, you know how they, they got oh, YouTube, then YouTube. It's three fights, mad fluff in between all the way to the eight. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. I'll never be catching them live fights. I'll always be catching them re- when they do just like rewatching it because it'd be every time I cut it on, they be talking. And the fight had really been over. Math love. All right. Uh, what the fuck, bro? Oh, yeah, it is on. Who is this? Uh, Steel versus Swaro? Swaro? Michael, what up? <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, Showtime is definitely uh, live on YouTube with the prelims. Let me pull out my iPad so I can watch it on there. You got wait, you got you got Butler beating Janabek? Hmm. Okay. What you did say, Lotto.
What's the odds on that on that parlay? Had to be something serious. <laughs> what come on <laughs> hell no <laughs> oh, it's funny as hell hey good luck man I hope you hit that shit Sang, he looked unimpressive to me. Didn't really adjust his offense. Um, backing out with his hands down. Pretty much won every round, but went to a decision with a guy that, what was he, 20-something 20, 20 and four, like 22 and four, 23 and four, some shit that came from lighter weights. But granted, you know, he wasn't, he hasn't been knocked out before. All right, damn, I didn't, who we got? I know this dude's face. Where I know this dude from? On the ESPN card. That ain't Berlanga boy, is it? Nah, probably not. You got the Mexican uh, flag colors. Feel like I've seen him fight before. Anyway, open stance. Uh, James came out probing the jab pretty well. Already back, buddy, to the Martinez to the ropes with it. Martinez did a good job smothering, turning, clinching a little bit, but he didn't really work in a clinch. Probing jab still out there for James. Switch it to a solid jab. It's nice. Tried the cross off of it, which looks like it's going to end up working. Nice little time jab for Martinez. James countered the jab with a hook slash uppercut. Nice little check hook from Martinez. Caught James coming in. Leaping lead hand hook to a smother. Yeah, he needs to, <clears throat> James needs to find his range a little bit better before he starts unleashing that cross. Yeah, he's missing short with it every time. He 
he could what he could do is double jab or double probe that lead hand with the step in and then throw the cross. Of course, trying to, you know, of course, getting a outside foot position. Looks like everything is pretty much neutral foot position right now. There goes Martinez getting the outside foot position, landing across to the body. Grazing lead hand hook. Yeah, again, James is not finding his range with that cross. All right, that time, that time he stepped in with outside foot position, but it didn't throw the cross, just decided to work the body. <clears throat> Still short with it. Dropped his backhand to Perry and, and just got caught for having his not holding the phone with his backhand. He dropped his backhand to Perry a body shot, though. If Martinez seen that, he should be able to take advantage. Start throwing across downstairs. Come back up top with a uh, hook or an overhand. Eventually. Darius, that's a random ass question, bro. <laughs> Super random. James doing a good job controlling the lead hand, man, but he's not really doing too much off of it. Like, especially since he keeps running up short with that or coming up short with that cross. All right, all right. Now he's stepping in slightly, but he stepped in with inside foot position. He can still land a cross like that, but he's putting himself in line with Martinez's backhand. Nice little step around. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> James doing a little bit better job keeping his keeping a hand free in the clinch. Pfft. Wow. Just tried to run a combination damn near inside and got clipped with a backhand hook. Nice little frame and, and a pivot from James. Again, step around with a control. It looks like so it looks like uh James has some like some uh resemblances of good skill. It's just not always used super efficiently, but he's doing a pretty decent job at step I don't know why he's not holding the phone with his back handle, but he's doing a decent job with the step arounds and uh, with the frame to do it. He should probably open that glove up and grab uh, Martinez's arm instead of frame so he doesn't have to give up the distance. Yeah, he's, and sometimes he's just getting caught with his hands down, which makes no damn sense. In between the controls, I mean, shit, you should have some type of punch traffic that would that would potentially block punches up top while you're doing this shit, while you're while you're in between them controls. I like uh, Martinez's physicality right there, pushing James off. Yeah, it's like so it's like James like went to straight to high level school and 
and skipped uh skip class on some of the lower level shit. That's what I that's what I mean when I say fighter skip steps. Like some fundamental shit he's not doing, but he's up, but he's doing some high level shit as far as controlling his opponent. My guy intangible, what up, bro? Ezra, what up, man? And Martinez just dove in the, to inside, but all right, now we're back to mid range. James back on the jab, a little probing shots. But again, he doesn't race to put his hands back up when he does it, and he's not changing angles while he's doing it either. Like he probed all of his shots to stay in the same place. Okay, that was way better got outside foot position ran some offense then stepped around to the weak side and ran some more offense that was that was almost perfect okay now he's in range for the cross about goddamn time close that distance but I like the frame. Okay. Nice little counter uppercut. Yeah. All right. Hands down still sometimes though. Okay. Frame step around. Right hand. All right. There goes the open glove frame. Kept his distance on that one. All right, so to change up the cross to with a um with overstepping with his back foot and then came inside with a lead hand uppercut. Intangible. Why you got that goddamn picture up? <laughs> you know who that is, right? Yeah, that's Roly opponent, right? Yes. He's yeah, looks like he... I gotta show him this shit. He legitimately has a sixty-five-year-old face, and that's a and that's a conservative number. No, I agree. That motherfucker looked like he a good sixty-two. He looks like he sparred Luis Ortiz, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he looks like he sparred he spar- Luis Ortiz and Constantinople, man. <laughs> he sparred. He sparred Luis Ortiz and, and the junior amateurs. <laughs> he sparred Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Damn, that's that picture's horrible, bro. Disgusting. Hey, yeah. did they decide this was actually for a belt now, or is it still an eliminator? Oh, I think it's for the full belt. They've gone yeah, back and forth on it, but I think they made a final decision a few days ago. Wow. I think, I think Kenny Semsway is the eliminator for the belt. Wow. Yeah. Whoever wins that fight, they're going to beat the shit out of Bro. either the, either the <laughs> cripple Roly is fighting or Roly. <laughs> the cripple. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to count out Barroso necessarily because he was at least – Let's just say at one point a good fighter, but he is a cripple, so we don't know exactly what he has left. 
<laughs> he said, "What's a cripple?" <laughs> I heard you got a lot of power. <laughs> yeah, he can punch a bit. How you guys doing? Jose, what up, man? Oh, good, good, man. Back at it again, huh? Yeah, back to the basics. <laughs> yeah. So, um, man, what's Tim pointing out here? Oh. Uh, it, just to step in the inside footstep, beating the lead hand. Okay. I'm not particularly impressed by James. I'm not impressed. Uh, like I said, I think he skipped some steps. But, again, uh, you know, you're seeing a, a pretty decent control game. It's just, it's just he's not following up with defensive responsibility on it. You know what I mean? So, you know, he'll, he'll use controls, but then he'll drop his hands and shit. He also has poor balance, to be honest. Yeah. Like yeah, the way he plants his back leg after he steps in and then tries to get out of range. Yeah. But I like the control yeah. step around game. But, yeah, every, everything else seems a bit – seems a bit uh, like he needs some work. It's awkward. He's going to be lucky. Martinez is going to be lucky he don't get a point taken. Oh, well, okay. The ref ain't on that. That was a little over the top. The second round, he cracked him a few times, but now he's just – he's too slow. He's not really – wow, I see what you're talking about. What, what? He just shoved him straight to the ground with the forearm. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a little uh, excessive. Yeah, you're a little bit behind me, but that's all right. So what I'm not getting, though, is, uh, you know, James was really trying to land his right hand and coming up short for a long time. But now that he's in range, he's not throwing it, which is uh, interesting. All right. Now he throws it off a break. And now he's standing. Okay, there goes the control step around. Nice little counter backhand on uh, still stepping around. He's doing really good stepping around when he's doing it properly and when he's defensively responsible as he does it. But oh, uh, yeah, but then when he gets in a straight 50 50, he gets get he starts to get touched up. He actually looks better shortening up his punches when he smothers Martinez, yeah, yeah. But he still, he, I think he still needs to keep stepping around. Just don't stand there in a in a uh, 50 50. Well, where are they fighting on? This fight right here? Yeah. Uh, I missed it. Because <laughs> they look kind of tall. At least James. Is super middleweight. Super middleweight. Middle... This is super middleweight? Well, I was expecting like... Oh, bro. <laughs> yeah, we, just, we might as well not even be watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. They look like that? Walter Waits, honestly. Yeah, but For real. He has legs, man. Bro, these are the type of fighters that Berlanga whoops. <laughs> oh, they like his leftovers. I, I don't, bro. I don't. I'm not familiar with either one of these dudes, but yeah, I, I think I would. Him, <laughs> I think I like Berlanga over either one. Wasn't Trump in office the last time Berlanga scored a knockout? <laughs> <laughs> like two fights ago, yeah. <laughs> 
God, his, he couldn't knock out his three last fighters. It time. was Nicholson that he couldn't knock out, and I think that was in April 2021 or something like that. Uh, Nicholson, uh, the Colombian dude, and Steve Rose he couldn't knock out. So three guys. You, you know what, yeah, James? James will give him a, give him trouble for a minute off just off the controls and a step around. But since again he's not defensively responsible, I think Berlanga will clip him uh, and hurt him. But um, I mean, but yeah, these dudes not. This ain't it. Like Berlanga, with all the shit that he gets, he's not. He has some good, good, well, excellent uh, raw tools that you can work around. Like he's not completely trash. I don't. The thing is, he doesn't. To me, in my opinion, he doesn't have like a defined style. You know, he just have like uh, like raw tools, like power. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah he's got assorted skills. Exactly, but he doesn't have like like applied skills. Or something. <laughs> like he doesn't have a style per se. Like we don't know if he's a boxer, a puncher. We just know he has power. Yeah, you, like, he gave one hundred fifty dollar haircuts. You you're saying <laughs> you can't? <laughs> you saying you can't say this is what he's best at? Exactly, you can find right. him as something. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, because all of the guys who he fought in the first fifteen fights just conceded the center of the ring and just let him. Oh, I was about to say something really suspect. Uh, <laughs> beat the hell out of him, basically. <laughs> no, but still, yeah. like we don't know if he's good at defense, and we don't know why he's money punches. Like, oh, we know he's not good at defense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that. If that, it... I, so if I described his defense, I would say decent at best. He he had the basics. Like he keeps his hands up. Like he's not completely terrible. You know what I mean? Like he just need to have some direction, in my opinion. As much as people shit on him, you like, you, like has... look, you have to be of a decent enough level to go fifty fifty with Steve Rawls. Like people will laugh at him and say he's a yeah, bomb, but... exactly. Or, Oh, he's a he's an okay fighter. Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying he's trash. He's okay. Yeah, he just. Okay. Bro, I, you know, I don't even talk like that. But uh, but I mean, shit. These the people we're watching right now on top rank, they're decent fighters, fam. I mean, and I mean relative to what they do, not relative to everybody. Relative to everybody, they'll whoop your ass, easy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very easy. But, um, you know, relative to where they're at in their profession, they're decent fighters. But, yeah, and, and Berlang is a little bit better than Bopo. Oh, yeah, he does. Like, he has the, that talent that overwhelms any regular dude. See, I disagree with this, Chris Trucker. Uh, I think right. at some point, top rank always gives you a make or break. Nah, they either, they have these guys sometimes that you either sink or swim. Yeah, Elvis, yeah. these two fighters are unbeaten. I'm pretty sure. Listen, they kicked out Elvis Martinez as soon as he lost. They right. kicked it... out uh, uh, Andy Ruiz as soon as he lost. They did. <laughs> yeah. But Byron has. Wait, who's your name? Who's your name, Jose? Uh, Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz and who? And uh, Elvis Martinez, the Dominican dude. Uh, Elvis Elvis Ola. Rodriguez. Yeah. Rodriguez, yeah, yeah, yeah. They dropped him. So not, as soon nah, as he lost the like same Bob else, kicked him to the curb. Like, if, yeah. if you're a prospect so, in top rank, they're going to pull you in those situations. Look, if both these dudes are undefeated, this is exactly what that is. Like, intangible was suggested. Sink yeah, and swim. Like that, the, top rank, they do all the opposite of touching yourself. You either do it or you act. But at the same time, you get that with every single fighter. Like a fighter who's three and 4 and zero fighting a journeyman, people will be in the comments explain, uh, complaining, why isn't he stepping up or why isn't he fighting better opposition? Like he, right. like he's in his fifteenth or sixteenth fight. <laughs> right. All right, got that. That's true. To be honest, today actually fighters are being moved quicker than ever before. Not in terms of activity, but in regards to the number of fights, they're being moved quicker than ever. Yeah. True. Because if you're, no, if, you're, if right, you're a prospect, if you're a highly rated yeah. prospect, back in the 80s and 90s, you'd fight 10 to 15 times against pretty much layups and just be thrown in with showcase fights for the most I mean, part. Shit. Uh, you'd you get out much that. more frequently, but still. 
like you can see that with a uh, with the same example with one of these top ranked dudes, which is Teofimo Lopez. Like he has what 19, 20 fights, and yeah. he yes. at his 16 fight he fought Lomachenko I think, and that's a world championship level. And even before that, he had the IBF against uh, right. Coleman. He fought right. like. And to me, he he's fought Magdaleno, I think, in his 11th fight. He fought Edis Totley in his 12th fight. Yeah. Like, like those are European me. class fighters. It was the no, same, no, no. same for uh, Shakur, same for uh, Tank, same for, you know, a bunch of these dudes, man. Yeah, they, and Taz was right. They move them quicker than they ever have as far as the number of top, fights and competition. I think top rank, they just move you right, but... Uh, in my opinion, Teofimo, he is still kind of stuck in prospect mode, you know. Like he's still like experience, in my opinion. Oh, you mean like his actual skill set? I mean, I mean, well, not really. To me, he just not. Let me just say, a, a complete product. Like even his style, he's not really like a master of his style. Nah, bro, he relies on his athleticism. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, and it ain't you know, is he has great athleticism? It's just not. You know, it's He's not explosive, um, but that's about it. Yeah, it's not. I wouldn't and say it's all time great athleticism. And exactly, and the thing that frustrates the shit out of me is like you can see the potential, you can see the raw tools, you just they're not implemented in the right way, and that delusion of thing that he has that he thinks he hit that he hit he thinks he hit harder than he actually does. Yeah. Well. Fam, if I could look, so I make these film studies, bro. If I could call the fight dead accurate, like I did, like T.O. versus Sandor Martin, that means that you don't have enough tools. Because if I could just see what you've done before and and say, just okay, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Just off what, exactly what you've done before. And you struggle doing that same shit, then yeah, bro, you, you don't have enough tools. Yeah, you, you still kind of sort of stuck in prospect mode, in my opinion. I wouldn't call it that, but I mean, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, because you're not a finished product of whatever style you're implementing right now. So you're not really a finished product. Well, right. I mean, like to me, it's well, when not is like a boxer, a, when is a boxer a finished product, though? Wait, what? When is a boxer a finished product? Well, in when they opinion, de- I mean, like, that, I mean, the answer to that is, is when they decide to be. That and like you are as good as you can be too. Like that. Well, to me, it's like Shit, between bro. you can be as good as you can be and you master the style you implement. Like you are pressure, pure, or uh, boxer puncher, counter puncher, whatever you do. Uh, you when you implement that style, only certain type of styles can frustrate the shit out of you. You know what I mean? Only like another master of another style can. Frustrating. Well, of course, I don't think people necessarily like, mean say, that they're finished products. Yeah, I don't think anybody would. So, yeah. Like, let's say, like, but, but if, you if somebody says well, that somebody isn't the complete product, they mean that they really have a lot to work on. Basically, like, let me give you yeah. an example. For ex- uh, let me give you a little example. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's the best, but uh, I just gave you two kind of punches: Canelo and the same Teofimo Lopez. Uh, Teofimo Lopez on account is good of the pull. Why Canelo can counter you pretty much on catch and shoot, pull, roll, you know what I mean? Mm. But you can tell, well, but that's not really true either, though, Jose. I mean, no, no, Teo got a lot of Teo got a lot of different counter punches. No, 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 but I just giving you because that's his his best style, you know, like being a counter puncher. But he's not really Teo's best style, yeah, he's exactly his best style, but he's not really a master on being a counter puncher. He only can counter punch in two ways, which is pull. And do the, the the shoulder roll. White Canelo can do shoulder roll, catch and shoot, high guard. Bro, I uh, got roll. I got whole breakdowns of Tio catching and shooting though, fam. So that's what I'm saying. Like that's not exactly true. No, no, no. But he's not a master. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not exactly true. They're both good kind of punches, but one is just you know better than the other, like more complete than the other. I got you. Because. Because they can do both the same thing, but one one is more precise than the other. One is more comfortable doing, uh, let's say, one or more, like but, one thing more than the other. You know. Not well, Jose, here's the thing, though. Fam. How do you know Tio's ceiling? Like, what? like, how do you how do you, like to call him complete or incomplete? How do you know his ceiling? 
Uh, I would say that uh, based on the same thing that we're talking about, that he's not really a, uh, like you can tell he's kind of flawed in his same style. Like he's not really a ma master at all. But I know what you mean. Like it's not really something that can you can call some, like, like the ceiling of some fighters. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of factors into it. I'm not calling that he's a ceiling right now, but I'm just saying he's not complete right now. Like he needs a little bit <laughs> more experience. Gotcha. Or maybe, or maybe uh, we haven't seen enough of him. Well, shit, I, that's... personally, I think we have seen a ceiling. I think we have probably. <laughs> I, well, no. So in times where you could think we have, sure, we could all guess. But how would you really know to say that he's still in prospect mode or he's incomplete? Like if we saw a ceiling, then he's complete. Well, <laughs> that's it. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's why I say I think. I don't know. I just think so. You is pops. Now, yeah, now, okay, if we start talking about his trainer, then, all right, so now I can start considering this might be the ceiling because his trainer don't know how to get him any further. You know, know how to, like, Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Rob, what up, bro? Oh, Rob is here. What's up, man? Rob, you still in here? You on mute if you. Yeah, I'm in here with my son. He he talking to me. Oh, oh right, what's, what's good, right. everybody? Chilling, man. Good, chilling. Man. How you been? Yeah, I think he's occupied. So, nah, I what guess you got to do? <laughs> Jose, you was about to say something? No, no, you was saying how to rock. <laughs> nah, I'm saying before I said, hold up. No, that's good, man. Fuck fuck it, fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about something else. <laughs> Low clarity, what up, bro? Rob oh, Calico, uh, what's happening? I want to ask uh, these two this time because I haven't seen enough to uh, Danny Beck, to be honest. So, w w what is you uh, like his style? Like, I only see like two fights of him, to be honest. Like, I don't know what he really does. Like the last fight I saw so, was. Well, basically, was put it like this. Uh, the way Kazakh fighters fight, well, especially nowadays, the way they're schooled, <clears throat> uh, and, and by the way, this is excluding Golovkin. Golovkin comes from a completely different kind of school of fighting. But the way Kazakh fighters tend to fight now is a good majority of them are taught to fight southpaw. Uh, Janabek is of that same ilk. He fights at long distance largely. He likes a pot shot. Uh, he can momentarily fight on the inside, but he generally likes to fight at long distance. Uh, he likes to use a probing jab for a good portion of his work, and he tends to fight relatively stationary. He's better when opponents are standing in front of him or coming forward at him, so then he can throw combinations and show a little bit more of his arsenal. But he struggles when opponents make him use his feet because he crouches so much. And it immobilizes him, in my opinion, which is why I thought he struggled against Bentley, because he struggled to get to his spots and get in position to even land. Bentley couldn't either, because he was the shorter man, and he himself is a very tentative, very nervous fighter. So he couldn't really do too much to Janabek in terms of deterring him, but I think Janabek, I think he's a little bit slow on his feet, but I think it's a correctable flaw, but... Uh, you know, I I don't necessarily give him. Let's let's just say if Golovkin was in peak form, I wouldn't give him much of a chance. So you're saying he's a B level fight? Basically. <laughs> no, I'm just talking shit. I haven't seen him. Uh, because the thing is, I've seen a lot of things online. Like, uh, what's his name? He, who supposedly dubbed him? Uh, Andrade. It was like a boogeyman. Dark, no, Dark, I, I don't know enough about Dark 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 Dark. Uh, it was a, it was a, like he... Oh, uh, it was actually, if you really want to get to it, was kind of the other way around. Because Andre oh, vacated his belt when Janabek was called up as mandatory. Which I think in oh. retrospect was a mistake because... Andre hasn't really gotten any work since then. He might as well have just gotten that scalp considering it was, you know... It was pretty hyped up at the time, or just so, going forward with the Zach Parker fight. But I don't really want to. I don't give a fuck about that. Man, I thought he was gonna. I thought the Zach Parker fight was. 
Yeah, I remember that, but I didn't know about the Janibek. But Janibek is in a difficult position because 160 pounds, top rank doesn't have a deep stable. I think it's, I think 160 sucks everywhere, man. Like, <laughs> I thought. Like, I think if you're like a talented dude and, you know, you have like. I think like right now, like one sixty is now for grabs. Like, who's the bell holder at sixty? Yeah, was you still a bell holder? No, he uh, think he's gonna be gone for the spot. <clears throat> the belt holders at one hundred and sixty pounds are Arislan Dilara, like- Janabek, uh, Golovkin vacated his belts. The WBA and the IBF. So, and, and Charlo, Charlo still holds the WBC title. So right. The, the IBF belt is up for grabs. It's going to be contested between Esquiva Falcao and I think uh, Vincenzo Gualtieri from Italy. So Falcao is going to win that fight. So they might be able to get when? a John and Beck unification between he and Falcao, but I'm not too sure. But they should anyway. When's that fight? I don't know, but it's in Germany because oh. top rank lost yeah. out on the first bid. It, that went to a first bid? The, um, yes. the two guys must be the on IBF ordered it. <clears throat> yes. Real quick, as as I said it earlier, um, he needs to work on fundamentals that are or the fundamentals behind his uh, framing and controlling and step around game. So he'll use all those high level tactics, stepping around and shit, but then he'll drop his hands or then he won't or he'll he'll control the wrong hand or you know what I'm saying shit like that. So if he works on that, he'll be he'll be a lot better yeah. and get hit a lot less. Uh they showing the replays for this fight and I'm like, yeah, he he definitely is getting touched with things and uh you can tell he he know the control but he don't know how he don't know, you know, ending this hit with control so that way he ain't get hit. Absolutely. Yeah, Mike going in and out, right? It is? Yeah. That's good. And somebody's got a TV on in the background. That might be me. Damn. Yo, uh, That's two strikes, Rob. Right? <laughs> two strikes, Rob. <right? laughs> hey, man. I had it low. Is it, can you still hear the TV now? It's like a girl. Nah, right? nah I okay. can't hear it. And how's the microphone? Yeah, it's better. Okay. Yeah, that was crazy. I thought it was something in my background. So. Yeah. Loma got two hours? Two. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Showtime. Showtime is getting to be the absolute worst with the fluff, man. God damn. They love to talk, man. I was telling you. They about to they about to talk for 30 minutes. Cause I doubt they got another fight. Main event start at six. Well, yeah. If you live in Cali. I was about to say what the Oh yeah, my bad. Well, yeah. Eight for me. Nine for Trix and Jose. Oh, Jose, I thought you was in a. I thought you was in a. In what? Oh, I hate to get slightly off topic, but damn, Loma and Haney is just in a week from now. Nice. Oh, I'm getting excited oh, yeah. for that. Yeah, oh yeah, happy sad. fight! Oh yeah, happy fight! Sad, night, everybody. Tangible, you sounded fucking super excited. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for intangibles. Loma. Yeah, that was yeah, Loma, Loma, and Haney. A week from now, I'm getting excited for that. You <laughs> be <laughs> like, God damn, bro, that's your excitement. Yeah, I can wait for this. Oh my god! By my standards, by my standards, I mean by my standards that that's thrilling, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not yeah, sure what a pack of pick on that one. I'm gonna probably flip a coin tomorrow. Flip a coin. <laughs> Shit, I definitely bet both sides. 
But I only win money if uh, Loma wins. Yeah, that's not the way you could win money the last I seen. I mean, unless you you could bet a lot on Haney. Because Haney by decision was like a minus fucking 400, 350 or some shit like that. Yeah, that's a big, you got to put. And I don't see yeah. either one of them getting a stoppage. I don't either. Devin talking like he he, he want to stop. Come on, man. Nah. The most Bro, likely person I see getting a quick. stoppage in the fight is Loma. His, I, I, shit, I, I don't even know if I agree with that, man. I, I think, I think they're both just really not likely to get a stoppage. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I can see what you're saying though. But Haney's gonna have to be quick, bro. So if you got to be even quicker than what you normally are, and you normally, you know, sacrifice power for speed and power for defense, then, bro, you ain't knocking shit out. I just look at it like he just don't he, – he that don't be the game plan. Like, or, or not even a game plan, but, like, uh, he's not sacrificing defense for offense. Not in that way, at least. You said I, what? I said um, Devin just – I don't think he's he going to sacrifice that much offense to – you mean sacrifice defense? Okay, yeah, I got you. Now I think your mic's going in and out again, so. Damn. Uh, low clarity, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely the best payouts for that fight are uh, stoppages. But that's for an obvious reason. Because it's not likely to happen, people. That's one of the only big fights where I can say I really don't know how to pick it. Yes, yeah, that, that ain't it that de- ain't true. It depends, bro. It depends. That's not true. I think it, it depend I think it all depends on Haney's development versus Southpaw. And you know, that's shit we can't see. So And the other fight is uh uh Anoye Butler. And that's not that's not clear either. Anoye Butler. I mean Inouye, uh Fulton. 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 Uh. I'm more yeah. con- for, look. I'm more confident in picking Inouye by stoppage in that fight than I am in either guy Haney or Loma winning that fight. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, me neither. And I'm not That's super confident take. in that either. <laughs> Courageous man. But I'm a little bit more sure of that result than I am of either guy winning that fight. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, might have to take a, take a day off work for that one, and do that shit live. Since it's on a fucking Tuesday at five a.m. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the fight don't come on till like seven a.m. or some shit like that, but. Or like you know around there, but still that shit is. But anyway, that's where the money is, though. So, but I don't. I mean, somebody tell me why they do it on whatever. What is it? So a Monday night or a Tuesday? I don't know how it works. Is it Tuesday night or Monday night in Japan? Uh, what? Yeah, Tuesday night. So it's Tuesday night in Japan. Why the fuck? Do they have fights on Tuesday nights? This is a casual Tuesday in Japan? Like, I don't know. Because I don't think they, I don't really think they specialize fights based on, uh, based on specific days of the week. Yeah. It's in June or July, the fight? July. Ah, right, yeah, that's good. July. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, anyway, Fulton, uh, it was initially supposed to be a Sunday morning. 
Which was the day after Canelo versus Ryder. Yeah, I wish that would have happened, but... Um, we also get uh, Ortiz Stan Jonas in July again. Unless Ortiz gets sick again, of course. Nah. Uh, I wanted to ask about it. Like, uh, what is that sickness about? Uh, I heard it was like some kidney issues. That he they, had. Oh man, where is Jacob? He said, "Right, where's Jacob?" <laughs> he said, to "Jacob, the doctor." Doc, <laughs> nah, they said it's uh, it's due to having uh, quote unquote, long COVID. Oh, right. I hate about it. <laughs> Why that can't be a thing? I, I, bro, I don't know. Shit, I, yeah. hey, whatever they say, bro. I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't know no better. I don't even give a fuck, really. But because uh, what I heard is like he's having issues making weight, like he's getting like sick of like cutting that much weight and shit. Cause he's a big dude. I mean, I don't know. That's what I heard. Uh, what's his name? Buddy in a uh, damn, I don't. All right, they got the same colored trunks on. Yeah, they do. Well, one silver, one white. Villa Grana is uh, clicking his there. feet. Is clicking his feet to move in eventual uh, to the left eventually in range. And and he's he going should get his ass whooped. Forward. <laughs> <laughs> he's going back foot first too. All right, that time that time he led with a cross into a pivot. Which was way better than what he was doing. All right, now they and now he got his feet caught up because he didn't go inside or outside foot position. All right, now he's reaching with the cross. Uh. <laughs> what so he reverse shuffled way out of range clicked his feet and then came back in range i don't like it was a disengagement for no reason then came back right into the 50 50 so yeah, okay, now he's reaching and getting countered with a 1-2 one, or a 2-1. I was about to ask Jim, are you solely looking at their feet? Because that's what I've been doing for the past 40 seconds. No, nah, I'm looking at both using my peripheral. It's a pretty big TV. Oh, <laughs> look at this thing. Humble <laughs> 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 bragging. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty That's, that's cool. Stephen Butler, number six, WBO middleweight contender. Okay. Huh. Uh, uh, I'm sure. Oh, Intangible's gone. I'm about to say, I'm sure Intangible will remind me who this is, but guess not. That's who dropped it. Rob, your, your mic's still going in and out, bro. Damn. It's like, so mm-hmm. what's that? It's not going completely out. It's just. The volume gets lowered and shit. Okay. Let me I'll try it without the headphones. The fuck is at my door. Hold on. Bro, what is this? What is this argument in the comment section, fam? Like, yeah, y'all been going on for like twenty minutes on this shit, bro. You been reading this shit, Trip? Uh, bro, now your mic is low as hell. It is. Oh, okay. Now it's good. Yeah, but I, but I got a, I got an echo though. 
I'm from the tweet. Wait, what are you talking about? Yeah, we we'll keep back. They've been that's arguing in the comment section for like 20 minutes, bro. I saw I saw some Olympic shit. And... Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm trying to read the comment section, but it's just continuous uh, uh, it, back and forth. Maybe this guy called Lightning said, like, so shut your mouth, bro. <laughs> 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 Yo. Yo, they're going out here for me. Yeah, Jim, how does it sound now? It sounds good. We're watching um, ESPN Plus undercards. Showtime is fluff. They've been talking. They're going to talk for 30 minutes. Well, shit, it's mm. already been fucking, what, 15? Then we got the amateurs on the high level fights. Bro, I, I mean, I don't know how you know he's figuring. A lot of uh, trainers and boxers pay attention to the channel. Some dudes faking like he a boxer. It's all good, man. I'm sure it ain't that important to to go back and forth for 20 fucking minutes. It sounds like you have a lot of time in your hands. <laughs> Let me call it. I'm gonna call it a draw. The com the uh comment section uh debate. <laughs> you both won. You both <laughs> lost. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Tell me with the facts. Tell me with the, <laughs> me with the red. Especially not with somebody. You know, <laughs> let them have it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Mm. Homie with the red gloves letting his backhand go. Yeah. yeah, I stopped paying attention, man. Somebody take it from there. Jose, you got it. Break down the fight, oh. bro. Oh, I need. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cause I, I mean, it, sounds, it, sounds like, it looks like an amateur fight. Like it's, oh I, damn! <laughs> <laughs> no, because I don't. I, I just know. I just know like guy for the uh, rough laws and the good laws. They both they both Billa. Nice little ooh, nice little step and turn with a little D hook. Plus, I think I'm behind, so I'm not the best guy to call it. Shit, sure, so oh, is Rob. Oh, yeah, I'm at um, 20 seconds left. Yeah, this round. This shit, the, the next round about to start. Mm. Yeah, I have them in the corner. Um, yeah, I think uh, Villa, it, it, he won round two. Bro. I have to say. Why I, got, why I got y'all on the panel if I can't take random breaks, man? <laughs> no, you good. You good. <laughs> you good, bro, man. Let's take care of this. Let's take care of this, yeah, We play a little ISO ball. There we go. <laughs> Some commander Anthony ISO. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let, let, we, have, we got this, bro. Yeah, man. Oh, I right, can't believe my the, damn. The Baylor battle. Gotta hold this shit up like a like a phone call. All right, it's about to the jab up the stands. Can I shuffle around? The battle for the foot right now. Standing, Via's uh, footwork is a lot cleaner than um, yeah, Villagrana's, but uh, Villagrana. <clears throat> I can yeah, still Villagrana's see. footwork seems kind of like uh. He's trying to do a lot with it, if that makes sense. Yeah, facts. Yeah. yeah. Like doing extra, right? Uh, like when you, you tell somebody how to do everything and they're trying to do it all at, at once. <laughs> You're gonna try to do an everything sandwich.
Yeah, he ain't half bad, man. He keeps taking his head off the center line, coming up. Well, he's whooping his ass now. But mm. uh, yeah, mm. footwork pretty pretty clean. Yeah. Nice little combinations based off uh, where he's putting his head at, or you know, low on each side and shit. So, mm. what way is it? Little physicality. You keep asking mm. that, bro. I don't know. It's not celebrity, man. <laughs> he threw that. He threw uppercut way. It's way too far back. That was nice. Yeah, I like Villa. It was nice. No, he, he was good. He was good. I don't wanna lie. I like Ooh. him. That's why I'm asking. Like he, he looked good. Looking good. Mm. Villa does keep ducking his head towards the center line on the inside, but he's not exactly putting it on um Villa Grana's chest, which would be a safer position. Yeah, it's um, more like you say to the left to that. Yeah. Yeah. Over over his own center Ooh. line. Ooh. Yeah, hell of a round for Via. Hell yeah. I like it. This that, fight, I like it. Mm, mm. Goddamn, Batman. Do something, man. <laughs> Sit back. <laughs> he knocking his ass. He, he got his fucking... I see him all balance and shit. Bro, why don't you motherfuckers buy a river or some shit? Like, what? what is that noise? Not me. It's quiet in this room. Yeah, somebody sound like they serene like a motherfucker. Joseph yeah, on here? It, it was Jose. Oh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> but what was it? I think it's my uh, my uh, my AC. Oh, okay. You got the generator too, huh? Yeah, I don't have a central AC, man. <laughs> oh, you got, oh, you got the you got the window unit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah don't be high. Yeah, don't be. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Shit, sound like it's making icicles. <laughs> Ooh, I think your uh, condensing coil is freezing up. It's been a while since I've put it on the window. <laughs> hey, yo, Jim, you not on the clock right now. You don't got to do that. We found Jim's uh, jukebox there. Yeah. Uh, Talk that AC shit. shit. Right. The, the, the PTSD. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you need some coil packs. <laughs> some coil packs. With <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Yeah, so V is definitely uh, landing a much more sharper work. It looks like the sharper fighter for sure. Sheesh. Mm, nice yeah. little step around right hand. God damn. He got a look. Yeah, Via can step around. His step around is very, it's clean. His only real problem is that little dip over the center line and keeping his head there. Like, uh, that's the only problem I continuously see. But yeah, he's starting time, to bounce in the, he, he got his head to the C slot, landed that, that body. Ooh, ugly dig off the step around. Oh, mm. Mm. All right, look like uh, Jesse Rodriguez or Lomachenko right there. <laughs> Bro, he whooping. Hey, wait till y'all see this shit. Oh, oh, dropped him ugly. Yeah, wait okay. till y'all see that shit, bro. That was a hell of a fucking sequence right there, man. He looked I'm really waiting on it. I, what I was going to say was he was he he was bouncing in the beginning of the round. It's at like 110. Okay. Yeah, he was he he was bouncing to be to start the round kind of bouncing in and out. Yo, buddy, buddy looking nice though. For real, I ain't even gonna lie. Nah, I like the pivots that he's doing, spinning, body shots, upper well. Oh, yeah, he dropped a bat. That little jab, <laughs> little dip, little duck see, under, little turn. He is back foot first, though. I think Rob yeah. said that earlier, but yeah. but um, as long as he's not fighting opponents that 
that knows the puck he's doing and how to take advantage, he'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Ugly uppercut in the corner. Trying to rest his work right Yo, there. He hurt. He hurt. Nice little elbow frame. Ooh, he nice big. Jump on him. Jump Ooh. on him. Mm. Jump on him. Uh, he could have had the ref call it right there, bro. He, mm. I don't think he realized it. Mm. Jim, yeah, let me. Buddy, ooh, yeah, Jim, let me know when the round done for you. Yeah, it's, it's done. Been Yo, done. that little turn with the little hook to the body, that shit was clean. Yeah, it's right yeah. before he get the knockdown. Yeah, all that shit was clean. That whole sequence yeah. looked great. Mm. It's like uh, Villa Grain. It's like he just gets stuck and don't. He got times where he's moving a lot, and then he's got, and then when it's he getting hit on, he just stay there. It's like, did yeah, disengage yourself, bro? Because you just taking on, he, yeah, you're taking punishment. You don't got to. Mm-hmm. Mm, shit. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, he could have, he could have jumped on him. Yeah, yeah. The ref, the, the ref was looking hard. He was when he got him in the corner. He was getting ready to intervene, but right now he's got he got him talking to the doctor now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so that means uh, that means you know, buddy got a good round. His, his fight's about to be over. If you already yeah. got him talking to the doctor, yeah, we gotta got see to, who uh, like he got a cut or nothing. So it's, it's got to be just you know, just blunt, his... force, blunt force trauma. Mm-hmm. Probably how he was how he getting over there to the corner. Yeah, nice clean. That motherfucker, that motherfucker got clipped in like the chin sh- collarbone area. That shit. <laughs> she was um. <laughs> mm. Shit. Outside slip lead hand uppercut. Clean. Oh, I'm waiting on that then. Ooh. It's like uh two twenty two. Nice cross. Mm. Damn, what he separate him for? Oh, okay, that's what you're talking about. Okay, that shit was like right out the right before the round started. Motherfucker said, "I don't, know, I don't know. Go look at the doctor. Like, damn, fuck he do. Hmm. Nice, nice little elbow block. Yeah, Villa. Yeah, we need to know who who uh, Villa trainer is. Yeah, Villa Villa Grana. No, you know, just leaning on the inside. No physicality. No controls. Getting beat up up on the inside. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him pull his take his lead hand out to control, but yeah, like he's he probably don't know you know when's the best time to do it. I but I have seen him try to do it. Yeah. All right. The ref stepped in at a. A minute, five seconds. Mm. Fight's over. Yeah. Got the brakes beat off of him. Yeah, man. Just it seemed like like uh oh shit. If he when he was time for like when it's time for him to actually move, he wasn't moving. And all the times he was moving, he could have been stationary or at the very least could have got on your offense. And once Villa start, you know, letting off a couple of them combos, okay, disengage. That ain't yeah. where you want to fight at. All right. So, Showtime card. Oh, it's still six minutes. What the fuck, though? Why they? Ain't... On my YouTube TV shit, it's not showing um, that it's supposed to be a fight on. Yo, Bila's training looks like Master Roger from Dragon Ball. Uh, hmm. Like, <laughs> Showtime, right? Showtime. 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 Yeah. Let me see. They changed. Mm. 
Oh, wrong. Wrong category. Oh, okay. I found it. All right, but so they did change it. I see. Hold on. Oh, I see it at six o'clock. Yeah. You mean eight o'clock? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Look, you know what? Instead of changing back and forth, let me just put this shit on my iPad. I'm gonna go double. I'm gonna go double box. You didn't watch um that the zone that the zone card earlier. Nah, man, I had shit to do. Yeah, been a chill ass Saturday for your boy. Yeah, a little time to do something. While we in between, proud of this work that me and Chris did. I wanted. I was glad you talked. I don't know if he was gonna mention it, but I'm glad you mentioned it, man. When I seen it said ghost, I said, "Oh man, we gotta." He two. He know he two for two. Oh, on that uh, that that uh, the system shit. The system. Yeah, that shit. And, that shit hard. Yeah, man. The boy, he he. He good man. He 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 break he break down defense in such a digestible way. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. he's damn good. Um. Damn, did I finish? I know I watched the video because I was like, okay, he talking so much about David. I'm like, okay, the second half of this video is gonna be Canelo part. I'm like, did I hear him give a prediction, or or no? Oh yeah, he gave a prediction. Okay, I, I don't think I. Yeah, I'm, I don't about think to, I'm about I, to. I'm about to play it. Appreciate, it. man. Put it on for the niggas that ain't paid their three dollars. Nah, this one's on YouTube. Oh, it is. Oh, remember? Yeah, I told you I had. I got three more. Well, now two more that I that I owe my uh, sponsor. So you know, I got to put them on YouTube because I owe my sponsor that shit. Mm. Check it out. Study some of those videos there. The guys Fight fam. Smash that like button. Subscribe and hit that notification. Class in session. Class in session. Benavidez is a fighter that historically looks to apply pressure, use physical controls such as cross necks, pins, frames, etc., and flood his opponent with a barrage of punches. His most mm. favorable position is a 50-50. Uh, hold on for a 50-50 second. 50 is a shared position. Joseph, what up, man? Hey, good evening, Brother Gems. How you doing, my friend? Chilling, man. What's good? Ah, uh, well, looking forward to seeing this um, extensive paid advertisement for Haney versus Lomachenko next Saturday on ESPN tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and also, also looking for a... Uh, a night of solid corruption by the WBA. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. Look, look. I, I, and once again, no one's writing about it. And I promised my source that I wouldn't write about it. But I'm thinking about doing it, um, depending on the outcome of the fight, um, under a pseudonym. And I'm telling you guys, just a couple hundred of my closest friends on online, that the WBA, Gilberto Mendoza Jr. You remember I told you this a while back, like Gabriel Maestre, he's he's indirectly funding and managing Gabriel Maestre from Venezuela. Uh, Val- uh, Venezuela. Yeah. And, and, and so who's fighting tonight in the main event in an opportunity that he doesn't deserve? Yeah, Barroso. Ismael Barroso, yeah. So yeah. once again, uh, it's no secret, right, that Gilberto Mendoza Sr., God rest his soul was managing fighters when he was with the WBA president before, and he's from Venezuela. So his son is mainly, uh, merely a chip off the old block. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. All right, give me a sec. Chris, what up, bro? Chris Trucker, what's good, what's good with you? Uh-oh. 
All right. Check back on you later. But uh, I was showing them uh, my latest film study, Joseph. So, Oh, that's great, man. Is it on um, Canelo versus uh, Benavidez, right? Yes, yes, sir. I think I saw that in my feed. Yes, I haven't had a chance to watch it all, but I'm sure it's spot on, man, just well, like you long, always are, brother. As long as, long as the fight don't – well, actually, so this is my guy, Chris, that uh, – I did the narration on this one, but well, if he has your stamp of approval, oh yeah, then yes, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. you, that you, uh, you, that's um, chef. that's the chef. You, you know, that's I, you, oh really? Wow, that's great, man. Why? Well, I, I will say this. What? The um, fuck? what? The yeah, fuck? you, you whoa, whoa, operated whoa, 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 a very whoa, whoa, high standard. Wait a minute. Brother. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going yes, on sir? in the ring? There's no opponent out. What was that? What? Are you, which one are you watching? Obviously, watching. ESPN, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, because okay. the Showtime one is just starting now. Look like yeah, they was Showtime checking, is. Um, <coughs> they was checking a, a fighter gloves. The ref was, but there was no opponent across the ring. So, anyway, let me show this. Who is it? Gabriel Flores <laughs> coming in the ring uh, now. This is a fighter that historically is it? To apply to oh yeah. It is. Okay. All right. Well, so. he's the only. He's a lone ticket seller on the card. That's the only reason why they still have him on there. Is he's from Stockton. Got you. Where is this fight at? In Vegas? I mean, Stockton, in California. Stockton. Damn, you know Stockton? Okay, I, I, yeah. I'll hold this shit for later. No, no, no. Please play it, sir. Well, should the fight about to start in a minute? Huh? Oh, okay. Well, we've got 10 minutes of fluff to begin, right? Yeah. All right, let me go back down. His muscles, such as cross necks, pins, physical controls, such as. Benavidez is a fighter that historically looks to apply pressure, use physical controls such as cross necks, pins. Frames, that was like a peel. That was like a, an Flutter's attempt at appeal. With a barrage of punches. Yeah, he was just saying he does a bunch of shit. Is a 50 -50. So we just put a bunch <laughs> of shit. 50 is a share Man, he has such great hand speed at 168, doesn't he? To land the raw yeah, of course. It's and uh, his punches are very, very straight for a tall, gangly fighter, right? Mm. Like Ooh. it, it's it. Even though he throws hooks, they're very sharp, crisp, and compact. Very little wasted motion from uh, Benavides. On the approach, to the 50, 50, I'm sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. a reverse step, meaning back foot first to move forward. Though the step can mask one's forward progression if done in tandem with deceptive maneuvers, being used as a standard base without any controls during the advancement can cause the opponent to lose their balance and the momentum halted if they're physically controlled or attacked. I was just saying a lot of people don't understand this part of it. <clears throat> they think there's nothing wrong with what... No, his footwork is... Um... Approach, Benavidez will preferably use a high guard. So the high guard will Pause the gyms. as a means to establish a line of defense <clears throat> instead of allowing. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, when you look at that, you you just thinking, oh, he's walking into, or he's, you know, he's in, he's in stands, but he is breaking his stands. For, you know, for that time, yeah, where his foot is coming forward and and he's down almost squared. If someone was to attack, yeah, he he would be in harm's way. Hey, you can't do shit but high guard. Yep, yeah. that's it. And, and right, if you know that, the, anyway. oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh uh, well, yeah, if you know the high guard is getting ready to, if you know you activating the high guard, you you just know okay, well then now that's my next step is to attack the high guard, or you know, oh I I want you to put up a high guard, so I'm gonna attack you as you step. You put the high guard up. Okay, now I'm going to start my offense. You know. <coughs> But yeah, it's definitely he definitely shouldn't step like that. And now, you know, I didn't watch so many of these boxing gym videos. Uh, yeah, I could, I could, I could see it very, very clearly. Yeah, very right. clearly. Uh, God damn, fucking Christ, bro! Hey, I, <laughs> I literally took a piss in the fight. So, Jesus. Well, good, good thing wait, wait, for me. Wait, wait. It ain't who, quite. Who, 
Who's hey, competing? Started, I'm yet. not. I'm not watching ESPN yet. Um, who's who's who was competing on ESPN? It was uh, Flores. Flores. What is that? Is that his name? Yeah. I'm talking about Gabriel um, Flores, um, the Junior. ticket seller, Gabriel Flores Jr. Yeah. Shit. They split, give him a they, split they, second they, knockout. <laughs> oh my gosh! And he was on the good end of that. He was on the good end of that. Yeah, he wasn't oh, even known well, Talk that. about a layup for in front of his home fans. Yeah, that's the Jab. only reason why he's on the card is he sold all the tickets. Yeah, what was it? Uh, jab. I'm I'm watching it. I'm I'm getting yeah, it for you. Hook. Little stab jab from dude with the blue Bro, trunks. I literally took a piss, man. <laughs> <laughs> man Jack, and this motherfucker was celebrating. Wow. Well, you know, after the tough year he had last year. Jab to the body, uh, well, jab to yeah. the body, deflect. Brick. Oh, just a, a a counter, a lead counter hook, bro. Well, you could call it, you could maybe call it a check hook, but I mean, and that's an early stoppage too, because dude is on the ground he knocked him talking out to the ref. Yeah, huh? that's uh 34-year-old Derek Murray who's on the other end of that. Oh, Dog. Right. I mean, I mean, it I mean he knocked him down, but he uh-huh. ain't like done. Yeah, counter. Yeah. Got caught well, with a hook, landed a counter hook. Look, his only win over the last two years was against a shot. Um, former champion Demarcus Chop Chop Corley. What is he? Fifty. I heard that nickname before. Wait, Chop what? Chop. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, his only victory of the last two years, right? Um, the guy he just fought, Gabriel Flores, a thirty-four-year-old veteran. With uh, 26 pro bouts, well, his last about, win is over a shot, chop, chop, Corley. The guy, oh, so the so high. Yeah, Derek oh. Derek Murray, the guy who just got stopped. Oh, what the fuck is he have so high on the chop? All right, anyway. Maybe because he's from St. Louis. That's it's, a it's man. I don't like that Louis. stoppage, bro. Let That's, me see. That they, was... Usually they play the whole fight again when that shit happens. It look, yeah, they are. They, I, I got the replay up, so you, you it's coming for you. Nice nah. little block, block to the body. Nah, I know the replay. They, I saw the replay. It's just I want to see the whole sequence again. Oh, they showed. They showed it to me twice. Block to the body. He got ready to hook. He got hooked. Counter with the hook. Dang. Yeah, I don't like that stoppage. I'm like, dang. Yeah, he got he got dropped, but I'm like, he wasn't like. No, to be honest, he land uh, flat on his back. Like, he is not so venues. All right. Okay, fair. Fair. When I do yeah. see it in that way, yeah, where he look, he did get limp. Uh, okay. Okay. He, think, he was I, knocked out. Yeah. By the time the, he at least you put your elbows in the middle, like something. You know, like yeah. He okay. He's, you, yeah. Okay. Like, again, like, he probably came to continue, but, you know, just preventing any injuries and things, you know, probably. I'm or like, man, like, it's... I mean, probably just like a hometown shout out for this kid. You know, I remember he had a tough, uh, rough year last year. Yeah, yeah he did. That's why that's you, the why do you say he had a rough this. year? What does that mean? Well, he got his ass whooped by the current champion, um, Luis Alberto Lopez. Is that his name? I mean, he got his ass whooped, yeah, yeah. torn up, like it is. And his dad, rather than you know, mercifully thrown in the towel, said, "Oh, you're." You're not gonna quit. You're gonna you're gonna meet the final bell. And he took a beating for a, an unnecessary uh, three more rounds, and it should have been. Because he, he, yeah, he took yeah. back to back losses. You know, it was a beating, and, and but what was the other thing? Was uh, the, the, the other was one was a a bogus, I think, a split draw or a, a split decision. But yeah, he didn't look good in his last fight either. So yeah, this was uh, something for confidence. And once again, he's the ticket seller. <laughs> Um, in boxing promotions, one hundred and one protected ticket sellers in their home area. That's just a simple rule of promotions, right? Yeah, yeah. that seems smart, Joseph. You know, I'm not. I'm protecting my money. I'm not gonna have you out here looking crazy. And we got you a home game. Yeah, that's un. un well, and you know, um, if they're gonna continue working with this kid, and he's a good kid, um, and he's he's. In terms of marketability, <clears throat> but um, you got to know what you're working with before you invest yeah. any serious money or get some serious movement with this kid. And they found out the hard way 
that he doesn't, he's very deficient on the inside. He's a donut fighter. He's completely deficient. No. He's very slick from mid to long range, but at the weight division, he's uh, currently competing. Well, he doesn't have much power, although you wouldn't know it by looking at that fight. Right. But if I'm not mistaken, he, he, he just moved up. He was competing as a super featherweight, right? wasn't it? Yes. Did, I, did, I, yes, did I miss a quick fight on Showtime or something, or they just still haven't started yet? Mm. Hold on, I got you. I told you they have like 10 minutes started. of fluff. Nah, it looked like they yeah. about to uh, introduce these do- these two fighters. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the first fight we get is Sims. All right, bet. Sims versus Ak- uh, Akhmadov. Akhmadov? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I, it looked like Dove. Dove. Uh, yeah, it's Sims. Akhmadov. Yeah, um, and you know, it, it's strange. You could have easily scored both of his losses for Akhmadov. He could easily still be an undefeated fighter right now. Oh, that guy, oh, Akhmadov has two losses? Yeah, one of them is Amari Varios, in which I thought he won a points decision. Um, but once again, Varios is a very, very different, his people are very dear friends of mine. And you won't hear me talk about that tomorrow at the press conference. He's going to be there. But, um, yeah, in my opinion, he lost. He lost that fight. Mm. He got knocked sounds down. Like a debat- sounds like a debatable loss. Which Yeah, yeah, it's it not happens. a robbery by any means. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. it could have easily gone the other it way. It could have went either way. But yeah. so now, um, if you're Tom Brown, the last thing you want is for Agmadov to – now, once again, he's not a ticket seller, so you're forced to stick him in tough. But the last thing you want is for someone like like the Derevyanchenko um, syndrome in which a legitimate contender, a guy who's had a tough road to hoe, right, um, he now is has the mindset of, a, of, a, of an opponent. And that's very unfortunate. A guy with a deep amateur background and um, very good skill set, yeah, he runs the risk of being an opponent. And it's the last thing you want from a legitimate contender. Yeah, the the Repian Checo, he always has some skill on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially in the pocket. Problems. Yeah, definitely gave problems to Triple G and Danny Jacobs. Minim- yeah, Danny Jacobs. Uh Charlo handled him pretty easy, but yeah. Oh, yeah and was, uh yeah. Carlos Adamas. Oh. Carlos Adamas won by uh the ref not even warning Carlos for wrapping him up like an octopus every time he closed the distance. <laughs> Put him in checkmate as early as round two. And look, and once again, you're going to see that next week. If the ref doesn't do anything about Haney's deficiency on the inside or just lack of willingness to participate on the inside and it lets to tie up Vasil Lomachenko or at least try to. Yeah, the, you, you're know. gonna Loma's, Loma's pretty good at getting out or or really getting a ref on him on his side. You know what? You're right about that. Um, as soon as like like once again, he understands um, what to do if someone tries to tie you up. A lot of fighters don't, and they don't yeah. practice that in the gym. Yeah. But if you don't give your opponent something to grab onto, or you're not a willing participant in the dance, right on the inside. Yeah, it's very hard to tie up Lomachenko. You're, that's a good point. And something that Lomachenko yeah, we'll likes see. to do I mean, is... Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were saying something. I no, said we'll something see. Lomachenko... Yeah, go ahead. No, it's something quick. Something that... Just adding to that, like Lomachenko uh, likes to like uh, <clears throat> rough his... Rub the, you know, the, the, the lace of his gloves and uh, the tape right in the face to... Of oh, the Lennox Lewis trick, huh? Yeah, exactly. So, like, you think about it, you think twice before you, you start twitching again. Like, that's that's why you see a lot of uh, his opponents with rough markings, you know, in his face and, like, kind of cuts through sometimes. Like, he just pressed the tape and the, the, the list. And by experience, that she is rough, man. <laughs> that she, well, you might, you might have, like, some of the eyebrows a little, you know, <laughs> missing. <laughs> well, see, that's why I was so surprised with the ease that – a very strong middleweight like Carlos Adamas, but why he was able to tie up Ser- Sergei Dervyanchenko so easily, almost at will, Holy because shit. he does the same stuff in the pocket as Lomachenko, very similar anyway, where he will not give you that squared up angle after your fires off a combination or, or oh. starts to work. He'll step around, <clears throat> right? His opponents. Yeah. So hey, I was really surprised. Boy. 
Sidebar. Um, Genebeck's manager is Lomachenko's pops. Am I saying that right? Yeah, it's probably why they um, didn't want to fight Gennady Golovkin. That ain't Lomachenko's mm -hmm. father. That's his manager. Are you talking about Igus Klimas? Yeah, that's not his yeah, father. Yeah, Igus Klimas. Well, well, you guys have any idea oh. why Top Rank signed a non-ticket seller like Janabek Ali Manala? Well, it's because he's currently managed by the guy who manages Vasily Lomachenko and Alexander Usyk. Okay. And he's, and he's good. And he's very good. <laughs> and, and you're going to see him look spectacular against a style matchup tailor-made for him like Stephen Butler. Yeah, Jim's not. you, Jim Chicago. He on TV, man. Y'all on TV, man. Y'all represent, man. Boss man, huh? Boss man, uh, Smith Ken, Ken Sims. He from Chicago. Is he? Mm -hmm. They just said it. Batir Akhmadov. Yeah, they nine and two with eight knockouts should be undefeated. In my I, opinion, I never really followed uh, Sims. He's but, a good fighter. Oh yeah. He's good. He, it, it said it right there. It said uh, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> See, there you go. I tell you what, I'm excited for the press conference. So, um, yeah, I'm not. I, I'm going to try anyway, <laughs> but I'm not going to talk. Hopefully, nearly as much as I usually do, because I'm I'm hosting a press <laughs> conference tomorrow for TME Promotions, and Roy Jones is going to be there. So, oh, okay, that's what's up. Yeah, it should be it should be fun, man. It's uh, Mother's Day, so. Tell you hey, what, they are the Day, man. yep, they are the real champions on this uh, on this planet. Um, right. In a sport where we celebrate the uh, gallantry and the brave mm -hmm. souls who take punishment for our entertainment, but boy, they've got nothing on our mothers. That's for damn sure. Sims is doing take punishment <clears throat> for not. Sims, Sims is doing <laughs> all right. Sims is doing what what James was trying to do earlier. And measuring the right distance and getting that lead crossing. He's landed two of them so far. Little jab jousting. Switch, switch stances on him. Mm -hmm. Immediately catch and shoot with a with a lead hand hook. Akhmadal's he started he started the round out doing that jab jousting and he had the, the top hand on he had the his lead hand was on top, so he just started hooking. I seen that. You know, and understanding that uh Akhmadov is a very prolific oh. counterpuncher. He's doing a very good job of using the disjunct movement, uh, the jab and sporadic movements, not just the Akhmadov. same one out there. Amadov doesn't look comfortable fighting a fellow Southpaw. Yeah, that cross he's down. A I seen the first cross he's a little line. hesitant. Yeah, I like the way he's switching stances. Maybe and he hadn't seen a lot of Southpaws. Well, no, South, no Southpaw sees a lot of Southpaws. So no. Except, yeah. except Jojo Diaz. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. I'm sure he's going to give Oscar De La Hoya a nice Christmas card every year for that. Yeah, he, yeah, he had he fought like something like six southpaws in seven fights. Damn. Yep. As a southpaw, so it's, you know that shit is rare as hell. Nice yeah. left hand down the middle. The zone need to get JoJo on the on yeah, the panel. Agmadov yeah. looks totally frozen. Against he does. The he looks befuddled. Yeah. Well, now Sims is fighting Orthodox. He's oh, doing a very good job bro, of, of hold changing on, man. looks. I'm, I'm at three seconds in the round. He, he hadn't switched Orthodox in forever. I'm I'm at 50. I'm way uh, behind you guys. Uh, yeah, I'm at a minute or two. <laughs> yeah, easy Sims round, man. Agmadov definitely just yep. froze he's in no He's in no man's land from what uh, trainers call that. Where, yeah, you're, you're, you're there to be hit and you're not in firing range. And you don't look mm. comfortable at all. Now, yeah, mm. at the end of the round, he's trying to make his way on the inside, but still Kenneth Sims getting the better of the exchanges. Yeah, Sims pretty much dominated the round. He did. Yeah. Agmadal didn't throw nearly as much. With that said, though, yeah, he does look uncomfortable, but he started this way against Mario Barrios. Didn't really start heating up until the third or the fourth, which is probably why he lost the fight. Well, 
Well, Mario Barrios is an orthodox fighter too. So he I, is, I yes. And he was getting cracked with that left hook as early as round three. Yeah. So let me so let right, me so get now this straight. Him started off this round orthodox. Yo, I'm gonna put a pin on in something, and we'll we'll talk about it uh, after after that Showtime fight go off. But ESPN got a middleweight top ten list. We we got some shit we gotta speak about. <laughs> eh, honestly, Boy. man, don't don't put any credence in ESPN's lists, man. Come on now. Mm, nice counter cross from Sims. Man. They gave us some. Yeah, we 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 got something to talk about. We got some fluff. We gonna talk about too. <laughs> Showtime giving out fluff. The boxing gym channel is giving out fluff in between fights too. Well, motherfucker, I'm not in between a fight, bro. You just slow. <laughs> I'm watching a <the> fight. <laughs> <laughs> I said when yo. I said when the fight is over. I, I, uh, all right. I, all right. <laughs> when the fight's over, we we'll talk about it. All right, Sim switch back southpaw. Let Akhmadov close distance where he landed an overhand over the shoulder. Mm. Yeah, he's starting to inch closer, yeah. um, even as early as the beginning of the second round, when, which I'm at the 245 mark. Yeah, I'm at 147. Chingao. <laughs> um, Akhmadov is like over, overstepping um, outside lead foot. Yeah. What? Do you, oh, wait. So you're saying he's putting his lead foot on the outside and he's overstepping there? He, right, right. He nah, he did it. Oh, uh, that don't make sense. There is no overstepping when you got your lead foot on the outside. Okay. Well, his foot if you is overstep, just past. It's, it's, his foot is just past Sims's lead foot. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you overstep to the outside, you're on the weak side angle. Okay. All right. Yagmadov's starting to find range. He's starting to get more comfortable now. Damn. That was a nice combo uh, Sims let off. So Sims is switching back and forth so much that I, I, I'm not sure if he's still on a game plan or is if he's just doing it naturally. Right. You know, some guys... It seems natural. It doesn't seem well, you know. Ooh, nice, nice ass body shot. Hmm. He was squared in the shoulder roll, got caught over the shoulder again with a backhand hmm. as a southpaw. Hmm. Okay. Switch back orthodox again. Did you see him try to? Uh, nah. Did you see that uh, high guard blinder he just had? Well, not just had, but uh, that Dude. high guard blinder. He's... Rob, you can't do that, bro. I'm sorry. You got 50 you. seconds behind, man. Got you. I got you. <laughs> That's, on That's on me. That's on me. Did I see it? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It's just yeah. <laughs> More than likely, brother. Yeah. Appreciate you. <laughs> Exactly, Chris Trucker. Yeah, that open. Well, first of all, the squared, squared shoulder roll is. I mean, you might as well just have your hands down. Mm -hmm. hey, Rob, uh, I, I'm glad you said it first because I'm behind too. So, <laughs> what did, did, did take a? Did he take a page out of the uh, um, Andre Berto handbook and how not to do the shoulder roll? <laughs> Yeah, the way you do the show. It's honestly, if you if you're if you're that squared up and you don't lean back, you don't use any of the proper technique. Yeah, you're just gonna get your ass whooped. Well, Berto is also in the open stance. Like, I, Ooh. the shoulder rolls mechanics in the open stance just don't really work unless you know how to adjust. Which is like, so how do you block a jab? You know what I'm saying? Oh, so now oh. you gotta you gotta rely on your lead shoulder to block a jab, which is damn near impossible. If somebody has an accurate jab and, that can place it in the right spot, and, and, and so, so hold on, so so um, you could adjust to it by you know using elbow blocks, just lifting that elbow, mm -hmm. but that also opens up other shits that you got to be aware of. So if you lift the elbow up, now your body's open. So mm -hmm. now now they can feint the jab to the head, throw throw the uh you know backhand to the body, and if uh. They throw it two one, you're pretty much fucked. 
because now because mm-hmm. now you're trying to either lean the backhand because obviously you're in the wrong stance to block to to roll the shoulder to block it and and then you're trying to uh roll the shoulder on a jab which that shit gets to be impossible so it, it all depends on your footwork at that point you just got to get out of dodge every time and Berto ain't know how to do that shit. No, didn't Robert Guerrero of all people beat his Robert ass when Guerrero he tried to do that? that Breaks off Berto trying yep. to do that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. If if that's the first time you're trying to do it in a, in a pro fight at this level, you might as well not even do it. Yeah, I see Sims. Akhmadov completely closed distance right yep. now, and um, mm-hmm. Sims is just fighting out the fifty fifties. If I'm saying it's the third round, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah, with such a deep amateur background, um, yeah, he, he's, he just likes to take his time before closing the distance just to get his eyes adjusted to the to the movement and the speed of his opponent. And now he's just, once again, he's working around that perimeter, showing him, giving him different angles and just kind of overwhelming him now. And now Kenneth Sims... He's starting to tie up, and now he looks very uncomfortable in the inside. Chris Truck, appreciate the super chat. I was just working with my homie, and he went straight to the rope, squared up, and put his arm in a sling. I'm like, man, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, you can't be. The videos. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks, it looks stupid. It you looks can't be squared on the no. ropes with your arm in a sling. That don't even make sense. And once again, watch someone who perfected it, man, like James Tony. Look at him. If you're not sure of what to do, and if your trainer doesn't profess that kind of technique, watch James Tony film over and over and over again, and do the shit out of shadow boxing. And what's amazing is James Tony was so proficient fighting off the ropes where most people are very uncomfortable. And it was a joy to watch him work, man. Yes. So, Tom, <clears throat> yeah, Gems, why was Sweepy able to do the shoulder roll as a southpaw? He was always moving as he did. Did it cross-stepping from inside, which is also weird. But that's the that's the answer to your first question. Mm-hmm. Like I said, so so when the mechanics don't work for you, now it's up to your feet. And who had some of the best fucking feet in boxing, period, yep. I mean, of all time? is fucking Pernell Whitaker. Mm-hmm. So so whereas mechanics would fail in the shoulder roll, his feet never failed. Whether he crossed – I mean, he perfected doing something wrong, which was that uh, which was that cross step backwards or to the side from inside foot position sometimes too. So he would even step over with the lead foot then crossed up with the back. So – but nah, I wouldn't recommend that shit because that's just you know some shit that he perfected, that he perfected. and that worked for, that him, worked for but him. But I'm getting an echo. Yeah, I tell you what, um, vintage Ukrainian amateur fighter doing a very good job using creative combinations of the body and head, and then switching around, stepping around after he fires off a combination, um, and forcing his opponent to reset, but. I tell you what, though, there's a nice little mouse on the under, under uh, Akhmadov's right or yeah, right eye. Sims opening up, open opening him up with a four three to the head mm. uh, from the southpaw, mm. and combinations are working better and better on the inside for Sims. Hey, with so, Joel Diaz, you know what? Man. You know what? Mm. I don't, I don't like his stance switching. Yeah, it almost reminds you of Danny Jacobs at a time where it's unnecessary. It almost seems like it's a distraction more than more than it helps, doesn't it? It seems like, you know, once he gets in a groove, like from the um, first round, when he switched southpaw, he totally froze Akhmadov's offense. So why he didn't just stay southpaw and keep doing what he was doing, that should have like been me. Exactly. I mean, yeah, when it's working, why do you change for a it? Reason. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Everything. This, like I said, it almost, boxing. like I said, it almost reminds you of Danny Jacobs. Like sometimes you'd scratch your head and go, well, that wasn't effective. Why are you still doing it? Right. Damn, somebody outside in the garage. 
Oh, my apologies. I'm on my patio, guys. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll hit mute when I'm not talking. My apologies, guys. Yeah, so Sims looks like he's technically sound. It's just... I don't know... I don't know how high his boxing IQ is. Yeah. These are, you know, the last two rounds, though, are very difficult to score because Kenneth Sims, he's still scoring. Um, and his shots look crisp. Um, Akhmadov, though, is throwing more volume, um, just more punches. Mm. But, you know, it depends on what the judges prefer because this is, these the last two rounds are very difficult to score. Yeah. He switched again and it switched in range and got blasted with a over. Mm -hmm. But he did land two nice ass counter backhands when he was orthodox, but now he's back southpaw again. Yeah, that right hook hey, is bro, his scoring. His switching don't make no sense. No. I'm, I, I'm, I would I, still, y'all you know, know more than me, that, but uh, Sims up, but it's, it ain't, it's more, it's way more competitive than it needs to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it don't seem like it's a game plan. It don't seem like it's a bro. Ain't nobody gonna say, "Yo, all right, here's the game plan: switch back and <laughs> forth, switch back and forth every twenty seconds, and yeah. that should, that should do it." Yeah, it just seemed like he doing it because he can do it. Ooh, good counter shot, man, by by Kenneth Sims at the nineteen second mark. Um, yeah, man, this is a good. This is a very good fight. And once again, guys, this is the product of Tom Brown's matchmaking. Is it any coincidence that I'm going to say it again, that PBC's product has gotten better now that Al Heyman has relinquished a lot of the duties to Tom Brown, a real boxing guy. I, I didn't even know that. Mm. Happened. Yeah, it, it, have you noticed. And once again, Steven Espinosa is completely elated. Um. Because, yeah, Tom Brown is one of the best matchmakers of the past 30 years in boxing. He's such a soft-spoken but very sharp, very sharp guy. Man, I, Sims, okay. Sims, he's he's throwing and landing combinations, but I think what you got to notice is he's not moving around every time. After he's done with his combinations, he just stays in a 50, 50. He's not exactly on the a slot with his head or on the center line. He might move his head, but his feet don't move. Sometimes. He's still right there. Yeah. As Chris would say, he's still, he's still there. Well, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing to be honest with you. It's like, almost like he's not bothered with any of the power or say lack of from Agmadov. And he's focused on merely getting his pound of flesh. No, I and, mean and, that could be the case. And I, I but I mean he's still taking, he's still you still taking punishment. He's you choosing, are you choosing to get hit. Yeah, yeah but you, fight, fighters, bro. I mean, it's, so that's not unheard of for fighters to do, obviously. But, no, but, right, right. Um, but is it the smartest thing to do? Of course not. So no, it's not in in my opinion. Um, now, once again, it all is contingent on what the judges prefer. What? What? But if you're seeing him completely focused and not even being wavered Whoa. by the pressure or by the uh, punch power of Akhmadov, yeah, that goes into the minds of the judges. They look at that and say, okay, well, this guy, well, he might be having his punches probably are having greater effect. Bro, this, it's the weirdest thing how he keeps switching now. Yeah, I mean, bro, he just gave all them punch, all that solid work he gave, he got, he gave back by switching well, southpaw and getting touched up. Well, come on, gems, and it 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 makes no sense because think about this: if Akhmadov is right there on the inside, mm. why does it do, do you have any advantage if you switch position like that on the inside? No. no. No, but mm. no, nah, he's but he's disengaging and switching positions though. I mean, it's but it doesn't really make any sense. I I mean, especially if all right, you you putting in all this good work, you're not really getting touched. Okay, nice little double jab cross, but you're not really getting touched from orthodox. Mm. Bet stay doing that shit. Why you? Yeah. Why did you switch? Yeah, 
like like I said, it, it's like it's like he's switching because he can switch, not like because it's he noticing he's getting off more with a stance. He he's just doing it because he can do it. Yeah, and and look, and the longer he, God damn, this dude look old as hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's who's bro, that? Barossa is a fucking is a great no, grandpa. Dude, fam. That's that's what I'm saying, dude. Holy There's that's somebody Paul Paul out there. <laughs> like, and he's dude, fighting. You, bro, wait till y'all see this shit. And he's fighting for a major world title. This motherfucker looks 65 years old. For yeah, real. yeah, dude, he looks like he's had a hard life, and he's only 40. My ass. Nah, he ain't 40, bro. He's yeah, he, he looks like he's 50. Venezuela. That's why I'm saying Gilberto Mendoza up to his old tricks again. Putting giving the number 35 ranked 140 pounder a shot at a major world title. I can't wow, man. Does that make any sense at all? Once again, it's it's his favoritism, and he, once again, he's he's giving handouts to some of the fighters that he's managing. And should a president of any sanctioning organization be managing any fighter? Oh my gosh! Thursday, yeah. Now you see it. <laughs> Holy cow! That will play oh, like some kind of great. Guy. Nah, dude, he looks like my grandfather. Damn, all of y'all on the same time, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm about behind. <laughs> oh, man. That's just hey yo. And How are you going to say number one WBA lightweight contender? I've never seen him. Nope. He's 35. And guys, here's the shocking thing. He hasn't fought in a 12-round fight since 2019. Number one WBA contender. Number yep. one contender. Hey. Hey, man. Hey, he's been whooping ass every, every time you get in the ring. He's see, tearing people's head off the shoulder. See, guys, this is why I don't – I can't stand it when sometimes you – come across reporters and they're going to name nameless or uh, remain nameless, but you hear them always focus on the rankings and the duties of the, of the sanctioned organizations. And I'm like, you know what, if you haven't lost faith in them at this point, you've been covering the sports for a substantial period of time, then you're really not doing your job as a damn reporter. Yeah. I hear you. Buddy face looked like he didn't want to move too much because something was going to fall off. Dude, his face looks like a catcher's mitt. <laughs> like honestly, my 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 old shorts. Hey, yo, Roly really gotta respect his elders, bro. He can't be trying to shove this old this dude down when he hit him like he did the last dude. Like, you know, he he got a box with integrity, man. Don't want to find somebody out there, bro. I don't know if I said it already, but what's really crazy about Sims' game plan and what he's doing with the switching stances is. The longer he stays in his stance, the more comfortable he gets and the better yep. he does. But yep. then he switches. It's like, what the fuck, bro? Like I said, maybe he's watching Danny Jacobs film because that's exactly <laughs> it used to drive me nuts when watching Danny Jacobs. I'm like, OK, you're starting to get in rhythm now and then you switch stances. Why? Yeah. Uh Reason. Like when he goes, <laughs> and I don't know if you, I, I'm, I'm not even gonna say it, but hey, like that? when he goes southpaw, he's he's using the blinder, he it's certain nuances he he doing in the southpaw, and when he go orthodox, you know he he connecting on shit, he he just got to stick bro, with he's one. He's connecting with either stance after he gets comfortable in the stance, but he's switching. But Jose, why is he doing it? <laughs> Reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey man, I Purpose. spoke with uh, Coach Ronnie about Purpose. some. Of... <laughs> hey man, I, I spoke with Coach Ronnie about some of your film study. Yeah, and I asked him. I said, you know, all the times I've been to your gym, been to Goosens, been to a Summit to Abel Sanchez, been to Barry Hunters, none of you guys use the same lingo as yeah. Gems is using. And he goes, yeah, and you know his film study is good, and it's all correct stuff. He goes, the reason why you don't hear trainers use the same verbiage because is because, know. yeah, he said, because you're going to confuse these guys. Wait, what? Yeah, you're going to confuse some of these fighters. Keep in mind, I, some of these fighters are absolutely brilliant, but oh, then some of them, yo, I get what you some mean. of them yeah. aren't. And once again, the last thing you want, he told me the last thing, very insightful, you old school guy. He said, one well, of the, la the last thing you ever want to do is confuse a naturally talented, gifted fighter. 
Yeah. No, I... it's, it's going to take a little more time to kind of pick up what you're laying down if you're using that kind of verbiage to a... Um, I hear you. Now, let me ask guy. you this, though, Joseph. Yes, sir. Do they, do they, do those painters <laughs> use the same lingo amongst each other? Yes, they do. Oh, they do? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, you got a bill to pay. Yeah, well, it... I got oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, Chris Truck, appreciate the super chat, bro. If that man died, I wasn't here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? In all seriousness, guys, if that man dies, then boxing is such a dangerous sport, man. You know, yeah, it's that's... it's um. You know what? I you know what? As hard as Roly Romero hits, yeah, yeah, man. You know what? Gilberto Mendoza Jr. might not be doing this cat any favors. Yeah, he must owe him money. He'd be like, yeah, you could just pay me back with this fight. You yeah, know what? That very well out. may be because you know what? I hate to say this. All promoters have exercised that. You know, if if they, it's still, like I said, it's run just like the music industry. If a band who's not selling um, records, boy, you stick them on tour until they can pay you back all the money that you spent recording your albums. Right. And that's Man. what promoters try to do, because look, unless it's. What, someone who actually is on a big network and actually drawing ratings, selling tickets, most fighters that they invest in, yeah, they're in the red. They 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 lose money consistently. Hey, hey Joseph, let now me you say get, something. Now you get yes, hit in the southpaw stance. Look, Joseph, uh, mm -hmm. that whole thing about lingo, I kind of missed the, the real point because I was stuck Ooh. on you saying Ronnie Shields likes my shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what? And once again, he's he's a guy um, where he's like Gogi. They don't watch a lot of YouTube because all of the crap. Oh, so yeah, when I right. showed him some of your film study, he was very impressed and quite surprised. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks Ronnie's. For, thanks for sharing the shit, man. Thank you. It's my pleasure, sir, and you deserve it. Appreciate that. But yeah, the primary reason was... I want because I had never heard him use that same lingo that you use. Mm -hmm. And what he said, no, what he's saying is spot on. But, you know, some of these guys, you just don't want to confuse them. Yeah, I hear you. And you keep things as simple as possible. Well, again, right? I, I've i been trying to emphasize that to boxing fans for a long time. Some of these guys, it's not even I mean, it's not it's not even that. It's, it's just better to just train with drills and and road work and pad where it's just better to train and not teach. And that's the fucked up part. That you know That's it. The boxers and what he expressed to me as well. Most of them have learned when you show them rather than just explain it. Yeah. Um, especially Ronnie, who started using pads once again after um, Emmanuel started doing it when he was very young. Yeah, Tim. Tim told Tim Bradley told me he only thinks one percent of boxers can actually explain what they're doing. Exactly. That's a very he's right on too, man. Bradley mm -hmm. is one of at uh, one of the one percent. Yeah. And which well, is anybody, why he yeah, has anybody that, commentating. Yeah, of course. It, well, yeah, he. That's Ooh. why he has that position. But this is a very good fight, guys. And honestly, I have it just like Steve Farhood. I have it even after six. Yeah, man. Kenneth Sims finding himself in a whole bunch of 50 50 positions. Yeah, a whole bunch of fucking firefight, fire fight, yeah. fire fights. And yeah, it's like, for why? Rock, or what I call rock 'em, sock 'em. Well, I tell you yeah. what, with someone with a proven chin and has proven durability like Akhmadov, that's very sporting of him to sit in the pocket, right? Thinking that you're always going to get the better of the exchanges. My God, G Funky, what's good with you, bro? You said, Gems, I just talked to Tim Bradley about you. I hope it was good. <laughs> yeah, man. Congratulations to G Funky for getting the uh, credential, man. Yeah, dope. And for being there supporting your uh, supporting your own from Northern California. Oh, oh he's okay. there. Shout out he's to there, brother. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. Dope. Stockton, what part of California. What part of Northern Cal? Huh? Stockton. What part of Northern Cal? Stockton, California. Oh, Stockton. Okay. Rob, mm -hmm. Rob, that's the second time you asked. <laughs> yeah. And that's probably <laughs> what the fourth. Know. Second time I asked what? About where's where it at? Fight and, was. And, and I think it's the fourth time. No, I didn't time say the fight, man. I was talking Stockton. about G Funk boxing. I already know the fights in Stockton. 
Yeah, oh, he's there live. He's yeah, there I'm, live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank and you. You saying where is he from, or what do you? Yes, I said where is he from. Oh, uh, oh. G Funky. I, oh gosh, forgive me, man. Yeah, I, he I told know. me several times in like a like an old geezer. I, I forgot. Oh, so uh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Well, I tell you what. Sometimes I think when I'm terribly busy and I start forgetting stuff, I think the cheese is sliding off the cracker, brother. <laughs> 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 All right, the so, engine's on, but uh, nobody's behind the wheel. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Sometimes, hmm. tell you what, getting old sucks. And you know what? I gave that last round to uh, Agmadov as well. So yeah. far, man, Steve Steve Farr is very accurate usually in his scoring. Yeah, we could do unless that, yeah. unless it's once again one of Gilberto Mendoza's fighters in the main event. What is it? The last two I went down, third and fourth. Bro, is my ESPN Plus screen frozen or are they? Really That's what I was just about to say. I'm like, hold on, what the <laughs> fuck is going on over here? What's happening here? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, the ESPN? No, it's hockey still. Hockey playoffs, isn't it? Uh... Oh yeah, there's still hockey. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, my shit definitely froze. Usually they just show the arena. Yeah. Yeah, but guys. This is, um, a, this is just a still picture. Yeah, this is just a better card. Honestly, I'm, I'm once again, guys, the uh, whole purpose of the ESPN card this week. Um, it's for a paid advertisement for Henny Lomachenko. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, That's all it is, guys. That's not okay, Joseph. You can't come on, man. Jenna Beck is the he, he's a real boxer. He's the he is WBO but middle middleweight title. He is champion. now. Ask me if Steve Butler deserves this assignment. Well, we ain't well, 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 trying to figure out where I, here, let me look at his resume. Guys, he's, are you saying that Joseph because he's from Canada? Is this what this is? No, no, I'm saying this yeah. this style pairing <laughs> is tailor made. Oh. Once again, you saw a counterpuncher. Um, you saw um, uh, Ali Manala struggle against a fellow counterpuncher. So and this guy, saying? this guy ain't that. He's so tailor made. Saying? He's gonna be walking into shots, and he's gonna he's gonna turn into a tentative fighter as early as two minutes into the first round. So you're saying is uh, they put this guy Butler in order to get a victory, China, right? Exactly, my friend. Got it. He's gonna get his ass whooped. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, dude. All the San like, Antonio came out of Joseph. He gonna get his ass whooped. Yeah, man. <laughs> there, there's no better way of saying that, man. Um, yeah. So you you telling me uh, Butler, this Butler guy's gonna be a ritualistic sacrifice to the to Janet Beck, right? Well, Janet you know, Beck, if he's willing, uh, if he's willing, ooh, because ooh. once again, they're they're having well, a hard time good, turning him into a ticket seller. And it's not easy. Um, you know, and unfortunately, all of the tough assignments, the tough pairings, these guys really don't want to fight a guy with a deep amateur background like Ali Manala um, for no little to no money, and then it's on another network. Um, that's why Jaime Munguia, he had the opportunity to fight Janabek twice um, for the WBO title. And, oh, you know... Really? Yeah, and his management and Golden Boy just never responded to the WBO. Joseph, is it okay if I say Hami Mungi is scared money? Is that okay? Um, what does that mean exactly? Scared money mean uh he ain't willing to to double up and you know Look, uh, as knows. Canelo hey, says, real, dare real to be quick, great. Uh, real quick, Sims getting ding dong. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and you know, I I told you guys. I know we. I know I'm two minutes thing, no, behind bro. you, but he's still even in mind. He getting, he yeah, getting ringed on. And you know what? This is vintage Akhmadov. Once again, man, as soon as he finds range and closes that distance, he's a handful for everybody. That's what I'm saying. Um, you know, he could easily be undefeated at this time. His his uh, record is very misleading, and if you watch both of those losses, yeah, I could have easily won those. And don't be shocked, guys, if the judges at ringside give this to Kenneth Sims and he loses again you because it's very that. competitive, very close. But, yeah, he's really taking it to Definitely Sims, and he still has the best. championship That's rounds to go. No, and, uh, Top of the ninth round, 
uh, mm-hmm. Ahmedov is is whooping ass. Yep, yeah. yep. He's found range and he's very comfortable. And Kenneth Sims really doesn't really doesn't know what to do. I don't know why he's not using his feet. No, he know what to do. He just don't want to do it. Well, that's very sporting of him. Yeah, I told Give, you. He, the just... only town, ta- the only chance this guy has for victory, and you're giving it to him. So all that dumbass stand switching, man. I'm telling you. Like <laughs> he lost like the identity of what he was supposed to be doing. Like I understand a step around, but you bro, you need to you need a, a step back. You need to get your yeah. back a step back game on. Oh, he didn't give him two get out them goddamn fifty fifties. And, and he looked and he looked like he gassed a little bit around to go. Sims, yeah, right? Yeah, Sims, yeah. He, yeah. This is first time going over eight. Ah. Uh, this oh. is this is Sims' first time going over eight. Yeah. You've got to mm. be kidding me. Yeah. No right, kidding. Sims, right, wow. Sims, well, that makes Sims a lot of sense. On strong for the pat for the last twenty five seconds or so, but I don't even know. Well, if the can shit. Get him that the, round. The, the first two minutes was a uh, Ahmedov. Yeah. I don't know if you're giving that round. Yeah, Sims look like he hurt him a little bit, though. You know, that makes a lot of sense now watching this fight. That stat that you just provided. Thank you for that. Shout out to Triggs. <laughs> Triggs out the blue. The motherfucker been silent for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I popped up and said some things. You probably didn't hear me. Nah, I didn't. I was waiting for that... Uh, Smoke detector to beat. I ain't here. <laughs> I'm in a different room now. Well, here comes Kenneth Sims. Guess what room I'm in. Five seconds Ooh. left in the round. Boom. Yeah, Thank he's landing some hard leather now. Oh man, it was, this is this is a very good fight, guys. God damn. Fucking thunder in that hook. Very good. Hey guys, do you see how little the crowd is at the Cosmopolitan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's seven o'clock. And no, I'm saying he's saying the stadium is small as fuck, and it's empty. That top row is definitely empty. And now, I mean, once, they ain't got once, there yet. Uh, this is why I can't stand big events, and once again, it's out of necessity. Why you have big, big cards or big events or expensive main events at a casino? Because no one shows up until the main event. They're all in the casino on the gaming tables. Joseph, welcome to America, bro. We're not showing up to nothing until it's time to show up for what I came here for. Well, that's no, man. No, 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 man. Like, um, oh, gosh, this is what I love, man, about the regional fight cards. People who at the grassroots level who buy tickets, right? They're not comped just at a weekend of gambling, right? Um, And that's what casinos do. And the promoters do it because, one, they're willing to pay for that huge site fee. And, two, well, they don't have to work to sell tickets. It's already done. It's not their job any longer. It's the job of the casino to fill it. But but the cards that I actually announce and that I actually do ring announcing for, and I'll be doing the ring announcing on May 20th, um, unfortunately, the same time as Haney Lomachenko. But everyone is there from start to finish. But though, but Joseph, wouldn't you argue that those people are more of a boxing fan than a person that shows up at the armory for a Roly fight? Uh, it's a different fan. Once again, these guys love their local fighters. They know these guys personally. Um, yeah, and yeah. they they love these big events. They show up to the weigh-ins. They um, show up to the final. Like tomorrow, I'm going to do a final press conference. I guarantee you. There's at least going to be five to six hundred people there. It's going to be feel, huge, uh, Joseph. I think you ain't. I don't think you. What you saying ain't wrong. But what I'm saying is, uh, people. I'll give you a prime example. Look, look, man. Y'all talking about some other shit. two two backhand uh, body <laughs> shots hurt Akhmedov. Mm-hmm. Um. Sims is really sitting down on his punches this round and he's winning this round pretty pretty clearly. <clears throat> but again, I don't like the same shit. Like the how he how he got here was kind of fucked up and it's gonna get him hurt one day. 
Well, yeah, I agree. But you know what? I really like the way Kenneth Sims just almost immediately took over this fight again. Like he's oh, he backing he Akhmadov up and it's, it's wow. Oh, he really what... hurt him with two backhand body shots. Mm -hmm. You can see it in the body language now. And so Kenneth Sims, boy, he's making his final stand and trying to win these mm. championship rounds, understanding mm. that the fight is, is knotted up or he could be losing. And I tell you what, that's what champions do, man, in tough fights. But champions also don't uh, put themselves in predicaments like he did, though. Well, right. they're, they're still fighters, yeah. man. They often yeah, do. Rank. All right, let me read this super chat. Uh, Easy Rollins, appreciate the super chat. Sims is going to knock Akhmadov down. Could yeah, be. I mean, maybe. It looks like it's on his way. Yeah. And like, let's see. Um, oh, gosh. Someone just said that Roley is a pay per view star. Yeah, that's why he's fighting in the Cosmopolitan against Ismael Barroso. Come on now. I want Showtime. Yeah, and you know what? Time. Look, look, I will say this. I love the job that, that PBC is doing with Tom Brown, and it's about damn time, right, since they've been in business and since they formed, what, seven seven years ago, eight years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's about oh, damn really? time, but I will say this. Brother, in Showtime Championship Boxing, there was never a main event this bad. Never. This... It would never get approved by Ken Hirschman back in the day. What, this Rolly fight? Hell yeah. You never saw dog shit like this, man, on Showtime Championship Boxing. Well, somebody explain to me why we know who Rolly is. Like, like. <laughs> Mayweather promotions, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what, man? Ken Hirschman would have never approved this. Mm. How do we Back in the day, game? never. Like, it, what fight, Jims, you will remember, the fight card Roley was on where he knocked the dude out, but he was throwing punches and pushing dude after his punches. Yeah, that, that was, was in San Antonio. That Antonio. was Anthony Yigit, yeah. I was on the undercard yeah. of uh, Charlo. Um, gosh, that draw that everyone was crying about. That, um, was it? Uh, I no yeah. One. Yeah, uh, Castaño. Yeah, I that was I was there covering that event for Fight Saga. Yeah. I was I was on press row that night. Yeah, and that's when Ronnie's fighter got jobbed that night as well, man. Poor mm -hmm. guy. Easy Rollins once again. Appreciate the super chat. Cut man for Sims is doing a good job. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah. It, if it was not for that fight, I would not know who Roley was. I only would have known who he was because I because I would have seen Tank was fighting him. But prior you, you, to that, I had no idea who this man was. You didn't see the you, Jackson Mourinho's robbery? No, I did not. Yeah, so, well, that told me that Roly Ramiro is still learning on the job because he lost that fight and looked like he didn't know how to fight. Still, learning. you know, I, I don't, I don't blame Roly for, for, I don't blame Roly for being him. I blame the people that put Roly on, on, on TV in front of people. That's what and I that was once again for a bogus interim lightweight title. Like, whatever the hell that means. Sims doing the same. I mean, not doing the same, but Sims looking good in this round, too. Mm. Dude, Akhmadov is still working. What a horse, man, he is. Mm. Nice you know, I've got, I've got Akhmadov winning the 11th right now. Uh, no, oh, he, gosh, no. I just no. saw a beautiful one-two down no, the middle. It shorts Akhmadov. Get, yeah, he starts to get beat up a little bit. Now, I tell you what, this is a very good fight, I'm guys. Dog swinging from the shoulders, boy. Ooh, he took one. Wait till I see these little right springboard step uh, back hands. Sim starts landing. Mm. Okay. Tough. Ooh. Yeah, he definitely at this point in the in the fight, he's definitely throwing the sharper, more crisper shots on the inside, and that's going to win him the close rounds. That's going to mm. win him this fight. Is Triggs is Trig, is Trig muted or can he? Yeah, he's muted. Okay. See, like if this were in Texas, then I would say, oh, Kenneth Sims, we might have a problem, right? Because Texas judges, especially this level mm. of fights, right? They often reward aggression, even if it's not effective and volume. They love that shit. That's why Polly couldn't stand fighting in Ooh. Texas, Polly Malignaggi. <clears throat> Ooh. Loney's about to come on ESPN Plus. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see it. 
<clears throat> hey, yo, there was some nice ass hooks. Do you think he's going to finally win his first world title tonight? You Maloney? think third time's a charm for Maloney? Uh, well, he definitely wasn't going to win it uh, versus <laughs> competition at first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I seen that knockout they had. I was like, God oh. damn! Talk about the interweave knockout. Hell yeah! I was like, shit. Yeah, yeah that nigga in his pockets. What? Steam, steam <laughs> rolled this dude. Yeah, I, I felt so bad for him. And you know what? Credit to Maloney for hanging until the fifth round. But Ching out, dude. Yeah, like I said, you know what's crazy, bro? Round, I, like that was you know how good uh, No Way is. But Maloney's Maloney's good. <laughs> Maloney could box a little bit. He is. He's but, very good. Uh, yeah, anyway, but, you know, God, he's a damn. special fighter, guys. And, you know, what? Yeah. that's why everyone is looking forward to the Fulton yeah. fight. Everyone is looking forward to that fight. They've circled it on their calendars, and they can't wait. And that's why everyone's so disappointed when it was it was postponed. Yeah, my California uh, has to be yeah. up bright and early. Yep. Sims right eye. Is that shit completely closed yet? Uh, I'm looking at them patch it up. It it's swollen in a mug. It might be. Oh yeah, it is. It's it's it, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got shit. two minutes to work. Minute and a half on Gems Clock. Minute forty. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Jims, bro. He he ain't do himself no justice, dog. Yeah, you know what? I've got it scored just like Steve Farhood. He's doing a very good job. And these are hard rounds to score. Well, they're not easy anyway. Yeah, you could tell he can't see the, the left yep, hand. That, that left hook. He can't yep. see it. Scoring it will now. Yep. Hey, hey, Jims, can Yo. we talk about in the between fights? Can we talk about what you think? Uh, what the end game is for Joyce pulling the trigger mm, on mm. that rematch clause against Gillet Zhang? Uh, Zhang by knockout. Well, do you think they're even going to fight, or is he doing this just for that step aside money and a guarantee to face the winner? Because look, it, it, mm. you've got I, that I leverage. Didn't know, I didn't know he had it like that. Yeah, he pulled the trigger this week, and the reason why. As I'm sure Frank Warren said, you know what? You better do it now or it's not going to happen. Mm. Um, because from what I've been told, I'm sure Frank Warren already knew that, yeah, the Zhang Fury super fight in Wembley Stadium is almost a done deal. And so in my opinion, I can't see Joe Joyce standing in the way of this. In my opinion, he's going to get oh, a hefty step aside money, you know, Ooh. to forget – for getting his out, yeah, that right eye looks bad, guys. Fucking yeah. my dog, let me say this real quick. Ass. Let me say this real quick. Uh, how I know Akhmadov's uh boxing IQ isn't super high is because why the fuck would you stand in a 50 50 with a fighter that has his right eye closed? Why wouldn't you use that and step around towards that side and mm -hmm. just pick him off at will from the outside? You know, what I'm saying in a 50 50. When when he can obviously reach his hand out and just touch you, he knows where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, right. Well, around, no, no, no. To his credit, to he's left. trying. He's trying to do that. You see him stepping around. Um, oh, but yeah. he ended up Kenneth is moving right with him. Yeah. Um, and once he looks, he looks exhausted. This guy's been they a both, machine they both for. Do. Yeah, but that right eye looks bad, dude. Yeah. Hey. Don't be surprised if these scorecards up in the air, man. Yep. If, Don't be surprised. Yeah, this if is debatable. This is debatable. This is again. This is a this is a debatable fight, and and Sims made it debatable. Yeah. I yep. Think so too. Well, credit, credit to Akhmadov. Credit to Akhmadov, man, for God being tenacious damn. and for being that machine that doesn't quit. He threw He's, some bombs oh, at Sims. Quick. Threw some bombs at the end, but I mean. Yeah. Let me get a word from my sponsors. Easy Rollins, appreciate the super chat. Sims could have this fight won already if he would use his feet and stay orthodox. I mean, or or use his feet and stay southpaw. Either way, either um, one of them, he could have just yeah, just stuck with one. Easy Rollins says draw or one round win for either fighter. Yeah, man, these scorecards about to be tough, man. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, to, to Kenneth Sims, to his defense, um, some fighters are that way when you've got a machine coming at you. You're like, yeah, let's see if you can take my best shot all 12 rounds. And you know what? I'm going to earn your respect and I'm going to slow you down. Um, if you keep moving, a guy like Akhmadov is going to keep just, it's exhausting. Not only me- physically, but mentally as well. When a, you've got a guy who's applying that hard pressure. So I think mm-hmm. Kenneth Sims, I, I, you know, he fought a very good fight. And Akhmadov's no cream puff. Once again, uh, his two losses uh, are very questionable. I don't, I don't know if I want to call it a good, like good. What do you mean by good? Because I think it, I think it wasn't a smart fight. Yeah, I don't. So. It, it, well, it depends. If he wins, yeah, I think it was smart because <laughs> nah. because because nah. Why, well, no, no, no. Here's here's why, nah, Joseph. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. No, I'm I'm gonna say if it pays off for him, yeah, the gamble was worth it because a guy uh, like Agmadov, you've got to earn his respect. Man, look at that oh, man's oh, face. Oh, oh. The only way oh, to ahead. do that is to oh, stand oh, in the pocket and fire. Got to fight. Okay, they all. Okay. Eight rounds of four. Eight for everybody. Sims. Yep. Yep. I thought he deserved it by his uh, gallant stand in the championship rounds. I guarantee you this. If he had elected to move around the pocket or move around the ring, I guarantee you he probably wouldn't have gotten the benefit of the final three rounds from the judges at ringside. But if he would have been, but if this would have been a shutout, then it don't matter what he did in the ninth and twelfth. If he would, no, I wasn't saying. Okay, I wasn't saying <clears throat> do like Maloney's doing right now and with all this goddamn movement he's doing. Man, do you I see that? Saying, motherfucker making me dizzy. Just step out the 50-50. <laughs> that could just be that could just be a simple side step, a simple, you know what I'm saying? Simple okay, I understand. Step step right, yeah. Just don't I understand. Be, don't be in the 50, don't be in equal positioning. Well, Especially you know what, after man? You, after you land the combination, like step around, bro. Disengage. You know what? Some of these fighters, though, I, I don't want to say some, but most of these fighters. Man, they've got that dog in them, and you sometimes you got to save them from themselves. Where they love that competition, they love letting their balls hang in the center of the ring, and they nah, want man, to prove nah, that they're man. tougher than you are. No, I'm just saying that that's the way most fighters are. They've got that mentality. Like they're you see the way you see, the, Jens, you see the, the way ring. my man went to went to the ground. What you mean? Sims, man, like, like he, like he, like he wanna, like he's rocky, like. He, like like he just beat Clubber Lang? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is was, 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 was uh, Eliminator, right? Yep. Is it a, a was that a title Eliminator? Yes, it was, sir. Look at that eye. Come on, man. What, what we saying. doing? I mean, you know, <laughs> his game plan, I guess it did pay off with a win, but it didn't pay At off what with cost? that motherfucking eye. <laughs> well, that looking like Martin, man. <laughs> Stop it! I love that Tommy Hearns episode, by the way. Yeah, hey, I um, heard you that can't get. I heard you that can't get hit, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that episode. Um, I got six hundred dollars in that bank account. You yeah. know what, man? But you know what? These fighters, man, they've got too much dog in them for their own good. Sometimes. Yeah, for real, man. And Come they want to prove man. that they're the baddest dude in the ring. But yeah, look at that eye, man. It looks terrible. It ain't have to be that way. Yeah. So a W is a W. That's a fact. But well, it's good to look, see Sam again, Watson there representing. Again, man, looking looking at the future, which I like to do because I don't really give a fuck about you know who wins and who loses. <laughs> um, who do you? Okay, so if he if he faces a stronger puncher, can he have the same style? Hell no! no. Hell no, dude. But once again. I'm sure his trainer watched plenty of film and understood that he doesn't have one punch knockout power. But we're gonna see, man. We're gonna see. I'm just saying. Yeah, they're bad. They're they're bad habits. They're bad habits. But dude, they're fighters. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Sometimes it's a uh, it's a moral issue for these guys. Yeah, so my stance is my stance is not from a fan's perspective, bro. I like my whole thing is about teaching fans what's going on in the ring. So, so I don't really, again, I don't really care who won or who lost. 
No, no, no. It's I'm I'm not telling you from a fan's perspective. No, no, no. No, I'm not talking to you personally. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just explaining what I'm saying, and why I'm you know, I'm I'm not exactly impressed with that shit. So, uh, but you know, but but that's the reason why. It's because it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me who wins and who loses. I just want to see high level boxing. Yeah, understand. And when you see a dude who who got skill and can clearly who could who could clearly box yeah why would you why why would you um want to take that type of punishment i understand what you're saying and um yeah it's foolish but very sporting of him but once again just telling you the mentality of a fighter after being around these guys for 20 years and covering their being at the gyms yeah this is how they think. This is how they talk in the gym. Even in sparring, they want to prove that they're the toughest guy in the ring, even with 16-ounce gloves on and headgear. Bro, is Roley coming next? No. It's, it, no, it's oh. going to be uh, a very good fight. Well, uh, I really like Omar Juarez. Um, he, he, he's a you know, good family kid. As it comes from a very good family, I really love those guys. Um, but if you're... And I understand that Rancis Barthelemy, I don't even know why he's still on being televised. Wow. He's so old and he's, but he's Rancis such a crafty, wow. okay. he's such a crafty, tricky Southpaw that if you're too eager, like Ryan Garcia the other night, he's going to make it pay for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he still has a little crack in his shot. That's so when I crack Gary Antoine Russell, right? That's right. And with that horrid stoppage. That was oh a that stop oh I remember that, that was a terrible stoppage in a very that dude's good getting fight. ready to fight today he getting ready to fight on Showtime yep Rancis Barthelemy is fighting undefeated prospect Omar Wadas and I think it's a great test for the young proud Mexican fighter from from Texas yo uh, hold on yeah wait, I was gonna say wait, Joseph wait, have wait, I heard wait, you talk right. about Wadas before I think you yes. brought his name up before yep. uh, yeah I he's a good he kid he's a good kid he's a good fight. ticket seller. Because if Bartholomew's still the same, Bartholomew ain't, he's not. Yeah, he was good. He, he's not great at anything, but he's. No, he was, but he he's a good, solid Cuban. He good. Um, yeah, he's he has a his fighting brother. And um, once again, he's he's been around since before PBC formed. I don't know why they're still televising this guy. Because he's not above stinking mm. out the joint, right? He will do that if. He gets Omar's attention and turns him into a tentative fighter. And most Cubans are that way. They don't fight like Dave Morrell Jr. or Yuri Orcas Gamboa, most of them. Um, the ones who are Cuban exiles, the ones who spent their entire life um, fighting in that Cuban amateur system, yeah, they don't deviate from the script, which is you be patient, you control range, and you, you fight Southpaw, and you're looking for that opportunity to counter. And Omar's Two, gonna get him plenty of them. Yeah. Two sidebars. Two, hold on, Omaha's TM, is TM is Hawks, at the TM. is at Vegas. Hold on, bro. TM Hearts. Oh. We're we're talking about the fight that's coming up next. So Roley's after that. Yep. Go ahead. Um. Go I ahead, well. Bro. Also, did you hear? Oh, wait, wait. Let Rob go. My apologies. Yeah. So I, sidebar. Omaha is at the uh, Showtime fight, and it looked like um. The guy Maloney's fighting is uh is is winning. Mm. What? Astrolabio. So Australia? Yeah. Astrolabio, Maloney? yeah. Omaha is at the showtime fight. Yeah. Right. He did. Yeah. Who mm-hmm. is uh Bomac training somebody? I don't know. Um uh, look, unless he started training Ismail Barroso yesterday, no. <laughs> <laughs> Crawford was there to support uh, Kenny Sims. You know oh, that wouldn't okay. surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me at all. <clears throat> wow. Then uh, yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah, okay. Hey. Okay. Right, yeah. You never know who people know. Yeah. Oh, fucking tricks popping up with good information every right. Every like <laughs> well, guys, guys, also a very, very promising. And once again, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I don't want to jinx this shit like last time. Oh, don't do it. Don't do now, it. Did, did you hear that Bud just started camp? Serious camp. Oh, Lord. 
Yep. He did it. He said the magic word. I did. In Pee-wee's Playhouse. He just yeah, he said the magic word. He just started camp. Serious camp. Seriously. Mm-hmm. You're picking sparring partners. And once again, they, they're there now. He started camp officially. Sure. That's a great sign. But once again, you never know what these two freaking egoed out bastards. Ching out, man. Man, I don't know. Um, I, hey, bro. Hey, I, I tell you what, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm Ash? truly not excited for that fight anymore, man. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Astro Labio from uh, Philippines. He's a Sean Gibbons fighter, Manny Pacquiao fighter. Yeah, Pacquiao, Pac-Man. Astro Labio, yeah. Um, and he's a tough guy. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if Maloney lost for a third time at his third shot at the title. Not for a lack of trying. He's he's, he's doing okay. It's just, and, and he's competitive, you know? Yeah. But I think what you're talking about, Jims, he's he not bad. He's not a bad fighter. Uh-uh. He's just, uh, he getting worked. Yeah. Astrolabio is a tough guy. Most of these cats that hey, come yo. from nothing from the Philippines. Hey, yo, yeah. man. He even look old in that picture, man. Yeah. How y'all got... <sighs> What the fuck is Andre Ward doing? Oh, yeah, you got that Showtime series coming up. Yeah, he got that little docu. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, br- bruh, man. They can't keep showing that, that dude, that Roly face. Yeah, they can't like keep showing pretty- Roly's opponent. They just need to start showing Roly. <laughs> just, just show us. Yeah, he looks like the Crypt Keeper, doesn't he? Man, hey, man the first time he showed him, I ain't say shit, but why the fuck <laughs> he had why the fuck he had Vaseline on already? <laughs> <laughs> he got that Vaseline from the crib, bro. He came in with that. Yeah, I tell you what, to, that shit was keep... hours before the fight, fam. Hey, why no are you already all up, brother? Yeah, yeah, so okay. so you, to, to hide some of the wrinkles, maybe right, keep he's probably Luis pregnant. Ortiz's age. <laughs> bro, he looks like Luis Ortiz's uncle. <laughs> damn. Yeah. That is yeah. crazy, bro. Yeah, he looks like he's had a hard life, man. That's for sure. What's the deal with like Andre fact- Ward? What's the deal with wearing the uh the purse shirts, man? The what? What's His wrong shirt with that looks shirt? Like That's a, a nice shirt. Oh, that Gucci shirt? Yeah, come on, dude. It looks like a purse. It, that's the Gucci monogram. That's that's what Yeah, on a purse. They they make Gucci clothes, man. I've seen, I've, seen Gu- I've seen Gucci clothes without looking like a purse. I don't yeah, think that one easy. looks like a purse. That's that San Antonio you got. Just no, 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 no. I no, just no, don't no. think we're going to have a credible fashion conversation on this panel. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I know what Joseph means. It's like, I don't care what brand it is. It's just like, what's up with that purse? Yeah, look, I've seen Gucci clothing, right? I've seen Gucci clothing. And a lot of it looks beautiful. And it doesn't look like a damn purse. Gucci. Mugata, Chris, <laughs> That's what a up? nice what up? Yeah, Looks what's like up? Person. How's everybody doing? Good. How you doing, brother? Uh, I'm good, man. Chris, what up, man? No, once again. Once again, this song, nigga. Sequel all like corn liquor. Okay. Mm-hmm. Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, something up with your mic, maybe. Does he have the same name as a comedian? Chris Trucker, not Tucker. Oh, okay. Very good. Man, what happened to Chris Tucker? He used to be all over the place. Um, he's in a new movie, uh, Air. He's, he, he, got, he, got, oh, he got a job. The, uh, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck movie? Yeah, he's there. Oh, very good. That's a good thing, man. He's very talented, too talented not to be working. Yeah, he, he, got, a, he, got, he got a gig. Third attempt. Chris, what's up, man? Boy, Jim was reaching out like the IRS for Chris. What? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, oh, boy. Can, does your mic work now? Nope. Stiff ass jab. Damn. Two stiff ass jabs. All right. Yeah. Let me pay attention to this Maloney fight. Yeah. You know what, man? I think all of the movement, it's not effective, man. Um, And once again, Australabio is that just. Cardio in. He's just controlling the center of the ring and just pivoting around, waiting for Maloney to actually stay in place. Yeah, and he's firing off the harder shots. 
full step in jab. He got counter with the uppercut. I saw that. Mm. It looked like when he stepped left, he letting the jab off. I I, I did see that. And he fucking crosswalking. Nice you too. Know, you know, and the feints once again they don't seem to be having an effect on Australavio because Maloney just doesn't have that kind of power. You have to, you have to land for feints to be truly effective against a guy like Australavio. You have to land something, man, to earn that respect, make him think about it. Um, mm. You know, it, this guy's hard, man. He's a hard dude who's been through a hard life, and this is why he's been boxing forever. Well, these guys are tough, man. Are they showing a Barroso fl fluff? Let me see oh, isn't do. that nice? I just feel like he's no, um, he oh needs to kind of set him up. This he needs to set him up and land some good clean shot right now he's just kind of doing the same things job, Bulata, job, is that two. you yeah i guarantee What's good, you, Chief? I, I guarantee you man, he take it i'm shirt good off. bro how are you you're gonna oh, see not the, bad uh, at all man old man old man muscle now you're gonna see the varicose veins and <laughs> 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 geriatric well, kid one of the last the geriatric kids we got left man yeah the guys this this is embarrassing for showtime you know, and once again, I've been singing the praises all year because they've been doing a fantastic job compared to, you know, years oh, in the past. Joseph, thank but you for this reminding is me. Dog shit. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. We are in the month of May. May. Yes, sir. Do we have a fight of the year contender? Ooh. I thought about this a couple of times and I I forgot to mention it the last time I we was I was on the panel. But I just just me, I can't think of a fight that I would put as a contender for fight of the year so far. Um there've been a lot of really great events and a lot of good fights, but I can't think one doesn't stand out to me right now. No. I mean for me, based on what I've seen so far, I'm not saying that it's like it was a great, great like fight, but based on what I've seen so far, the Lara um, Lee fight was a decent fight so far out of all the fights I've seen. Oh, yeah, that was a good fight. That, that was a good fight. That was a okay. good fight. Okay. Um, oh, who? Maurice Lara, Lara and Wood. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was an excellent fight, man. Yeah, did uh, Lara give fight. it away at the end? Or who gave it away? No, nah, he's gonna he's gonna throw it. Wood. He's gonna throw in the towel like with like ten seconds to go after it got dropped. Yeah, he got cracked though. But uh, he, he was not coming <laughs> back from. Lord. He was not coming back from that. <laughs> that crazy left hook. Uh, is he? Uh, no, everybody. It's not thinks, just you, brother. It's in between sixty and sixty-five. Is he? How you doing tonight, brother? Is he? Good to see you here, my friend. So, yeah, so Jim, you know how picture. you just, yo, Jim, oh, sorry, what video on. was it where you spoke about how? Oh, it was the uh, 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 Derek James, um, Anthony Joshua, the Anthony yeah. Joshua video where you show, you know, stepping, stepping in a direction to to land a punch, step around game, yeah, right. Well, like, yeah, you could see Maloney is stepping left and he's landing that jab, a nice control with the off the jab, but um. He's not. He's not doing it right either. He's yeah, not doing, I'm like, it don't seem it. like as much is going off of it. Like, he's stepping if that's up, to start the stepping, offense, it is. He's stepping up and left. It's not just left. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So when you step up and left, you already put yourself in range to be countered like he just did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not doing anything to control range, man. Not really. Okay, um, I see. What, okay, I see how you're saying it. It's literally it's. His lead foot ain't going lateral. It's it's more like you said. It, it's it'll go left. left a bit, but it it'll it'll go forward first. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Right. It seems like a lot that's, of fighters. That's why yeah, that's why he's getting countered with that backhand. But go it ahead. Like a lot of fighters like they use certain footwork, like they use a reverse step. They do a lot of things. They'll circle to the right, but they don't actually know why they're doing it. They don't know how to do it, and yeah. they get clipped doing it make mistakes doing it a lot. Agreed. Agreed. I see it a lot. Especially up and left. Mm. It's circling to the left. Yeah. yeah. 
back foot first, but they don't know what they're doing it for. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, Tricks, you coming in and out. I wanted to ask you about that Sims fight, but it's over now. It don't matter. Right. So what were you going to bring up? back in an hour. <laughs> what were you going to bring no, up yeah, before this could, Bartholomew could, fight starts? You could call me on me. Me? I was, yes, sir. Oh. I was about no, to say No, you, sir. No, I'm... Um, Rob? Gosh. Uh, yeah, Rob. Thank you. Oh, okay. I was going to mention that, um, that ESPN had the uh, middleweight top 10. And yeah, oh yeah, please. Thank you. So the top so number one was Triple G, and y'all just said he vacated belt, so I don't even know how that should be. Then number He's two retired. He's retired, yeah. Then number two was uh uh Janabek. And then three was Jaime Mugia. Oh huh? gosh. And then uh, they had notable, like like a like a couldn't make the list, but Fucking whole get, world champion, Jamel Charla. Me, like, yeah, Jamal. No, yeah. no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it does. When you you're this bro. inactive, you have to <laughs> expect on, it. I actually thought he was tired. All years, bro. I thought well, he was look, tired. And upon speaking with Ronnie and Jamal, um, yeah, they understand what they're up against. Um, they understand that all of the leverage and all the momentum that they had before this hiatus, um, it's gone. They're going to have to do something at the tail end of his career to get back with that momentum. And the only way to do that, if you're not a huge ticket seller, you've got to be stuck in tough. No one's going to put up with a fight like Magic Seleski. No one. Everyone wants to see Carlos Adames or move up and wait or fight Ayman Munguia. Um, all the momentum that he, he had after the Derevchenko Der fight, Gone. They understand that. What happened to him? Is he injured or something? No, no. Um, mentally, yeah, I guess you could say that. And once Ooh. again, man, boy, I don't care how tough you are. Women can bring you to your knees if you allow it. Dang. And and look, look, um, he has five kids with this lady. And they went through or are going through an ugly, terrible divorce. And she is – Texas is a community property state, guys. So uh, guess oh what yeah. she and her attorney are going after? Everything. Uh, yep. God, they got five kids. You got to pay yep. child support for? Shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know he's trying to, that ring? He's trying to give James one. Kirkland – uh, he's Sorry, trying to give James Kirkland a run for his money. Bro, I, I'll be like, Al, I need five fight dates every year. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, I got to so be, that, I gotta be pinned why... in. Not penciled no, no. in. Pinned. This is no, why look. everybody needs to learn from that football, from, Mor from that Moroccan footballer, you know, from PSG. He basically bought everything that he ever bought through football. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about Akimi? Huh? Akimi. Akimi, yeah. He put, it, yeah. He put everything in his well, mom's name. And then when and, it's time for uh, divorce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a smart guy. But but once wow. again, man. Big, when, big timer showed you that, bro. Yeah. Everything. So, my mama. My mama nah, da, na, 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 na. <laughs> that was smart, though. It's like it's so he coming in. Like, it's like it's everything they coming been, in. They've been put you on game. But go ahead. So, bro. in all seriousness. They wasn't though, guys, born yet, all, Jim. Only me and you know look, about in, that. Look, oh. in, in, all, in all seriousness, though, guys. Um, if And he did the right thing. Because as emotional as he is. If you're not focused on your opponent in the ring, you shouldn't be fighting. Yeah. You shouldn't be fighting. That's a painful lesson. So but. he did the right thing, but at what cost? Will he ever regain the momentum that he once had? It's it's doubtful. Because you know, once again, just, he, I mean, just put one foot in front of the other, man, and, you know. Well, he, he's he'll be okay. This year. He's in the gym, yeah. and they're currently... You know what? It's also the how mentally is he gonna be ready after this? Because it's it's um he's this he's is getting be training him. He's getting back on track right now in the gym with Ronnie. He's training meticulously, and they're trying to look for the best, most credible opponent that's that people are gonna take seriously. Yeah, you know, nah, after no. a very long, difficult layoff. And they're once again they put it was supposed to be for June. Now it's pushed back to July, and now from what I've been told, it's August they're looking at. So, guys, don't be shocked um, if he fights someone credible. 
right? I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put him against someone credible, in my opinion, because I didn't know that's what he was going through, but that kind yeah. of stuff, yeah, that takes a lot out of someone. And in boxing, someone credible, and the way he's, the way he's already shown his emotional side already yeah, before that, yeah. you know that someone can use that to get into his head and literally hey, just fuck me, him up. Let me just say, your boy Juarez having some difficulty already. Yep. Yep. Needs, so, all right. So, if you're going to use lateral movement and you're going to be the one um, towards the ropes, you got to watch what side you disengage to, especially in an open stance. So, if you want to, mm-hmm. if you want to move left, you got to know that that's the quickest way for Bartholomew to cut off the ring because yep. that's where his lead foot is. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, as opposed to if he if he disengages right. Uh, Bartholomew's gonna have to step left with his back foot first instead of stepping forward with his lead foot and just cutting that shit off. You feel well, me? Well, he just stepped mm-hmm. left and ended up on the ropes, and and uh, Bartholomew started his combo. Exactly, Is that what you exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's it. Okay, yep. yeah. And you look at the little motion, the little wasted movement Bartholomew Bartholome is using. He's yeah, right nah, there, he's controlling range, dominating the fight right now. Completely under control right now. Yep. So I'm saying, man, this this he's gonna have a hard time getting in range, finding range, Omar, and he's definitely not gonna win at this distance. Nah, yeah, Bartholomew had an easy round. Mm-hmm. Wait, which 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 Bartholomew is it? There isn't there like two Bartholomews. The, yes, one, that, yeah. the one that lost to uh, Antoine Russell. That's oh. right. The Cuban style control range, control distance. Give them a give them go a ahead and, go ahead and switch. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, man, that's what the Cubans are all about. Careful man. aggression, work the body early, land the right. <sighs> but it's like that's why um that's, that really Andy, that's why with the Andy Cruz thing, I'm actually kind of like very, very skeptical because I was looking at everyone, every Cuban who has been turning pro from like the stable that he was in, in terms of amateurs, I know that they are using Cuban training and stuff, but they are, they've all been losing. They're not doing well in the pros. Uh, so, well, couple of, some, couple some fighters just don't transition that well, man, from a deep well, amateur trying, background, especially with the old way it was scored. That's a whole different board, though. Tell you what, Omar. They said I was not gonna win. I said it, though. I was nah, hating. why? It's a hating. fact of the sport. I, I tell you what, though. Um, what, who said you were hating? Eh, people that don't matter. Yeah, well, and there it is. Mind over matter, brother. You don't mind because they don't matter. Yeah, right? I had that. I had people tell me that uh, when I was doing um, when when we were doing the coaching thing below, people were like, "Nah, he's great," and I was like, "Nah, look at how he he fights Cuban style, and how many Cubans have you seen?" Transition over and actually be good, good. You know what I mean? And it's like now, but he's special. Listen, and they start naming them, and they don't realize that they're naming like four or five guys out of hundreds. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. They they tend to know the ones who make it. They don't look at the ones who struggle. Bro, Cubans is always in the, at the top of the Olympics, in the top of the Pan Ams, always. The top of the AIB. They run and they're all they, they run amateur boxing. So yep. if you're only naming fucking five Cubans that did well in the pros, then it's a problem. That's right. Exactly. Um, especially the old method of scoring amateur fights. Exactly. That's um, but but I, I dude, yeah, you know, I should have learned known, and I I tried to give a friend of mine a chance. Like I went on his forum yesterday, and these ask well these guys who are not have never worked a day in this business, they'll never work a day in this business. Were trying to tell me that every promotional company uses a set formula to create these stars of boxing. I'm like, what? Yeah, and I'm like, dude, every fighter is different. How? Um, That's there is no formula. Every fighter is different. Dude, and with the business model, the way it's changed, especially over the last five years, it, what formula are they going to use? Wait a minute, wait a minute. So they're saying Mayweather Promotions yeah. built tank like top rank built Mayweather. Yeah, yeah, that that's exactly <laughs> what they're saying. Or like like the that's brilliant, a, like and joke, they brought bro. up the brilliant job that Oscar did with um, 
with Canelo. I'm like, look, guys, Don, well, anyway, to be clear, the success is how good your matchmaker is. That's going to determine always the success of a promotional entity. As And, and once again, that's what prospects and managers um, will look at when determining which promotional company to sign with. It's not only dummies take the biggest signing bonus. Most of them look at, well, one, how many TV dates do you have? Two, who are your matchmakers? Do they have a history of actually doing, making the right decisions for the, for your fighters? Um, and three, look at the how long they've been in business. Look at the track record. And that's usually what you go by when determining who to sign with. There is no formula, though. Right. Oh, that is a, and once again, these guys were insistent, insisting to me. Oh, come on. There's an obvious formula. I'm like, well, how would you know? No, seriously, how would you know? You're insisting to me, and you've never worked a day in your life in this business. Really? And I thought it was disrespectful and a pain in the ass. So anyway, I do. Never again. Yeah, well, you know. Calling, saying uh, contenders and champions are trash and bums. They do that too, so. Oh, my gosh. It's I had a good. clown do that the other day <laughs> on my show, and I, I cut him off. I'm like, hey, hey, dude, you know what? Thanks for the comic relief, but your your time on this show's finished. Uh, fans would be fans. Oh yeah, my gosh, like man! It's shocking. I learn to ignore. I learn to ignore that shit. I got to stay out my comment section most of the time. I read it all. I just I I just stop responding. Well, what's sad is they'll talk to you and sit there and debate you and try to debate you and argue with you yeah. like yeah, they're I'm experts. Fine, I'm like, well, not, compared yeah, to your yeah. next door neighbor, you may seem like an expert. But compared to anyone who's been look, in this business for a substantial period of time, you don't know feces. Look, we're not, a, I mean, with that, we're just not on the same level when it comes to boxing. I mean, so you're not going to know it, but one of these nights you're going to see my work. So, yeah, there it is. There <laughs> see, it is. It's crazy because, uh, you know, with that, I had, a, I had an argument once on, on Instagram with uh, there is this guy, great guy when it comes to MMA, martial arts. Like, mm -hmm. yo, he will predict, break them down. You know, he, he even writes for, he's a, he's a breaker, he's a dancer. He writes for Red Bull BC1. He, he writes for their articles and stuff about breakdowns and stuff. And really good at all that kind of stuff. And he was bigging up Ryan Garcia about five, six months ago. And I ended up telling, I ended up kind of having a, we ended up having a little back and forth. And he's like, listen, he's this, he's that. I was like, you know what? Time will tell. And now he, I, I, rem I reminded him of that. And he was just like, yeah, you were right. I see what you mean. You know, he's going to bounce back anyway. You know, and I was just kind of like, bro. Like, let me, let me, let me guess. He probably also predicted that um, the uh, Lucky Charms Irishman was going to beat Floyd Mayweather back in the day, right? Oh, no, no. He never predicted that. That's what I mean. For him, when he predicted Ryan Garcia to be this great guy, I was like, you of all people. I never was. That? You know what I mean? He's one of those guys where he shocked me. Who but then that? I got reminded quickly that, you know what? He's... <clears throat> uh, your, your mic's going in and out, Maletta. You know what? Omar's doing a much better job in this round, actually closing range, finding distance, but still, he's, he's taking way he's, too much incoming. Yeah, he's, and, he, and he's pretty inactive. Yeah, he's out there in no man's land once again, where you're not going to land shots effectively, and you're right there in range to be hit. You know, once again, he's turned into a tentative version of himself because he understands that that sharp left hand is waiting for him. And he's not doing anything to change the position to at least effectively anyway. Nah. <sighs> I, uh, I don't know if I can get him around yet. Nope. Even if you're looking for one, well, he's done better. It doesn't mean he wins the round, though. See, right there, he just needs to stay right in his grill. Don't step out. Keep working him. Keep yeah. working until he tries to tie you up. God. Mm. Yeah, I really like o um, Omar and his family. They're good people. But, you know, buddy. Better get to work. You only have seven more rounds left.
It's like he's got, he's doing, he's just trying one move, lunging in with that right hand. How effective is that right now? Stay there. So you're, you've got him against the ropes. You've got him in the corner. Stay there. Hit him anywhere. If he's got the high guard, pff, hit him in the elbows, hit him in the arms, hit him in the gut, anywhere. Make him make him feel like he was in a fight the next day. Chihuahua. <laughs> the funny thing is Bartholomew was doing something we was talking about. He's he's in like a pseudo Philly shell in the open stance. Yeah, and Juarez don't know what to do with it. Nope. Uh, well, unfortunately, man. Um, yeah, this is his opportunity. Unfortunately, he's, uh, I don't think he's ready. He's ready in terms of popularity in Texas and ticket sales. But, yeah, it's a huge jump when you're talking about class and levels. I feel like, I feel like sometimes that's one of the things a lot of people get wrong. My being mismatched because of how much popular they are. Like you get, you know what I mean? Like I, I always get this thing where some people think they are leveled up because they sell popular and they got, uh, they sell tickets and they've got funds. It's like, nah. <clears throat> well, that's what funds, makes uh, that's what makes top rank so effective is they have the best matchmakers in the business. Mm -hmm. They don't care. I mean, they do care if you're a big ticket seller and they want to try and cultivate that. And they love working with fighters who are ticket sellers in their home area, but well, you better be willing to learn on the job. You better be willing to learn on the job because we can't protect you forever. Mm. And the only way you're going to grow in this business is if you step up in competition. Once again, yeah. quality of opposition matters. And that's what makes the business of boxing so difficult um, is you can't keep putting him in with soft touches, even if he's a ticket seller, then fans will eventually lose interest. Yeah. You, you have to move him up. You have to... You start testing him at the four, six, and eight round level. Now, Omar, because you obviously see that that difference in class. Well, he's already at the 10 round level. You should have been doing this. You should have fought someone of this ilk at the four, six, and eight round level. Mm -hmm. Just like Ryan Garcia. Did he learn anything with all those one and two round knockouts when Golden Boy was after Don passed away? Yeah, you saw how ineffective both matchmakers are for golden boy mm -hmm. now you but see the true colors they did a piss poor job of cultivating ryan garcia in his ascension up the uh up the ladder you know what's funny i read an article the other day that was saying that uh shako stevenson is uh sorry ryan garcia is more exciting than shako because shako don't get no knockouts and knockouts and that makes him a nobody i was laughing i was like wait is this an actual it was like on, on a website called the boxing social i was like i was actually laughing i was like bro they just said ryan garcia is a better and exciting fighter than shako i was like jesus look honestly after the way he handled um this experience in this situation Mario as, Mario's got uh, feather, feather earrings but go ahead <laughs> uh that's team azteca brother uh, um so anyway, it's a, it's a Mexican Indian thing, man. But anyway, um, yeah, look, man, it, the way Ryan Garcia handled this in situation, um, sacking Joe Goosen, only spending two days a week preparing with Coach Goosen, um, preparing for his toughest assignment, focusing more on conditioning and losing weight, and then marketing on Instagram, marketing on his YouTube channel, um, you know what, man? I'm never going to take him seriously again until he deserves it. I mean, so th the thing is, this fight didn't need any marketing. Let's be honest. Some of these fights don't need, like, some of these fighters, when they say that, oh, we need to spend this much money on marketing, it's like, bro, this fight, because of how Ryan Garcia already built his, his, um, his profile on social media, People were going to buy it anyway. People were going to watch that shit anyway. So it was just one of those ones where I was just like, why are you spending so much time trying to sell something that you know is already been sold? Once so again, like, um, since the advent of social media, the business of boxing has changed dramatically. Um, with, the, with the problem of piracy, um, 
Yeah, and these idiots still, and I don't want to bring it up ever, ever again after this, but once again, so much for that formula that promoters use, right? Look at Jake Paul. Look at Ryan Garcia. Yeah, we're a dawning of a new era in this business, and it's very perplexing, and no one has yet to figure it out. Mm. At least not promoters or networks. So, like, even right now, I'm seeing people, like, I've seen people in my gym, like, people in my gym were well, talking about, I don't want to box. I want to do the misfits. I want to get signed to misfits. And I was like, they're like, why? It's like, I got, I've got a following. So if I can get signed to misfits because I've got a big following, I'll make more money than, in the, like, a majority of those books. And it's just, like, it's baffling. Like, it's like you're seeing someone who at one point was talking about being a world champion. You're not talking about being a misfit fighter like a celebrity fighter i'm like wow really for real like yeah that's what the money is that's what the money is so well let me say this let me say this yes sir go ahead Um, i'm sorry um let me just point this out lightning um bro you've been trolling yourself for like two hours bro yeah so i just want to applaud you for it you know <laughs> it takes real dedication to do what you're doing, man. Like, I'm, yeah, well, I'm hey, gonna... man, you finally gave him what he wanted, my friend. Yeah, no, I gotta applaud him for it. Like all these call- comments, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I it's stopped noticing that about an hour ago, man. Yeah, that's it's just crazy. Good job, bro. All right, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I was saying it's weird how you see someone who is aspiring to be a world champion is now aspiring to fight on misfits because they feel like they're going to get more money, more followers, more opportunities. Just like, bro, that's where boxing is going right now. Yeah. Yeah. But it it is what it is. It's all types of important. I don't want to get into that, but I, I just don't know why every boxer doesn't have a full social media team. Like, I, I don't get it. Fuck, man. You, you can get that shit on, uh, on fucking, what's it called? Fiverr? Fiverr? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, well, also, um, a, a, a very smart business manager like David McWater. David McWater doesn't sit down with a guy like Teofimo Lopez and tell him to shut the hell up. <laughs> like like seriously you know what coach him dude you know they they need um some of these guys man they need um sports psychologists or agents to really help them in that manner i said you know, just, that motherfucker said i'm not fighting for the fans i'm not fighting for nothing else i'm fighting for the kids in the sky <laughs> what the fuck, bro? oh my gosh what are you dude talking about man yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Wait, hold on. Who was that? <laughs> it's a oh, man. He been going yeah. crazy. Yeah, he's, he's – well, I, I tell you what, once again, he's – and I, I'm one to talk, but once again, I'm not a prize fighter. But he's hitting the bottle with his dad way too frequently. From what I've heard, that's become a big, big problem for Tiafimo Lopez. I understand life is hard. But it's a lot harder when you add to it. Cut it out. Yeah. If you don't like the hole you're in, throw away the shovel and stop digging. But that's that's it. That's 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 thing where sometimes people go too high that you know the drop is too much for them. They can't handle it. Because he was he was flying high for a while. Like he was yep. knocking out everybody, doing talking. Everybody's yep. like, damn, he's doing everything he talks. And credit to him he said he was going to do something he said he was going to take over he predicted what he was going to do he did it but it's like once he got there it's like he didn't know what to do he was like yep. it was kind of like the tyson fury thing where it's like i beat this guy i've got all the belts and wow i don't know what to do and he just dropped that's a very good observation brother because that's exactly right, what man. took place um, Bro, you know, he, he said all Bart, the Bart Suarez, they just did like a whole minute of posturing where Bart was just flicking the jab on yep. Suarez gloves and they were just walking in circles like nothing was happening. Once again, Omar, I don't know what you think you're young, you know if you think you're gonna win this fight at that range, but dude, you're not doing a damn thing to win. He's not. 
<laughs> literally nothing happened for a minute. Yep. And you know what? I'm surprised that Steve Farhood gave Omar Waters the last two rounds. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. After I was just singing his praises in the last fight, right? I, Look, well, man, I just think one aggression arm, one arm was more competitive for sure. But I yeah, know, I'm halfway paying attention. You know what? He's not doing anything to adjust. And it's obvious he's being he's just not at this level mentally. Yeah, right. He doesn't know how to how to apply intelligent pressure against a against a crafty southpaw. Well, look, he doesn't so know. So Bart Bart switched orthodox, still, you know, uh, circling around the ropes. And Juarez went into a Philly shell. Like, oh, bro, geez. now you're stalking with a Philly shell. Like, bro. Yeah, he, but from the page of uh, Andre Berto, right? <laughs> yeah. And now nah, he went orthodox. So it was proper. It was closed stance. It's just, why the fuck did you start stalking in a Philly shell now? Why do you stalk in a Philly shell? Why would you why would you take away your lead hand to come forward? Doesn't make any sense to me, man. <laughs> um, once again, he looks like he has never been and, and once again, this is a testament to you, you you fight how you train, and how's a fighter supposed to know anything if he isn't taught and his trainer doesn't tell him? And that's what you get. Sometimes at the club and regional level, you get these guys who have been with these kids since the amateurs, and they think they're going to, they're proficient enough to take them to the world-class level. And it's just, you know, how's he supposed to know? And then when he starts getting beat during this assignment, if you start barking orders at him that you haven't taught him, it's just going to confuse the kid and frustrate him. Yeah, That's what's happening here. Yeah, that's big. That's big. It's like um, Grant, Grant Smith. I don't know if you know him or you've heard of him. Uh, who this one's trainer? Sunny's trainer. He's very, very much like, he's very, he, he says, he talks about that a lot. Like, whenever he comes in and, he's fight, and he finds amateur training, bro, like, even the, like, even the tiniest of mistake, he will back at you like, yo, why are you doing that? He's very, very detailed in his training. He's like, Jason he always Mahoney, asks you like, MP. Why? Why are you doing that? Is that how you're gonna throw your shots when you're fighting? Why? Why is your elbow doing this? Why? It's like it's like it's very very detailed. And I've seen I've been to different clubs and I've very few coaches are very detailed like that. Like he is yeah. very like, the tiniest of things. He wants it's like he wants you to be perfect all the time when you're training. When you walk in the gym from the warm up, you know, like the shadow boxing to when you're hitting the back, it's like. He won't allow you to just be like, oh, let me just relax. And now nah, everything is, has to be on point. And everything like, has a purpose. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. And you know what? Um, yeah, attention to detail. Oh, Maloney just won the title. Yeah. Congratulations to him. No, I, no idea whether it was uh, good scorecards or not. <laughs> Yeah, well, third time's a charm for him, but uh, whether or not he deserved it, I wasn't paying attention. I was focusing on the, well, honestly, really haven't been watching too carefully either fight. I, I've become discouraged, and I've kind of given up on Omar Juarez, but <laughs> Steve Farhood, in his infinite wisdom, has the fight all knotted up at three rounds apiece after six. How do you like that? I don't know. I, uh, once again, it can't be on clean, effective punching. I mean, Have you seen Omar do anything clean or effective, anything with consequence? Uh, sometimes he'd be able to cut off the ring and have a uh, bar in the corner somewhere, letting go of shots, but super mm, they, they have to score nah. it on something. Now, once, once again, the primary scoring criteria is clean, effective, and consequential punching. It's not an amateur contest. Your punches have to have some kind of consequence. And that usually is your only criteria that you use to determine who's, who wins the round. And if you can't determine who won by that, if it's too close to call, then you move to your secondary scoring criteria, which is effective aggression or ring generalship. 
And the, the way it was told to me is the usually that dictates or determines who did the more consequential work is who's controlling range. Hmm. And that's it. It's very simple. Like a lot of these judges at the club and regional level, they try to be a, have an original take. I'm like, dude, no, just score the, use the criteria, dude. Clean, effective, and consequential punching. It has to have an effect. Is it having an effect on his, on your opponent? Yeah. Chances are, if you're controlling range, then you're doing the more effective punching. Your say, punches are having a more more of an effect. It's that simple. Yeah, there's, there's there's just definitely not a lot of exchanges in this fight. Well, that's par for the course with Rancis Bartholomew. Yeah. Well, shit, Gary Anton Russell forced that shit. So. Yeah, he made him look exciting, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, you know, and once again, it's just like um, uh, King Kong Igbeko when he fought Guillermo um, um, Rigandia. Oh, that was a everyone started to walk out midway through that HBO broadcast, and that was the last time HBO said. And this is when Ken Hirschman was running the ship, right? He was like, you know what? We don't want to see him anymore. Mm. I don't care if you're paying him a lot of money, Bob. We deserve a better product. We pay a lot of money for these main events. And for people to walk out during the fight in the arena, no, that's not fit for HBO. And Guillermo Rigondeaux was cut from top rank in the very next fight. There goes some effective aggression from Juarez. That's what, that's what I'm saying, man. Showtime, this is for the job that they've been doing exemplary throughout the entire year. This is dog shit. I got and then in out. the main event, and then in the main event, we've got Roly Romero versus Old Man Barroso. Oh, how, wait, how old man. is that guy? That guy looks like super old. He's only forty, according to his fight facts. Haha. <clears throat> yeah. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, like Luis Ortiz is only forty-two. They didn't tell you it's his second life. Nah, jeez. So. So he's, tell you what, man, he's really a, <laughs> the first one. He lived to sixty-five. So, oh my gosh, dude! You know what? His face looks like a catcher's mitt, dude. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, like he's been beaten up. Like he's like he slept outdoors for twenty years. Yeah, man, this is a terrible fight. Steve Farhood now has Bartholomew in the lead. Judging by the scorecards, you would think this is an interesting, um, fun fight to watch. <clears throat> no. Damn Honestly, you. dude, you know what judges should start doing now? For uneventful fights like this, score most of these damn rounds even. And if they don't do anything for 10 rounds, score to draw. Neither guy deserves a victory for this. Ask the white guy to lower his to lower the, the <clears throat> on his mic. So there, there is no white guy on the panel. Puro Mexicano Holmes. I'm white. <laughs> Dominicano me. Who the fuck said that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you make that voice? I don't know. Last <laughs> one drama to the conversation. Yep. <laughs> Yep, I'm white too. My name is Whitey Wallaby. Yeah, I'm, See, you I'm know what? It, white. It's, That's why what's it sounds hilarious, like this. though, man. Is most people when they when they hear me, right? They before they see me, yeah, they think I'm like six two, blonde with blue eyes. <laughs> I feel like people need to stop doing that, Judge, judging people of their voices to like uh, determining someone's race by the voice. It's like. Like, yeah, exactly. So these days, this like this day you can't get it right. These days you're always gonna get it wrong. Yep, exactly. It's hard to get it right. This like day. like Buford D. Justice on Smokey and the Bandit. Ooh, for some reason or another, you sound a little taller on the radio. Because <laughs> he didn't realize he was talking to the black sheriff, right? <laughs> Jackie Gleason. Tell you what, that movie could not be made today. It's so politically incorrect. 
But the man, how hilarious, hilarious was that back in the day? Gary Antoine Russell suspended. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Well, you know what? That's par for the course with the Russell clan, man. So All the talent in the world. I don't know. I'll find out tomorrow. Is it one of those suspensions where not it's after a fight or something like that you get suspended because you're injured? No, no. Um, I'll 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 call someone. Or I'll I'll find out tomorrow at the press conference. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the press conference tomorrow, man. I I love these things. I love seeing all the fans come out and support their favorite fighters. Ah, oh, it's just nothing like it, man. In San Antonio, they're so diehard boxing. Um, and they're so they'll support you, even if you have five losses straight, and are being only- used as an opponent. Opponent, teams still show up, fans still show up and celebrate the guy like he's a world champion. Such a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, those are real fans, not not idiots who think they know more than they do and call these hardworking men who take punishment for their entertainment, call them bums. Ching out. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, sir? We cannot hear you. Cut out, out. Oh, no. Let me, let me, uh, let me see something here. Can you hear me now, sir? Can you hear me now, sir? Are you talking to us or? Yes, I'm talking to you. Yeah, we can hear you. I've always been able to hear you. Oh, okay. Said my yes. mic is cutting out. How about now? Can you hear me? Perfectly clear. Okay, very good. Because <laughs> I thought maybe you were talking to someone else on the phone or something. No, no. Um, my apologies, guys. I should have made it clear. What's up? Oh, boy, what an entertaining fight. Going down the stretch, all knotted up after eight, according to Steve Farhood. 76-76. Wow, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> yeah, then Showtime paid a lot of money for this shit. That's what I'm saying, man. It's ching- well, well, to their defense, um, this is a guy who's a big ticket seller and has a lot of potential. Big fan base in Texas. And this is his biggest step a test to date. And you know, and you never know, just like Kenneth Sims versus Agmadov, you never know how a fight's gonna play out. It may look a certain way on paper, and then it plays out completely differently in the ring. That's why they fight the fights. With yeah. that said, brother, you should have known. Everyone knows how Bartholomew fights. He's got a proven track record, and he fights one way. Prepare yourself for this crap, man. This this couldn't have been a mystery. Once again, um, more than likely, he needs a different trainer. But that's that's also like that's what happens when you don't have the right people or uh, in your corner. Yeah. You, oh, you need to have a really good team. You need to have the right team um, behind you, kind of like pushing you and like doing your research for you. Yep. So. And you know, man, um, it's quite shocking too when you look at the long, rich history of San Antonio boxing. There aren't more world-class fighters that come out of this hamlet. It's the seventh largest metropolitan area in America. Damn. Shocking, actually. I'm ready for these main events. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. Ready to see if Ismael Barroso is just going to phone it in. Um, see if he actually makes it out of the ring walking out or on a stretcher, see if he's deserving of this opportunity and, uh, want to see how long Jean decides to carry Stephen Butler. 
Once again, these these are two very disappointing main events, guys. And I understand Janibek's plight and Top Rank's plight. And one of the one of the hardest jobs of matchmaking is to convince the other fighter that this is a good idea for their career for the amount of money. Mm. People don't realize that. That's the hardest part of matchmaking. Um, and I understand for short money, even if it's on TV against a guy like Janabek Ali Manala fighting a champion for absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's a very tough sell. Mm. Elder Drag, appreciate the super chat. Panel, what is your guys' take on the remainder of Canelo's career? Is he close to done on the decline? One last vindication against Bavo. I think he's on the decline, but, you know, I don't know. In my opinion, I think everyone's overreacting um, to, and I thought, you know, he wasn't trying to win the fight. Um, and once again, you can't fault John Ryder, tough man. Uh, but he basically, he doesn't have much power and is competitive through volume and aggression um, and his ability to take a good shot and keep coming. Mm. But let's just face it, guys, against Canelo Alvarez, he brought a knife to a gunfight. You know, yeah. it's a moral victory for him. Um, I, I, I will say this. Uh, everyone is criticizing Canelo for taking too many shots. But look, from mid to long range, you're going to have a tough time hitting him. The only chance he had to land anything of consequence was to basically bury your head in his chest at times. Push him back. Um, look, even if you're Floyd Mayweather, if, you're, if your opponent like Maidana is buried in your chest – or right there up against you, you you're not going to be able to avoid everything, no matter what your reflexes are like. I think a lot of people are overreacting. John Ryder fought the best fight he possibly could, and you saw the best version of him that night. And Canelo still dominated and beat this guy mercilessly. Mm. Yeah, that's not what I was saying. It. I just know that you know Canelo's already had a very long career, and I know it's about that time. I will say this, though, and I'm sure you picked up on this. He's really developed bad habits since dominating at 68 because mm -hmm. he seems to have fallen in love with his power and seems to think that he can get anyone out of there with one big shot. And he just doesn't put his punches together as creatively in combination as he used to. And that's a huge mistake at this level. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, so while, uh, you know, the whole walking forward thing has definitely um, uh, helped him out for a good stretch, walking forward in the high guard, you know, putting pressure on everybody. It's helped him out for a good stretch of time. Uh, I, I think he needs to remember what, what else he could do. <laughs> You yeah, know you know, it's very difficult with someone his height. And once again, they list him as 5'9 on box rec and fight facts. But, dude, I've stood next to him. He's like 5'7 with heels or on a good day. He's, he's short. And for 60 and 68 and especially 75, you have no choice, man, but to, you know, be the aggressor because you're not going to win from mid to long range. You're not going to at these weight divisions. He has no choice. And and that was the reluctance. Um, and once no, again, I was fine. working with Don. I'm saying it's fine that, that was he's the, the aggressor, but but he still has to have, you know, some a semblance of a step back game or or perhaps I mean he never really did this, but but step around, but uh do something. Yeah, I mean you could still be aggressive, you could still come forward, but damn, bro, you you, you never you, the only time he disengages is when he does that little frustrated walk away thing that he does. Yeah, but, uh, and you can you can obviously tell he's frustrated when that yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. But go ahead. Um, look, I, I will say this: like Juan Manuel Marquez, he began his career being uh what Coach Gogi calls a cutie pie, just a boxer from mid to long range. Never fought in the pocket. Never let his balls hang in the ring. Never showed you the the wrinkles that he developed over the back half of his career. And he did it out of necessity because no one wanted to buy his fights on, and no one wanted to fight him. He wasn't a big ticket seller. He wasn't embraced by Mexican fans. 
he had to come up the hard way and prove. Um, and, and once again, that's a, if you're not a ticket seller, you know, a guy like Bruce Trampler has no choice, but to sticky and tough, right? That's the only way you're going to develop new fans, um, and increase your market value. And, you know, so you saw him getting better fighting in the pocket, but he was taking way too much incoming. Um, and you saw Canelo at standing at that limbo, staying at limbo at 55. Uh, Don said, nope, you can't move him up yet because he's not proficient in cutting off the ring and applying intelligent pressure. Um, and so he's been learning that on the job. And now, yeah, he seems to have forgotten um, what took well, him to prominence in the first place. It, Bartholomew beat, you, beat Juarez. Yeah, that's not surprising. Majority decision. That's not surprising. But, yeah, man, Canelo is um, – Boy, I tell you what, he's this is the wrong time in his career to be developing habits and just falling in love with your power and thinking you're going to get everyone out of there with one big shot. Yeah, uh, that's definitely going to work against him if he comes to or if he did fight Benavidez and he came with that strategy. I mean, that's it's going to make the fight harder than it, what it needs to be for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he should have learned by the Beeble fight. You know what? Not everyone's gonna get nine. Not everyone's gonna uh, like. Um, they're gonna be guys in this sport who can take my power. Yeah, they're not gonna. There always them. are. You yeah. know what? It, it should have been a lesson for him, and unfortunately, well, he just proved he didn't didn't get that memo. He's still as confident and as egoed out and as as uh, delusional as he always has been. And some of these fighters are that way. You know, when they're brimming with confidence and they have that superstar quality to him, you know, they just can't accept that he, like, he still believes that he deserved to win that fight on the judges' scorecards. Before. Yeah, he still <laughs> believes he won that fight. And he, he right. thinks that it was his hand, the reason why he lost. Oh, well. That's what I'm well, saying. He's developed this delusional bad on, habit. Uh, Reynoso, then. Reynoso should definitely tell his ass he lost that fight. Well, you know what, man? It's And once again, you look at the Joe Goose and Ryan Garcia, and this is a big problem um, with the egos um, today, right, and some fighters. Um, how do you tell your boss? Like in other sports, they don't have this problem. In other sports, you're hired if you're a, tra or a, a head coach or a manager. You're hired by the front office and the, and the owner. You don't answer to any player, but in boxing, that fighter, the guy who you're supposed to lay the smack down to, um, he signs your checks. He's your boss. That's yeah. become a big problem in boxing. Most people, unless they're in this business, they don't realize that. But we just saw that with Joe Goose and Ryan Garcia. Mm, yeah. Jenna Beck on his ring walk. Yep. Oh, and there's Gentleman Jack Reese. Most people don't realize that he actually um, teaches uh, new candidates, right? New hires for the California State Athletic Commission. He teaches them um, the uh, protocol when you're a ref and a judge. And he's very, very good at it. Hmm. Like in California, you were expected to do both. Not only be proficient in being able to control the action, the man in charge in the ring, but you also have to have duty um, being a judge as well. You have to be able to do both or else you're not going to find work. And, and that's only in California, guys. Man. God damn, these pictures of Barroso, man. Oh, gosh. It's hideous, Jesus isn't it? Jesus Christ. Yeah, man, you look like you could light a match on his face. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's why he had all that Vaseline on three oh, hours before the, fight, before the fight. Yeah, think about this. His face would get oh, torn shit. up, man. Yeah, dude. Um, you see the leather coming off of Roly Romero's gloves around the eighth round? <laughs> 
because his skin's so abrasive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, honestly, wow. dude, these these this is going to be very anticlimactic. Uh, both of these main events, I, I don't see either one being very competitive or going long, lasting very long. All right. Well, Let's, I hope so. Since Janabek is first, I hope he gets him out of there early. If if he really ain't shit like that. Yeah. So, so I could laugh at this Roly fight. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. No, it's going to be disgrace. Once again, Showtime, <laughs> they deserve better. They spend way too much money on their main events to get this kind of crap from the WBA or whomever. And once again, this is just Gilberto Mendoza, um, Al Heyman doing him a solid because he does business with the WBA almost exclusively. And so this is him throwing Gilberto Mendoza a bone for one of his fighters. That's a conflict of interest and it's corruption. And it's a disgrace to the sport that we love. Yeah, agreed. Think about I mean, how it. many. Neither one of these motherfuckers about, should be in this position. No, how many really? hungry young fighters do we see that are a lot more deserving of this opportunity than this geezer? Uh, well, fuck. I mean, let's talk about Roly. Why are you? Why is Roly in this position? Yep, <laughs> that's it. I mean, we could lay off the old man. Like Roly, has he had a fight at one forty? Nope. Right, this is his yeah, first. This is his debut as a 40 pounder. Yeah, his shit is even more ridiculous. Yeah, well, at least he can sell tickets. <laughs> but but hey, you can debate that now. Look at that empty stadium. Look at that empty arena. I don't know it's a theater at Cosmopolitan. I've covered fights here before. In fact, I covered your boy uh Tim Bradley and Brandon Rios mm. at the Cosmopolitan. Um Tell you what, they didn't have a problem filling that venue. Look at all the empty seats tonight, man, for Roly Romero. And this is Vegas. He lives there. Yeah, Jesus Christ. So how did he get this assignment? I have no idea. They're really trying to throw the hype behind this shit. Uh, did they? Are they showing like the 20 or the uh, all access thing? I will say this about Roly. I was, I think I've told you this before on your show. I was very pleasantly surprised when I first met Roly Romero. Cause honestly, mm -hmm. he appears and he loved, and, and oh, apparently this is by design. He loves playing the jester and the idiot just to troll fans. Oh, okay. like when you, when you meet him in person, he is a very respectful, good kid who actually knows boxing when you sit down and talk to him. Wow. Like for the Frank, Frank Gore event, um, he sat in uh, the first two fights calling the action with me. And I was very impressed. I wasn't expecting nearly what he gave us. Wow. And then Coach Bullet, um, he took over, right? And Coach Bullet is so funny, dude, and he's so abrasive. He's like, he's like Coach Gogi. speaks his mind, and he doesn't – he has yeah. no filter. Butler Butler already reached with the backhand, got caught with a check hook by Janabek that almost knocked him off balance. There you have it. This is going to be a difference in class, guys. And, yeah, this is a paid advertisement for, um, yeah, Haney versus Lomachenko. The second shot weekend. was an inside slip cross, or was it outside? Yeah, I don't remember which direction the slip was. But – yeah. So basically, both times Butler's threw a punch, he got countered. Mm -hmm. Now he got touched with a cross on a one-two. So keeps either L he's stepping, gonna L stepping around in a circle to the right in range, circling mm -hmm. towards Janabek's power hand in range. So yep, he's he's not in in Janabek's same league, and I warned you guys of this, and. Either one of two things is going to happen, and neither outcome is very good um, for Butler. Either he's going to turn into a tentative shell of himself once he gets a taste of that Kazakh power, right, and gets shocked with that counter. Or he's going to pull a Ryan Garcia, lunge in foolishly, and get caught and knocked out. 
Yeah, he's already been lunging in. Yep. Guy who's or not used to fighting at, least, at this level, grows impatient. Yeah. All right. Now he got caught at the end of that L step. Smart from Janabek. Now Janabek attacked the L step again. He let it he let it happen that time. Lunge counter. Attack the L step again. On the L step, um, if uh, if Janibet could get his attention to the body, um, uh, it's, it's gonna be an open lane to the head. Okay, mm-hmm. one two, just straight off the. So yeah, he's just attacking the end of the L step. So obviously, Butler's breaking his base. So before he resets, he can't do shit. He can't defend right. He can't punch. So, yeah. you know, you attack, you attack the um, the L step before he, he gets back reset, and you're good every time. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, you're not going to see Butler make the adjustment i don't think he understands how yeah he's got to stop doing that he's got to stop mm-hmm. l stepping in range well leave it the canucks leave it to the canucks did i just say that on your show i'm sorry man i don't even know what that means i'd say um <laughs> it's kind of a derogatory term to For refer Canadians? to a canadian uh, yeah canuck Butler setting a rhythm right. Ah, oh, look at that ad. Mm-hmm. You see that? Uh, see, I'm not drinking tonight, man. I've got to work tomorrow, so. I sure could use one of those shots right now, though. <laughs> yep. I was one of the few in the proud that stayed loyal to my sweet Amber, Jack Daniels, and didn't um, get offended by their... Um, desire to get a, a greater sales percentage of a specific demographic. I don't know why. I don't know why everyone's getting offended. Like, dude, it's business. They understand that. Yeah. That demographic for some reason does not buy Jack Daniels. They want a piece of that market. How is that so difficult to understand? Hmm. Oh, Joseph, what did you? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's it's just while the uh, between rounds. Um, oh. Apparently, Jack Daniels reported losing over twenty percent of their sales because they made an ad that caters mm. to oh. the alphabet, oh, he's alphabet he's demographic. Out. He's about to be out. He's yeah, out. Mm-hmm. so he called him. He called him region with mm-hmm. an uppercut. That was the uppercut. I thought it would be the check right hook. All right, good. It'd be good if this fight ends now. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you weren't aware of that? He's hurt. It's a minute 35. Now, hold on. Let me, let me, oh, uppercut catches him again. It's about to be a wrap. He's got to hold on. He's got to hold on. He can't get a handle. It's over, Mm -hmm. man. It's got to be over. Yeah. He can't even stand up straight, Jack. (laughs) <laughs> you knew it was only a matter of time right. before he timed him effectively. Yeah. Still a minute and he's so predictable, up. man. Rap, bro. Yep. He's so predictable for a guy who's, yeah, ugh, never it's saw it coming. It's about to be yeah, a and oh. when, yeah. Ooh, god damn. You letting him get beat on. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, Jack Reese, he doesn't, you know, he's oh turning his. Oh, my God. His, the fight is over, Steve's Jack. What are you? What are you oh doing, my bro? God. He's, tur- oh. he's turning into Steve Smoger in his old age, brother. The fight over, Don't you know. No, oh, jeez. Right. What the fuck? The fight is all right, bro. He didn't stop it. Okay, go ahead, Janet Beck. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Now it's really over, right? So now you wanted to see him on his back, huh, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, he's he's giving him a hey, he's probably the only time, chance man. he's. Yeah, Ray he's Roll, only get, give, giving him the only chance he's probably ever going to have at a major world title. So, hey, man, you wanted this assignment. Uh, bruh. <laughs> I should have been stopped that shit. Dude, I, I told you that this, this was going to happen. That's why I really didn't care about the Stockton card. Yo, he's in there. He's right on that, time, yeah. man. Rolly's in the ring. Ah, yeah. Look at old man Barroso. Chihuahua. I love Jimmy Lennon Jr. It's nice he's wearing a tux again. And that's crazy. Like, uh, Ismael Barroso, his last name actually looks like him in Spanish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I thought you were going to say, should his last name should be Mugroso. No, 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 no. I don't want to. <laughs> no, but you know, sorry, like, man. I've got like, no filter if you hadn't noticed already. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Uh, no, no, because uh, uh, barro is like the, the the material that make mugs out of it. You know, like the you know when they're spinning it, like you know, it looks like like mud. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> I barro didn't, means. I yeah. didn't put that together. You're right. Yeah, so barroso is like when it's like all over the place, like you know, like mm. mucoso, like you know, like like messy. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. So that actually, make <laughs> his last time actually looks like him. You know, like. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. So, well, about you know, that, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny. Um, my father was Anglo. He's from German descent and he changed the spelling of Heron. Um, and it's supposed to be a diff, a, a variation of the Heron, which means gentleman in German. Well, I'll tell you what, that's nothing like me, brother. <laughs> I've got no filter, man, <laughs> to a fault. Yep. Uh, that's probably why I don't get bigger assignments, man, with commentary and ring announcing. You became the, the Larry Merchant of the boxing. <laughs> Al, I'll tell you what, Larry Merchant's got nothing on me, brother. But I, I will say this. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think just that's hanging out with Gogi for over a decade does that to you. He used to have some some depth uh, commentary as well, uh, Larry Merchant. I remember uh, he put this term in, into... Uh, well, he named uh, these term for some fighters called uh, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, Truth Machine Fighters, which uh, yeah. yeah, I still use that to this day. You know what? He just turned, and this is why they originally asked him um, in the first place. Is there? They eventually asked him because he turned into a grumpy old man who would shit on every fight. It seemed like I mean, it, look, looking in hindsight, he was kind of right. You know. Well, look, Larry man. Um, yeah, Larry Merchant. And once again, I loved Larry Merchant when I was growing up. He was he was the best in terms of putting the bow on the entire event, putting the button on it, yeah. summing it up in one great phrase. Very memorable. And those just started becoming way too far and few and far in between. And then it got so bad where he turned into a cranky old man and would at times forget to pick up his microphone. And Jim would have to remind him, Larry, pick up your mic. Damn. Yeah, I remember that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's that's not good. And that's why yeah, they ended up good. canning him. I remember I the, something. I see the members got jokes. <laughs> Big world of what? They yeah, they couldn't really find really anyone good. to fill in, so Roly called his uncle. <laughs> Big Rolo was fighting my granddaddy. <laughs> Romero was oh, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Tony Weeks. Woo. Damn, Tell you what, man, 18 years ago, 18 years ago, he was the ref. That uh, he's the third man in the ring for, um, yeah, Diego Corrales versus um, Jose Luis Castillo. In that Hell brilliant 10th round. Tell you what, credit to Tony Weeks for allowing that fight to continue, but giving him that time to spit out the mouthpiece. Um, I don't know if every ref would have handled it that way. What an amazing fight, though. Yo, but Russell looks like my dad's older brother, man. Oh, my gosh. He looks like my grandpa, dude. And he looks like a king <laughs> now, dude. Seriously, man. Ah. Looks like look my how dad's somber, older Look brother. how somber that corner is. It's like, what did he just ask his friends? 
just, hey, man, can you be with me in the ring? I don't need training. I don't need corner advice. And with my tough, leathery-ass skin, worse than Chavez Sr., yeah, man, so I won't need a cup, man. They don't need to do no more close-ups. Yeah. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Uh, we, we got everything we need to see, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, this is going to be ugly, oh, dude. Uh, uh, now, once again, Rowling, Rowling Romero is not the greatest technician in the ring, but he's got world-class power. And this guy, yeah, yeah he man, he's going to get some, a beat down, dude. He's another, another one. In the All right, the fight, like, fight's about to start for me. I'm going a, I'm to a try to, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, at least there are more fans wrong, there bro. now. It looks wrong, bro. Oh my god! Yeah, terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible. Number thirty-five ranked fighter at one forty is the number out. one ranked contender. Constantly clicking his feet on that rhythm stuff. Did it five times in a row. Disengage, punches the bounce to the right. Disengage again, punch the bounce to the right. Uh, okay, nothing's happening here. Disengage, punch the bounce to the right. Dude, the first bell just rang on mine. So you're exactly a minute behind. Mm -hmm. In that way, the entire podcast of nothing. Yep, that doesn't surprise me none. Once again, Barroso is, yeah, just happy to be here. And Roly, well, he's just Roley a is, of my trade, man. He's been extremely patient. <laughs> no, he's a counter puncher, man, and he's not versatile enough to be the aggressor be more assertive you saw what happened against javante davis when he did yeah so now he's gonna be real uh patient huh unfortunately too patient for this guy you should just go in and just bomb the shit out of this guy make him prove that he deserves to be oh, here. yeah i mean i don't remember seeing barosa fight i don't remember seeing his face ever no, you know, yeah, probably will said, remember uh, <laughs> Yeah, you, you're you're never gonna forget that, man. Stuff of nightmares, brother. He look used to fight back in Egypt, man. Yeah. Nice uh, lead hand hook from Barroso landed. Roly doing. <sighs> yep. What Roley did always have was a counter right hand, mm -hmm. which he just landed pretty solid. Roley's disengagement footwork is horrible. Yep. Like like I said, well just Roley, turn around and run. Yeah, whenever I watch Roley, I'm always reminded that yeah, he's still learning on the job. And not too long ago, yeah, I was under the impression that he really didn't know how to fight. I have a question. By any chance, Rolly has done any type of martial art or something? Like, he looks like somebody yeah, who used what? to fight. Like, he yes. used to fight you know, it's very perceptive of you because yeah. that's that's how he first started fighting. Yeah. I can see, like, by his stance and the way he moves. Like, he does, like, a judo or jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Very perceptive of you, brother. Oh. Yeah, definitely jiu-jitsu. I'll tell you what, man. Barroso has a sharp little left hand. Well, I don't know if yeah, it's got it's some crack too. behind it, yeah, it's but quick. yeah, it's a sharp little left hand. Don't square up. Be aggressive, not reckless. Land. Oh, is that left. Al Bernstein's genius? Yeah, you're reading? It kills me with the land the right, land the left. Like, bro, oh, you, bro. <laughs> it's a twelve round fight, man. You're gonna land both hands. You know, this is a very important punch. Pay attention to this and shut up, Al. It's the left hand. Dude, he sounds like Snagglepuss, doesn't he, from Hanna-Barbera? Yeah. That's it. Stage lefty, then. He's, <laughs> uh, he's a... <laughs> he's a 
it's like lend it lend the left hand lend the left right hand okay which order like how it's a hook it's a... <laughs> heavens to murgatroyd yeah dude um you know man yeah i'm not a big fan of al i used to be um yeah anyway let's just leave it at that like got a bit lazy on this uh on his uh keys to victory yeah I, I used to really like his work when he was working with espn and the vintage fights mm-hmm. very good boxing historian very passionate fan but yeah he's just phoning it in at this point and i don't know why showtime is still loyal to him Because surely they can, I mean, there are so many, there are many better analysts and just as well spoken on YouTube. Like, you can't find someone better than Al? <laughs> right. Anyway, I'm, though, once again, I, I'm not negotiating anything more. I think, I think more. the guy on the prelims is better than Al. Hell yes, both uh, of them. What's my man's name? Um, I know you're talking about the guys who also do MMA. They're very good. Yeah, yeah. Morning Combat is the channel, but yep. man, nice little counter right hand from Roly. Yeah, man. These uh... one fighter is a counter puncher, waiting for his opponent to get off, and the other one waiting to commit because yeah. he understands. Yeah, I'm never going to get this opportunity again. Nope. And didn't deserve it in the first place. <laughs> That's it. Do you, do you understand now why, man? It's like I really wasn't looking forward to the anticlimactic events of both main events. It's a wash, both of Look, them. I, I, it's a Luke Thomas. That's who it is. Yeah, Luke Thomas so is good. good. He's good. Mm-hmm. Um, Very well spoken also. I'm like, why is, Al, why is Snagglepuss still in the game? And you know he sings. What? At least he tries to anyway. Al Bernstein. He does? No, oh, yeah, he tries to anyway. Huh. Yeah, whenever he uh, does a show in Vegas, I Barroso think he always. A, he's actually got a quick one, too. Yep. He's got a nice, sneaky left hand. Um, and it's working and, to the body too. To cross. Look at the clinches, guys. That's how you know. Uh, Roly also had like some experience in martial arts. It was just perfect. Like you couldn't move that guy anyway. It would have just slammed like that. <laughs> Are you saying how oh, he wraps up well in the clinch? That's what you saying? No, but like the way he stand in front of uh, Barroso and he put his hand, he actually could have just taken down. Like he was, he wanted. You can see like he wanted you to spin him so bad. What kind of gloves is um is uh are Roly using? That's a good question. Uh, it looks like I really missed that counter right. Well, now. I, I know that I know that Barroso has the Cleto Reyes, the puncher's gloves, and I'm anxious to see if he connects to the chin of Roly. See how well he takes the shot. He's got a nice, quick release, man. Very short, compact, crisp. Um, I like the hand speed. He's got the puncher's gloves on. Let's let's see what happens. But I I don't rec- is they Everlast? Is he I using so. the um, yeah. Everlast, Everlast Elite? Everlast, yeah. Everlast. Everlast. They look like power locks. Um, maybe the, the horsehair Everlast. Oh gosh, the Mex Everlast, the MX Everlast. Those yeah. are the worst gloves, and for what you get, the most expensive, and they're dog shit. Mm, Everyone really. I know. Roly just rocked him with a swivel jab and didn't notice. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> surprise me at all. He buckled his knees and everything. And he didn't take advantage of it? He didn't even notice. I could tell oh, because he didn't do shit afterwards. Well, maybe he's just respecting his elders at this point. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, the MX Everlast are the worst gloves that I've ever used. And everyone who's used them insists, including Deontay Wilder. They stop using them because they hurt their hand. You either break it or injure it for the rest of your career, and it's never the same. Everyone complains about Everlast MX. I don't know why they even still make those. Jesus Yeah, the power locks are by far their best gloves. Where's – look, man. 
Yep, do he I, did I, buckle him with I, that jab. Yeah, he did. And he didn't notice. Do I get to pay somebody to throw a feint? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, you would think uh, since you look, you're facing a counterbuncher, do something. I mean, they're literally, they're literally, you know, in fit in equal positioning, just statues sometimes, just nothing happening. Like, bro, somebody jab, somebody probe, somebody faint. Nice little, nice little cross. (laughs) Yeah. Again, yeah, Barossa's killing with the cross to the body. He should just keep doing that. Yep. He's kind of rough. Rough roll up in the corner. And he's got to do something. And he's he's taking. Hey, this is not what I imagined, man. <laughs> yep. He's <laughs> <ain't> my yo. <laughs> I want old Rolly back. Yep. Me why too. is he boxing this old man? Bruh. I'm so confused. Because it's his one. It's his first Rolly fight back. at 140. And after getting starched, yeah, it does something to you mentally, brother. And once again, I forgot Triggs was here. <laughs> How you doing, Triggs? <laughs> Ooh, he got cracked and knocked down. Who? <laughs> Roly did. Roly. Yeah. Barossa knocked Whoa. him. Yeah, Dude, I can't with a, with wait a, to see this. What a cross, yeah. Yo, hold on, hold on. Come on. Change that cross no. back upstairs and oh. crack his ass. Tell you, man. Maybe Gilberto Mendoza didn't know what he was doing. Well, I mean. Yo, I hate how he's holding his hands, man. Well, once again, I've always been under the impression that Roly doesn't know how to fight. He's learning on the job, and he looks. Man, I've seen a lot of amateur fighters that look more impressive and know what they're doing, have a better grasp of the fundamentals than Roley. Bruh. How did this guy ever win the interim WBA 135-pound championship? Uh, Reasons. Right. Purpose. (laughs) Purpose. (laughs) Yeah, you have Jackson Marinez was robbed. Robert Garcia yeah, he fighter. Did, he, did. Yeah. he did. He easily gave Roly Romero a boxing lesson. And if you want to talk about it, he should have been disqualified in that Yeget fight. Oh, uh, Yeget fight? Yeah. For uh, turning it into a wrestling match? And now that you mentioned, you know, you uh, uh, you know, you mentioned that he also does your jigsaw and some shit like that. Actually, it makes sense how he is slamming so hard to the ground. Because like mm-hmm. he... You know, usually boxers when they do any takedown, they both go to the ground. But man, the bully stands up. I want to hear Coach Bullock tear into his ass real quick. Wait, what? Oh, now Roly's active. Now he's now he's uh coming forward and throwing more punches. Where's uh Barosa from again? You said Venezuela, right? Venezuela. Yep. Once again, the father of Gilberto Mendoza Jr. He was born in Venezuela, and that's where his family lives. Mm-hmm. Boy, I tell you what, this will be upset of the year if Barroso can pull this will off. You? No. Yep. How, nah. Joseph? Barroso? No, I'm well, saying, but who, the fuck, who is high on Roly? Um, <laughs> nobody. Nobody. <laughs> I'm saying, so. No, no, no. You know what? That's a very good point. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, you know what? And once again, Showtime should be embarrassed oh. for putting this in their main event. This is not a main event yeah. on a suitable for Showtime Championship Boxing. And once again, I, it's Al Heyman just throwing Gilberto Mendoza Jr. bone. I'll tell you what, man. They, they should be ashamed of themselves, the WBA. A far cry from being the very first um, major world title in the history of our sport. But Russ is doing something that I don't like. I saw, you know, he's I saw a really name. faint. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> One good faint. You owe him a dollar now. <laughs> Tell you what, man, after that knockdown, dude, Barroso's got the hop in his step, man. 
And he looks rejuvenated. I bet you he feels 40 again. <laughs> he doesn't feel 80 anymore. <laughs> yeah, man. Tell you what. Man, shit, if he wins, no Viagra tonight. What? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Go. <laughs> no, no big blue bomb for him. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, man. You. Um, yeah, Javante right. Davis's knockout victory and slow methodical victory um over Roly Romero isn't aging well at this point. We'll see though what happens. It's only the fourth round. I can't believe this is only the fourth round. He, hey, hey, Barroso is killing with that cross to the body. He does. Mm -hmm. It's opening. It's opening up everything. I don't yeah. know if you peep. Uh, I don't know if you guys peep, but uh, earlier, earlier on in the round, uh, Barroso landed a uh, naked liver shot, and I think he's aiming to that, like you know, low key as well with his left. Who hand. is the gentleman who is just reduced now? I can, forgive me for um, forgetting his name, guys. Shame on me. But who is the gentleman who tested positive? Um, Pueyo. Clomiphene. And it, yeah, Pueyo. I bet you right now he feels like the biggest jackass of the world. Oh, man. Yeah. But I guarantee you the WBA, oh, oh, they're oh. going to reinstate him because of the excuse that he mustered up, right? And then Connor Bannon is now thinking, man, why didn't I use that excuse? <laughs> um, because Pueyo is now saying, and I knew this was going to happen. I heard it through the grapevine. It was, and now it came out that, oh, I think I told you this last week. Oh, you know what? My, my bride and I were That's trying to have a that. child, our first child, and I'm taking fertility pills. It's not to get an unfair advantage. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Connor Ben heard that and it's like, damn, why didn't I use that instead of eggs? Well, I Poyo thought he like did use young. that. Fertility drug? He's trying to have a child? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I thought that Connor Ben used that first. That excuse. No, Connor Ben said, "Oh, it's 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 because of the eggs." Yeah. Not, I just had, uh, his... I just had uh, scrambled eggs today. I hope it wasn't no fucking female fertility <laughs> drug. <laughs> hey man, you might get uh that those increased levels of testosterone. Maybe you might start fighting, man. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, yeah, well, I, I tell you what, if you start yelling air. at if you start yelling at some of your listeners, then I'll know why. That's not yeah. smashing stuff and getting uh, turning green. That's that's <laughs> called that's called alcohol, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You know what? I can't relate to that though. I'm a I'm a, I'm a more jovial drunk. I'm not one of those ornery guys. Like there, there's there are three types of drunks, right? Guys who get angry and want to fight everyone. Guys who think everything's a joke. And then guys who are just sloppy, miserable sloshes. Mm -hmm. I think it's me. Ooh, I just fell asleep. Clip graze with the cross again. You heard, Joseph? Yeah, man. Oh, well, you, you fall asleep? You pass yeah, out? I'm, I'm not really a, a drinker. Like, you know. <laughs> oh, well, good for you, my friend. Good yeah, for you. Like, Your liver will thank you. Yeah, yeah, I stopped as well. Yeah, oh, gosh, man. <laughs> See, ah, I'll tell you what, right now I'm missing a good shot. Like, I haven't got drunk since like my senior year in high school. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. maybe that's why I'm turning into Larry Merchant slowly, man, because I miss drinking on the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like what I'm doing. Oh, shit, dude, Roly's not looking good at all. Um, I, you know, it, it's funny, oh, man. Like if I'll do a man. long commentary stretch for like four or five hours. Yeah. By the tail end of that, I'm begging the waitress to go get me a, bring me a drink during, uh, between fights. Yeah. yeah. You know, the strangest thing that I've seen, um, on a Friday night fights one time, um, this is when I started just covering the sport like 20 years ago. Um, Teddy Atlas. He was at the Frank Irwin Center. I don't even remember who was fighting. It was that long ago. But I saw him scarf down. Ask, like I saw him talking to this girl, waitress. 
And then she brings him like six hot dogs and he scarfs them down during commercial breaks, like two at a time. Yeah, Yeah. six. And I was like, dude, did you just see that over there? Mm. Yeah, it was the craziest thing. It looked like it was a hot dog eating contest. Yeah, it's Teddy, Teddy Atlas, man. Breakfast of champions. Yeah, I just tried to uh, listen to uh, Bullet give his advice. Hmm. Is there any sense of urgency or is he trying to keep his man relaxed and confident? He's just trying to he's trying to get Roly off the line. Mm, good luck. If you're not punching, you're stepping. That's what he said. Mm. Yeah, we're going to see. <laughs> I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, I, I really like man. Coach. I, will, I really like Coach Bullet, man. He's a straight shooter and doesn't bullshit. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. So <laughs> now Roly's trying to time the cross with the check hook. It's worked. Yeah. Times. Yep. He's oh, the cross to the body at least. Well, hasn't done the problem anything with yet. that is problem with that is um he better make sure he gets his head off the line or Barros is just gonna come right back up top. He changed the trajectory a little bit. He can still get Roly. Yeah, you know, um yeah, to to um Barosa's credit, and once again. I'm sure he gained a ton of confidence with that knockdown and hasn't yeah. done anything to deter or shake the confidence um, of Barroso. Yeah. Roley's in a, another guy in a pseudo Philly shell. In a open oh, stand. gosh. The Andre Berto? Yeah. Yeah. The Berto special. Yeah. Now, Barroso, all, all he has to do is jab to his right. There you go. He just did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's a savvy old man. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So now, now, all right. So to Barossa's adjustment is that now he's trying different shit with the backhand. He's he's winging the four. He's throwing the cross to the body. He's winging the four to the head. Winging the four to the body. So that should free up um, some possibilities as well. Especially mm-hmm. if Rhodes is going to come forward in a fucking Philly shell, there goes the there goes the overhand that lands. Mm-hmm. You know, and the shots that Roley is landing, it's is not committed to it. It's like he's afraid to get countered. He looks very tentative, man. Um, you gonna fuck around and get knocked down again by this back Yep. Man. yep. Yeah, man. This right. is um, and we're halfway through the fight. This is not looking good for Roly Romero in his first fight at 140. Hey, uh, James, actually, uh, one of the early conversations that we had with the Philly show is, reflect, is manifesting right in front of our eyes. Of course. Yeah, yep. Because I saw uh, Roly trying to roll the, the jab and um, fell miserably. Yep. <laughs> mm, caught with that backhand again, trying to counter it. Mm. Yeah, all Roly's doing is either a, a check hook or he's trying to catch um, Barossa in between, or right before he throws the backhand with his own backhand. But I still Barossa's can't doing believe a, doing a good job switching up that backhand, though. I still can't believe this is a main event on Showtime Championship Boxing. Yeah, yeah. And who's uh, somebody's uh, who's the mandatory Sims for this? Yep. Yep. Okay. And then now you mix things up by Puello being the champion emeritus, champion in recess. Oh, right. So he gets a shot first first crack, right? Yeah, oh, who knows? Who cares? This is why I, I can't stand like when, once again, journalists will stress up and down like the sanctioning organizations, they lay down the law. <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys. Look, look how many... Fights have already been ordered for this year and then not come to fruition. And once again, the, the sanctioning organizations are just blowhard, powerless, um, just entities that like to rob and steal money from these hardworking fighters. 
And you know what? Everyone in the industry is caught on. And the only ones who need the sanctioning organizations at this point are the fighters who haven't yet um, become attractions. And they need this to get those opportunities. And, you know, it's it's high time that the networks stop placing importance on these bullshit, worthless title fights that mean absolutely nothing to the real bosses of boxing, the fans. Yep. Hey, Farha got it 58 55, uh, Barroso. Yeah, I, I, I do. Can you, score, can you score it any other way? Like, and honestly, I think he's being nice to Roly Romero. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a little bit. So he, other than the night down, so he had it two rounds up. Yep. Because th there was a night down, so three points. Yeah. Yeah, two rounds up. Can you guys imagine what Regis Fograyas or Subriel Matias would do to either one of these guys? Them dudes oh, are God. <laughs> oh, God. Them dudes are laughing right now. Yep. Oh, boy. Josh Taylor or Tiafimo Lopez, man. Jeez. Like, good Lord, how is this a title fight, guys? reasons <laughs> oh, <laughs> the good old wba and their payola system man oh makes me cringe man, bro they got a 65 year old beating them mm -hmm. <laughs> and decisively decisively <laughs> no question about it sat him on his ass and everything yeah dude it's like, kid, sit down, kid. <laughs> hey, you want some more of this? Just more where this came from, Sonny. Uh, you got to be quicker than that. Oh, you got to yeah, be quicker than that. <laughs> the vision. Oh, you got to be faster than that, Sonny. <laughs> oh, old man Barroso. Oh, man, I tell you what, man. Thing. You know what? <sighs> I wonder if Gogi's even going to want to talk about any of this tomorrow night. <laughs> Probably not. No, no he's going to want to just preview um, Haney and Lomachenko, and yeah. that's going to be it. He's yeah. not. I was like, hey, Gogi, I'm going to bring up on the show. Hey, did you watch any of last night's action? Hell no. I was training my fighters. Nah, he's probably going to call out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, Gogi, yeah. It's, um, if, if you – Want him to speak about something that he doesn't care about. Yeah, you there's not enough money or tea in China yeah. to get him to do it. He just it's a moral imperative in his mind. He will not do it. Bruh, hey Barroso is he's really swagging all uh role. You can't really tell because the swag is from the 50s. But, <laughs> is but, he uh, doing the 23 <laughs> skidoo or what, brother? Yeah, I see, I see. Is he doing the Charleston? <laughs> doing all that <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he is confident as all get out. So now, if you hope to knock this guy out, more than likely you're not because he is riding high with confidence. That's the worst thing you can do. If you're just trying to land one punch on a guy, this guy now believes that you aren't shit mm -hmm. and that he's going to win. Yeah. I mean, Best of what, luck, he's doing is, what he's doing is so fucking simple. Mm -hmm. And Roly just don't know what to do about it. Nope. Okay. Now Roly's trying to use the jab. And Showtime, boy, they're trying to find the best highlight of that round for Roly. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I noticed that. Uh, he landed this one combo. Now, this is nice work done by Roly oh, Romero. He got dropped again. Oh, jeez. He got dropped again? He almost got dropped again. Oh, oh I was about to Lost say, like, like, this... <laughs> I was about to say, like, mm, score hard the ring, shot man. from Barroso. You know what? It's going to be interesting if this goes the distance to see how the judges at ringside score this. Oh, boy. Well, 
Oh, man, people are going to be mad as hell. Bro. I don't think so, because once again, the WBA, um, that's that's Gilberto Mendoza's guy. So I doubt it. Look, Maestre, Maestre, he, he got that's the funny, benefit bro. of a terrible decision, one of the worst in recent memory. Oh, man, that was horrible. Now yep. that was that so was from Michael Fox. Was the yep. Clear, robbery. clear robbery. Yeah. What yep. Michael Fox, and once again, the reason why the hand-picked judges from the WBA. Let me see who the judges are for this this um, bullshit title fight. Hold on, guys. Um. Oh, how convenient! They don't have the um, judges listed on box rec. And obviously, I didn't have the sound turned up in the beginning of the fight. Now, Roley tried to counter the backhand with a backhand uppercut. Time to bring it back upstairs, Barroso. Mm. Do you level call him change, Barroso? Level, level <laughs> change, uh, backhand hook to the head. Yeah, you don't know what Barroso uh, means, he's, do you? He's still doing it to the body. Nah, I don't. <laughs> yeah. We're only trying to use lateral movement now. Nothing fancy, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, tell you what, Roly. I don't know what you're waiting for, brother. But with uh, three-fourths of the fight finished, best of luck to you. What do you think Roly's game plan was? Because I, I stopped watching the fight after, like, Initially, swing hard and hope that you hit something. And then when he got knocked down, hey, let's not get embarrassed. Let's try to make it to the final bell. And let's not commit on anything where he won't be able to counter effectively. His game plan was uh, Al Bernstein, keys of victory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Think, how does he get away with that? I really don't understand how he's still working for Showtime after all I these think, years. I think his whole game plan was uh, go fight. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, we hard. Throw, swing hard throw hands. <laughs> Bring the glass in case of emergency. <laughs> yeah. I tell you Box what. Better, better do something, brother. This is not good for Rolly Romero. Yeah, he looks. I think they're this gonna is going to give. This is last to This is embarrassing, guys. No, nah, it's super embarrassing. Look at this rich motherfucker with this terrible hairstyle. Who's that? <laughs> Mark David. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, what the fuck is on yo. top of his head? <laughs> yo, Jen, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> motherfucker said, "Motherfucker said, yeah, give me, give me the." Give me the Chucky doll wig. <laughs> that's the one that's going to work. Jesus Christ. Oh, he heard Roly heard him. Roly heard him. Oh, knockdown. Uh oh, uh oh, oh no! Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> Pop up. <laughs> oh, Grandpa shook. Oh, Grandpa man. shook. Uh oh. Mm -mm. No, he got bad knees. No, he got bad and a bad hip. Bad, bad <laughs> <knees. laughs> Dude, he's walking like Scatman Crothers. Yeah. Motherfucker had three knee replacements. <laughs> <laughs> and now's that old man slouch. Yep. Oh! <laughs> oh, fuck. It was a push. Come on. Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> He's a oh, jeez. He looked like he got, he got fully grown grandkids in the crowd somewhere. <laughs> but dude, look, look. He's so old, he still takes Geritol, man. Chingao. Do you remember back in the day that used to be an elderly vitamin supplement? Yeah. See, no one's even heard Geritol, that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, Geritol. Oh, two piece Roly. Mm. 
Yo, let me tell you, if you're rolling catches on the street, it's dangerous, bro. Like, like look. <laughs> he, he can punch and then knock you the fuck. And then, you know, do like a jujitsu slam, man. Like, but Russell's trying to clinch and he almost. <laughs> Pulled down his trunks. Yep. Yeah, bro. He almost, like, you can tell he was trying to, like, pick him up or, like, throw him Rolly over the ropes. Get <laughs> real lackadaisical with his footwork. He's either oh. going to get a knockout or get knocked out. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. At this mm. point, I'll take either one. Mm. Two bombs. What? What the fuck? What happened? They stopped the fight? Stop what the it. fuck oh is going on, bro? Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my what? gosh. Bro, what is happening, fam? Oh, boy. The referee Tony or his corner? Oh, what, is, it, is it the third what man of the, the ring or the corner? What was that, bro? It was, it was the ref. Oh, oh Tony gosh. Weeks pulled the trigger already. Oh my god! What the fuck? Oh my bro? word! Fucking terrible! He stopped that there. Oh shit! Yo, what the? I just saw it. What the hell? What the fuck? They were brawling. What the hell? <sighs> bro, I see you even biting my shoulder. What the hell? <laughs> Whoa. Oh my gosh, that is the worst stoppage I think I've ever seen Tony. Yeah, that's do. way that's now way now worse once again Bartholomew. keep Shit. in mind, keep in mind, guys, and I truly believe this may be a factor. Um, this is the first major assignment he's had since not stopping the fight in time with Dave Morell Jr. and Idos Yerbasanala. Perhaps he pulled the trigger too quickly this time because he's having to live with himself. For your boss on a lot, getting and had uh, forced into an induced coma because of the punishment he allowed to take, he allowed him to take. Right? Maybe that that's is, a factor. Bro, no, that was the bullshit. Wait a minute, that fight was way different, though. Like way different. Wait, way man, different. Man. But once again, these these refs, um, they have to live with themselves for not making the right call. And in the immortal words of Buddy McGirt. I'd rather be way too early than a second too late. No, right? Wait a minute. No, that ain't it. That wasn't it on this one. I'm trying to give Tony Weeks the benefit right. of the doubt. Okay. But that was well, terrible. Showing that. Show us the end of the goddamn fight, man. You know That was a see. disgraceful stoppage. What Let was Tony Weeks good. looking at? Why did it? What are they showing? Why do they keep showing knockdowns? Show the end of the fucking fight, man. Because it was dog shit. That's why. The PVC stop is for you, man. Oh, boy. That was terrible. Now, once again, man, all of that work, the great stuff that they've done all year. And look at what we're getting now. He lands a bomb overhand. Boom. Missed that yep. was a push, He's man. fine. And yep. he has another overhand. That was only grazing. Mm -hmm. Roly cuffed the back of his head. Bro, Tony Weeks is trash for this, man. Yeah, that's just terrible, man. And it's, so, once again, man, when that's referees trash. when referees start getting too old, they need to be put out to pasture, man. Like they uh, shouldn't be getting assignments. Rosco landed the best punches in this exchange. Yep. Agreed. How far? Mm -hmm. Who who lands the best the uh, best at that changes? Barroso. All of it. Um, I just seen the replay. Holy shit! <sighs> yeah, I don't get the stoppage, brother. This is a terrible stoppage. Um. Holy shit, man! If what well, I just saw that when uh, uh weeks uh jumped in, Barroso was ready to attack to uh. He already reset, ready to punch again. I don't get it, man. That's a terrible stoppage. Man, that's the that's probably one of the worst stoppages I've ever seen. Yeah, it oh makes God. Gary Antoine Russell and Rancis Barthelemy yeah. look reasonable. Exactly. This is terrible. Not only is it a bullshit main event, bullshit stoppage. Now you've got a laughable bullshit champion. Fighter representing the WBA, the longest reigning sanctioning organization in boxing, as their champion at junior welterweight. Oh, 
Holy shit. And and you know what? It's shit like this that makes it understandable why boxing fans are so disgruntled. This is dog shit, this product. Like wow. this product right here, I would never encourage anyone, any of my mainstream fans to watch. Man, I'm fucking speechless, man. That's, uh, wow. <laughs> you know, I just talked to that gentleman right there. The guy who handed Roller Romero the belt. Hmm. He didn't even know, man, who David Morrell Jr. fought um, as Canelo's mandatories. And he's like, we're looking at the at the resume together. And I'm like, well, which one? I'm writing an article um, on David Morrell, and I wanted to get information. And that's their attorney, and he couldn't even tell me. And he said this and goes, oh, I'm, I'm not sure. It's so confusing at times. Oh, geez, forget I said that. What is this? Now, this is going to get worse. If it was a put, what? No, Jim Gray is, is an old asshole. He's taken over, over for the absence of Larry Merchant. Another guy who doesn't know shit about boxing. <laughs> Boxer gems, we won our refund. <laughs> Man, luckily this shit was free. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know what's sad though is us, our long-suffering oh. fight fans. He's explaining. We actually, re we actually refer to it as free. Ho hold on, hold on. It, it, I'm sorry, bro. Holy shit, man. Yeah, I can't believe this guy's a title holder at 140. And that's arguably the deepest division in boxing. The most underrated by far. Yeah, it's one of the worst stoppages I've ever seen. And I'm shocked. I am truly convinced, though. I'm... Uh... Um, Truly convinced. I'm flabbergasted. Though, <laughs> <laughs> this, I, I'm truly convinced, though, dude, that this is a product of him doing a terrible job officiating Dave Morrell Jr. and your boss online. Truly, truly convinced. Mm. Boy, you hate to see it, man. You hate bro, to see it. If you, Josh, if you ain't see it, bro, this, I, it's the worst stoppage I've seen in the last at least at least decade yeah it's terrible and y'all could tell live that he none of them punches landed that uh they stopped the fight on right oh, well of who, course I, I don't even care if they did land barossa was landing bombs bro he was landing yep. he was landing them overhands we could tell that too yep. yeah so yeah. why why the fuck are we stopping the fight? Like he was still in fight back, you know what I mean? He was still moving, he was still conscious, and it's like, yeah, I was, oh, he man. wasn't defenseless. He wasn't like, nah, he wasn't out of it. He's gonna stop the fight. Like it's I understand, terrible. I understand what Russell was like on a on, on a shell, like against the ropes, but he wasn't. He was well. I I will say this, Jack Reese, boy, he called, he officiated the wrong fight. What the fuck. Yeah, the ESPN, the ESPN referee should have been the referee for this one. That's what I'm saying. Jack Reese. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. I feel you, you, know, Joseph. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, so Jack Reese well, maybe allowed that fight to go a little longer than it should. And yeah, yeah, he definitely Oh, did. boy, pulled the yeah. trigger way too soon. Where even Buddy McGirt yeah. would be like, oh, man, that's just way too All early. Right, I, I take this risk. Hold on. Hold on. Fine. 
Did you think this fight should have been stopped? I think it was an injustice to stop this fight. I was giving the best shots. Oh shit. Yep. Back. First time yep. went down. Were you pushed or should Fuck your shit, Paul Paul? Exactly, exactly what I say was a push. There's nothing was a push. What did the referee say to you at the end of the fight? He just stopped the fight and didn't tell me anything. Let's take a look at the end of the fight and ask Ismail if any of these punches were connected. That was disgraceful, guys. It was. Hold on. Oh, shit. Yeah. He clearly was connected. We don't understand. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much for your time. And before we go back tomorrow, Tony Weeks uh, has refused to talk to us this evening. In the of course he has. Damn. Of course he has. And you know what? That's ne that wow, needs bro. to change for the integrity of the sport. That needs to change. Referees and judges should be held accountable and have to explain to the media their actions. Well, that has to change. I don't know. Like, I seriously, if you phone in though. a card like Adelaide Bird after the Golovkin Canelo first fight, like, she shouldn't have to explain her card to the media. Yeah. And so Tony Weeks, he should have to be held accountable for this and have to explain why he robbed this poor old guy who was on the brink of death. <laughs> <laughs> he, it is loan opportunity to win a major world title. Uh, knocking yeah, on fight, heaven's door. In a fight, he's knocking up, on heaven's man. door. <laughs> Especially when he's decisively. Yeah, Jim, you you said it right there, brother. He was up. Yeah, Clear up on, all, on all three judges' scorecards. Damn. Yep. Wow. And well, up how big? Did. Up big on one of them, man. Seventy-eight, seventy-three. I'll tell you what, guys, um, it's been a wonderful evening, and it's always great to share the air with you guys. I'm going to duck out and get something to eat. God bless all of you. And I uh, did. I'll tell you what, we'll speak to you guys before uh, Haney Lomachenko next week. Yeah. Have a great well, evening, guys, and happy Mother's Day to everybody, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, Joseph, what fight are you uh, calling on um, next Saturday? Oh, next Saturday, it's going to be the return of Ricky Medina Jr., um, yeah, so that's it. It's a TMB card. They're really high on this kid. I'm not because I, I saw how terrible he looked against Raymond Ford and that's his only loss, but he looked absolutely inept and like he didn't know what to do. Um, but he's a huge ticket seller in TMB and Roy Jones, I, I need to prepare tomorrow, but Roy Jones has a fighter that he's managing going to be on the card. So he's going to be in attendance as well. So, uh -huh. yep. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, tell you what, guys. Um, wow. What a shocker. What a shocker. Yeah, that was terribly truly. disappointing. But, hey, man, thanks for all of your insight, Ryan. Um, thank you for all the insight, guys. Um, yeah. Thank you, guys. Wonderful evening. Take, take care, Joseph, you. man. Appreciate yeah, you every bro. time you come on. Thank you, thank you, brother. Bye bye. Gems, that was terrible, man. Bruh. Yeah. <laughs> and that 40 year old I, really, I can't even really say shit bro I mean I'm again I'm speechless man why you know you you hate to say um corruption but fuck bro I I don't understand it yeah man it it, it didn't make sense you know that man was clearly winning and yeah he got he got rocked but man you he ain't even go down on his own. Roly Roly forced him down for one, and then none of them punches landed. And he actually threw a good punch that connected. He threw when two of, them, two of them fucking big, uh, my fucking haymaker punches. 
<laughs> and he had a facial expression like, uh, like, like, take that shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he, he good. Why would he, you know, why? Mm. Yeah. This is the sport we like, bro. You know, this is. Staggerly good. So they robbed a 4,000 year old mummy. Yeah, they did. Damn. They did, man. No respect how, to the elders. Yeah. How the how they how Kanye say only do that get robbed and kept all his jewelry? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh Jenna Beck, how'd you how'd you how'd you like the performance? Uh it's pretty fucking easy, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean uh, I mean a buddy I don't know. I, I announced the shit what he was doing during the fight. So Jenna Mc made the proper little quick adjustment, whooped his ass. I love how he was attacking the L step. I, I try to I try to preach that type of shit. You know, every time you see a fighter break their base in front of you in range, why are you not going to work? Right. Jenna Beck went to work. Um then he finally just caught him while he uh lunged in. So Ugly uppercut. Yeah. That's all it took, huh? Oh yeah. 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 And then that you know. And then um then the ref kept let uh, kept letting his ass get up like like he wasn't already dead. <laughs> 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 so finally, yeah, he, he really got clipped bad and right lost, you know, permanently lost some brain cells. But definitely he missed he he made a deposit from the brain cells with that shit. That's a fact. Can't believe that. Yeah, that's crazy. Damn, man. Did um ah uh, did Maloney lose? Maloney won. Oh shit. Yeah, finally got him a look. Got him a chip. Got him a belt. Okay, good for him then. I wasn't paying attention to that fight though. I can't really tell you about that one. Yeah, I I was. I thought I saw the Filipino cat do his thing, and then I, I had to I had to stop watching it. Yeah. Oh, Kenneth mm-hmm. Sims, look, he looked. He showed that he was tough. I would say. Um, right. He also showed that he was skilled in spots, like you know. Had a good had a good skill set on him, but definitely didn't like all the 50-50 exchanges he wanted or he put himself in. It's you know, at some point it's gonna catch up. And, yeah, you know, it completely closes out of night. So that shit had that boy. We was uh hold on real quick. Chris Trucker says even Roly first knockdown looked like a push. Yeah, it did. It's a wild ass style. They showing a replay again. I don't understand, man. Do you think it's the the, the protection that you would have to? But then again, Showtime, like uh, the boys on the on the announcement, they they called it just how we called it. Like oh, yeah. those they were went, those were pushes. Happy. They weren't happy about the stoppage either. I mean, obviously Jim Gray proved that. Yeah. Some wild shit, man. I guess that's when you that to me signified that 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 was that was some BS. Cause even the boys that let BS slide, they had to call that for what it was. But uh Hey man, now we only um one big fight away from Haney Loma. So, you know, here we are. Let's see a super chat. We got bills. You got bills to pay. Yeah, I just, he no. said I'm late on a bill. I don't see it. Uh, <laughs> yo, we just found a 140 title for Ryan. It's oh, that's a fact. Oh yeah, that's a fact. But um. Roley got a shot against Ryan, man. Yeah, you've, you've uh, definitely got a good puncher's chance. 
Yeah, you said that. Because obviously Ryan's uh, not the most or not the smartest boxer in the motherfucking world either. So, I mean, you saw Ryan in the second round versus Tank. Like, bro. Yeah. Going too hard. Yeah, let's just go all out right here. Yeah. (laughs) Big (laughs) sellout. After easily winning the first round. Yeah. And you can make an argument he was winning the second round. Well, what what you mean when he was going all out? Yeah, you can make an argument that well, no, he was don't... winning the second round when he was going all out. The problem is, bro, this this fight was never about you winning rounds, fam. You in you in the ring with a dude with like a ninety percent KO ratio, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you put it like that, you're like, nah, you ain't trying to win rounds. You trying to ring with a motherfucker with like twenty five fights and twenty three knockouts, bro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you, you, you need to be patient. You need to check your footwork, bro. Yeah, put yourselves in harm's way in a real I way. Live, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this dude go all loud, and I'm like, bro, he is not paying any attention to his footwork. This could be a problem. I mean, he and Ryan was again. He was winning around. He was going crazy, but his right. footwork was trash, man. Trash as you. It was trash. Um, it was on it. I told people that's the way he got dropped in the second round. That's the way I thought it would end him, but it wasn't. Um, but he was always going to get dropped like that. That knockout was always going to happen. Um, but the fact that he was, you know, so vehement about his offense and, you know, he always got bad footwork. My thing is, well, how come Goosen don't say nothing about that footwork? He don't care. Bro, what do you mean say something? Like when he do it in front of him, he, he, like he and ain't no so selling it. Really I mean, so think about this, Rob. You got one training camp. Oh, say so you got even two training camps because he had two, right? Yeah, he had uh Fortuna and Fortuna and Tank, right? Yeah. Right. So you really think you're gonna have somebody footwork dope? <laughs> after two training camps especially not- when they say especially when they say ryan is half-assed training with joe goosen and training on his own with his fucking brother really <laughs> yeah. is that what they say yeah they say sean that motherfucking trainer like bro this sean don't wow. know shit about boxing muletta what's the muletta what's good what's the point of having oh, a, a very shit. good trainer don't tell me this this finally worked. Oh for fuck's sake, man. What happened? Yo, remember when uh when I was talking to Joseph, I got kicked out? Everything, my Wi-Fi, everything. I literally just went dead. I tried getting into the thingy or oh, every website, app on my phone, my my laptop, nothing was working. And now the fights are done, everything's just back on. Oh yeah, now is uh movies on showtime. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Literally, everything's <laughs> back home. My apps are working. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, what the fuck happened? Yeah, I bet they're playing two that squad or some shit. Staggerly good say uh, this was a setup for Tank to rematch Roly. It could be. Hey, yo, Jim, how you, you know what, Jim? I got to ask you, as a as a man, how do you feel about that? Like, feel about what? Roly and Tank in a rematch. You said as a man. I, as a man, I don't think about that type of <laughs> shit. What do you mean as a man? I mean, like the woman. Who is your like think of it as a woman. As a woman. Like, that's some whole shit. Like, why would you fight this man? Like, you already dusted this, you already dusted this nigga off. Why would you? Because he has a belt. Oh, God. I don't, I don't think he will. I, that would, I, look, that would, and look, if Tank did that next, that would legit make Tank. Uh, a world champion, a true weight division champion. Isn't he already? No. Didn't he win the belt at 140 already? No. Muleta, they see and this and see your gym. Huh? You can really tell no. that everybody don't know that. You are really talking about baby belts? Oh, but but see Wait, when they well, see when people right. listening and they say, "Oh, go ahead." You think you think you think beating uh, Mario Barrios was the same as beating Josh Taylor? Oh shit, that was just a regular bill. Okay. Bro, yeah. Josh Taylor was undisputed. Oh shit. 
I don't know. That's slipped my mind. Yeah, Barrios had a baby belt, fam. Huh? When they, when they go on TV gyms and they then and, and Tangus announced, they say three time or three division champion. Yes. So in people's eyes, yeah, I know what they do. Okay, okay, I, I so people you know so people don't so people don't know that about Tang because that's yeah, what I said not, on the last yeah, one. I didn't know out, they time out. He's a three time champ. He is a legit three time champion, but it was the same division <laughs> and one belt. Right, and then y'all fucked so, my head up when y'all said it was the same belt. I said yeah, the nigga fuck my won head the same. <laughs> nigga won the same belt three times. What? Yeah. <laughs> or, or or one. It might have been two different sections, but I can't really remember now. But no, I feel like it's always been that WBA at a time, three times in the right. same division. That's fuck the A hey, man. Now this belt, these belts are confusing to me, man. There's just way too many belts I get confused over what belt is what. And like you got a regular champion and a super champion, and sometimes you look at the, you look at the people, the super champions fighting, and the regular champion, like regular champion Bro. is fighting tougher opponents than the super champion. I make like, it easy, man. I, I I don't count baby belts at all. What? Well, you got to tell people what is a baby belt. <laughs> a baby belt is a regular champion. Whenever they say regular champion, that's a baby belt. Right. And that really just means you're like the number one contender. That's yeah. all that really means. Right. So, so, why, 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 what's, what's the point? To get more money. Mandos. Yeah. I was going to say money, <laughs> mandatories. No, nah, it's just more money. Yeah, no, but, but, but they're not mandatories, though. Regular champions, I've never seen... It's rare to see a regular champion fight as a, an actual cha- a super champion because they, the mandatories are always other people. Like, okay, who's the mandatory for, for Canelo's uh, thingy? Uh, for Canelo's who, thingy. <laughs> <laughs> who, was the, who was the regular belt for Canelo's super champion at Super, super Middle? At 168 is... Uh, yeah. For which one? Because he got all the belts. Yeah. For uh, for any of them, or let's just say for all of them. Who's the regular champion for all of them? Who are the regular champions? Oh fuck! Because I know that John Ryder wasn't one of them. But then I thought John Ryder had uh, no was WBO or something baby belt. No, maybe. he didn't have a baby belt because Joseph, uh, what's his name, uh, the Parker guy that he fought, they didn't have a belt. Neither of them had a belt. So how is it that he was a mandatory? And this is what I mean. It's like the regular belts don't mean you're mandatory. Now, what you're saying is true, Moletta, because technically all Tank would have to do is activate his WBA regular Reggie belt and fight Devin. Mm -hmm. He's been in that position for, what, three years? That's wild. Yeah, so that's what I mean. I mean. This is what I mean. It's like the, the interim. People holding on to interim belts. I'm like, but why are you holding on to that? Right. Like you've, now, you've even got regular belts now, which means your interim belt don't mean shit no more. Right. Yeah, I see it got into that mandatory spot. How many times? And refused. Two? Nah, he just stood in that motherfucker. It, it, it just refused to fight Devin Haney. But what, didn't he fight two different title eliminators? Yeah. For the, Yeah. So he like this is my <laughs> he like this is my land and I'm just you know whacking niggas off until that nigga above me loses. Yeah, th- hey, this shit tonight sucked, man. That was a terrible <laughs> ending to the night. So I didn't I didn't miss much. Yeah, no, no you missed yeah, the robbery of at least the the decade. Yeah, not the robbery, but the the worst stoppage of at least a decade. Yeah, because I feel like the the last bad robbery I seen was uh was Broner's uh, last win on Showtime. That was Wait, sad. Who, who was the referee? Tony Weeks. Tony Weeks. Yeah. Ooh, isn't he the guy who let that guy go in the coma? Yeah, that's funny. You just, yeah, that's two people that said that already. Yeah. Bro. Why did they? Nah, so that's what they, Joseph they said. They should have given. They should have given him time off. They should. They should have started him with a small fight or something. In the Morrell fight. Yeah, in the Morrell fight. Yeah, at the, at the armory. 
Nah, that's oh man. Like, I mean, I can understand having it. I would have to see to be able to. I would, obviously, I would have to see to make a judgment. But right, I would. I would understand why he would after that fight. I would understand why he would have an early stoppage. But yeah. even even though I, I probably wouldn't agree, with, I don't. I don't agree with early stoppages did overall. See, did you see but, the end? Huh? Did you see the end? No, that's what I mean. I would have to see to make well, a judgment. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody got it on YouTube already. But I feel like it's a I, I feel like it's a unique place to be a ref or a judge, and you got to call something live and and in the moment. And you know, I don't know if uh, we want to, you know, be so hard on judging these dudes calling something live, like you know. Right. That's what I'm saying, especially when you look at, for me, I'm not looking at, because obviously you're trained to do that. And obviously, even though you're human, I'm I'm also looking at, I'm looking at his last fight. The last fight he called, a guy almost died. So, should they have put him in there? Yeah, but that guy mm. was getting beat like no other, though, fam. Like, that wasn't the case here. The fight was wasn't. Yeah. At all. Dude was in the fight. He was winning the fight. He's winning the fight. Yeah. Wait, the old man was winning the fight. The old man yeah. was winning the fight. Drop Roly and everything, fam. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Drop yeah. clean droppers too. Clean. Shit. The old man was winning oh, the fight. Wait, all wait, wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Judges scorecards. That man was winning the fight, though. Bro. One motherfucker had it 78-73. Bro. The other one was 77, 74, and the other one was 76, 75. Uh, one of them had it like kind of clear, pretty clear. I just said that. No, I, I'm obviously okay. I'm <laughs> Lieutenant Obvious right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sequel says they didn't want that old man that had that super belt. Super belt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey yo, that would have looked crazy, but that still don't mean you robbed that man. That's not what that means. That was his last chance. Yeah, that was wild, bro. Hey, he got dropped in the third. Robbed look, him, so relative, relative see- to the mm-hmm. the level that Roly fights at, Roly is fucking trash, bro. I knew you. I yeah, knew you. <laughs> I don't like to say that. That either. motherfucker's trash. <laughs> relative to the level. Yo, man. yo, Trick, did you see how Jibs had to preface it? He like, I don't want to call right. you trash because he do what he do, but for all the yeah. niggas that really fight, fight, yo, you are ass, son. No, no, no. I mean, nah, I meant what I said. Relative to the level he's at fighting in a championship fight, that motherfucker sucks, bro. Yeah. Why was he, he using lateral sucks. movement against him? I'm, I'm watching, I'm like, bro. Sometimes as a fighter, like it's just you know, the dude was forty years old. Like you could have came, could have, and got on him. It's that simple. No, not not that much skill behind it. Like you could have just pressed him. Really, he didn't have to come out boxing him. He forty years old. He could have pushed him back. You know, what I mean, Roly, he capable of being wild and just swinging. I don't know what he started Man, moving. Thanks. Using, thanks, well, you got shook. I guess. Using lateral movement, then he looked terrible doing it. Yeah, he did look terrible doing it. Is this move he did when he got to the corner? He looked like he got stuck or something, and just shifted. I'm like, yo, bro, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> he was just doing it to do it. I didn't even know why he was. It looked like he was setting nothing up. Uh, ah, yeah, he's terrible, bro. <laughs> he got a belt. He's terrible. He looked. He looked. Yo, he looked lost. When he, he got, got dropped, knocked out clean. Star, how is he even getting like? And then it, it went viral. How is he getting like opportunities like this? Like, what's going uh, on? Nah, nobody knows how he got how he got to be in a championship fight at one forty. Off a loss. After you got knocked out. Yeah, off a loss at one thirty five. And then, bro, Sims and um, Akhmedov, the fact that they fighting under him. That's just disrespectful. He said the old man got robbed. Well, first of all, appreciate you for the super chat sequel. The old man got robbed, but Roly at the end was trying to sell why it was stopped. Roly better not brag 
on this six stoppage, fam. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't was know. He in the, why was it, was he in the Philly show? It looks like he was in the Philly show. He was doing a lot of the Philly show shit. He's not good at it. Why does he do it? Um, it's an open stance too, so. Yeah. That's so, that's actually where he was when he got when he got dropped. Yeah, shit. Thanks. It's hard to block the cross from like from that position. He he threw it. I'm pretty sure he threw it straight. He just had his hand on his chest. He didn't have it. No way to block it. Like you gotta, you gotta throw it up like you're parrying a jab to block the the cross out of the south four stance. Were, were they actually fighting or were they just like? At some point, I'm watching. I know the quality is not good, not more because it's only neutral. But it looks like some point they were just standing there, just moving around, not really. Facts, yes, they were engaging. Doing like nobody fainting, nobody probing, none of that. But then Barosa started finding success throwing a cross to the body. So, Roly uh, get used to the cross to the body, dropped his hands, kept his hands low. That's how he got rocked up top several times. So, <sighs> all right, you know what. I'm out this bitch, man. Take my ass to sleep. Terrible stoppage. Uh, Rolly's terrible. Uh, peace. <laughs> all right, fam. Have a good night. All right, bro. Next all week right, will be a lot better. Better, peace. Rob. Peace.